All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome into Lucky Strike Lanes in Mansfield, Connecticut, for Duckman TV's coverage of the 93rd annual uh, Frank Barber Memorial Eastern Classic. I'm joined today by uh, by Nick Lloyd in the booth. Nick Lloyd is the voice of Duck Pins Forever. We're very pleased to have him here. Uh, Nick, thanks for being with us. Absolutely. Good morning. We also have uh, Jim Kaufman with us. He'll be joining us in the booth on and off and then also roaming around with the camera to get reactions from bowlers as they... Uh, as they either file in or file out, and maybe some opportunities in between games to speak with uh, with bowlers about how things are going. And I'm going to turn it over to Nick here. Nick, uh, you think you could give us a recap of where we stand? This is Sunday, uh, Group 3, their second shift, returning from bowling on Friday night. How does the leaderboard look, Nick? Yeah, so it looks fairly wide open up top in the open division. There were no 12-game sets yet that are threatening first place. Um, around the 146 average is what's looking like first right now. But there are plenty of people left to bowl today, um, probably about a dozen or so that have a shot at getting over that. Um, your leader so far through six was a 157 average. That's John D'Antonis. Um, he's won previously in 2018. His son won last year. But you have eight bowlers so far averaging that 150 pace. But as we get closer and closer to the end of the day, I think you're going to see that 150 or something just over it is going to be the number that these guys are shooting for. Yeah, 50, 150 has historically been uh, a very a number that it gets you to the top of the sheet. The last two years running here, we've had uh, 1,900 was the mark. So that's right. 950. Um, and so far, there's only one bowler who's who's really close to that. That's John D'Antonis at the top of the top of the board there. But even he didn't quite get to 950. Sure, he's on he's on 1888 pace. And I think the tough thing, you know. Not that it's easy to shoot, you know, a 1,900 for 12 um, anywhere, but with the uh, the way that Lucky Strike plays, it can be difficult at times to to not only keep the rhythm, but really get out there and catch the triple and put marks behind it, get the big 180 game. Um, there's the flip side that, you know, sometimes you might go five straight, you know, four splits, no marks. You know, you have to try to maintain the emotions and try to keep the pace as much as you can, but it's – it's a tough pace if you start falling behind, you know, then, you know, spares don't become enough. You've got to catch the double. you got to catch the triple. Yeah, it's a real challenge. I, you know, the format of this tournament being a lot different than, um, you know, pro tours, as an example, where there's a lot. Once you get to Sunday, where, you know, your second round of bowling, we're talking about head-to-head -head matchups. Every game, every frame, there's some adrenaline pumping uh, in, a, in, a, in a different way than just a six-game string. Um, it really requires you to keep, stay focused. Yeah, it, uh, it is more a mental battle, I think, on a daily today than it is a physical battle. The, everybody bowling today has this is their first block of the day. They're not, they're not tired, if you will. They're not sore. Um, they're not, you know, worn out. But it is a mental grind as much as it is a physical one because if you win this tournament, you have beat everybody outright for 12 games. There is no luck of winning 110 to 108. Or losing 190 to 188, like you have to beat everybody with score. There is no luck involved in winning this. It is just a 12 games sprint, and you know who can be on top at the end. Yeah, and this uh, w one of many reasons why this is a special tournament. Uh, as we, you know, as I mentioned when we uh, started here, this is the 93rd running of the tournament, longest longest run tournament in duckpin bowling history, um, along with the unique format, just a, uh, an incredible amount of history and, and prestige, prestige and being able to say, hey, I've got one of these things. A lot of bowlers, fantastic bowlers over the years. You know, a few, one name certainly comes to mind as one of the all-time greats, uh, Don Dove, who, who hasn't been able to capture one of these things. Sure. And it's not for lack of trying. We've, you know, we've sat here uh, from the booth watching Don, you know, put up those 900s and, and, uh, sometimes it's still just not enough, you know. Yeah, you could go 9-9, nine, nine, you know, both shifts, and that still sometimes isn't enough. Um, there And there have been people that have even touched uh, near 2,000 in the past. You know, I bowled next to Scott Wolgamuth yesterday, the guy who shot 
the uh, the famous 2066 on an all day Saturday shift. Um, and there is a bit of an advantage there that if you can get into a groove on Saturday, if you can get into a rhythm that you do bowl all 12 in one day, if you bowl shift four, but the uh, shift three, shift five, you know, you get shift three, get the day off Saturday, you come afternoon, afternoon, um, you know, and it's, it's different for everybody. Some people are going to want that day rest. Some people want to come back the next day. Some people just want to roll right through, you know, that wasn't what was best for me yesterday. But <laughs> Yeah. So we'll, if this is the first time tuning in uh, this year or even recent years, you'll you'll notice bottom of the screen there we've got a leaderboard uh, open division covered at the the top first through twentieth. Uh, We're uh, doing our level best to try to keep that updated as scores come in. Um, B division has uh, positions one through five shown, and then C division one through one through five as well. And then going across the top, uh, you know we're gonna we're kind of working on. Uh, getting ourselves organized to keep up with this. Um, but some of the bowlers on this shift who um, who are, who are have the highest score, the ones that we probably want to follow most closely, we are trying to get, do a live score. You can see Brandon Dominique, top left uh, of, uh, of the sheet there. You've got uh, him having 27 in the second frame. Um, just bear with us while we're, getting ourselves in order to uh, to maintain those scores. But hopefully um, that makes it possible with these camera angles not really showing you the scores up on the sheets. It makes it possible for you to follow live at home uh, as the bowlers throw their frames. Sure. And Brandon is your leader from this quad three. And he's in a position where if he has another, another good block this morning, uh, first place, very gettable. Uh, he's only 19 back of the lead at the moment. And over six games, I mean, you're talking that's that's two marks over 60 boxes. So it's, again, limiting the bad strings of frames and catching catching the strings of marks when you can get them, catching the double, catching the triple. Um, again, it's just the mental grind. If you've got you've got to stay focused and keep banging on the marks. You know, 154, you know, no matter where you're at, 154, no easy task. I do like though the uh, the equity in this format. You know, again, there is no you get lucky um, losing to someone that you know shoots a two twenty game or something like that. You have to be that you're playing everybody. You're playing a number, and additionally too, the way it works, we're using lanes one through twenty of the house, and you move pairs after every game. Your last game of the block, you stay on the same pair that you bowled your fifth game on. But everybody pulls at least one game on every pair of lanes that's guaranteed, no matter how big or small the squad is. So it is very equitable conditions for all bowlers on all shifts for the whole weekend. Um, and it's not easy. I, I make no bones about it. Um, this is not your your Candyland popcorn, juiced up, super easy bowling center. You got to earn it here. And I think that's why when you uh, look up to the ceiling here, you see all the championship banners. It's Hall of Famers and, you know, maybe future Hall of Famers that are just straight-up shot makers. And these guys don't rely on luck to get their scores. They're going to hit their objects. They're going to make their spares. And it is nice, too, the uh, setup that Lucky Strike does every year with the, uh, you know, showcasing the history of the event. There's many uh, banners out. There's some scrapbooks, if you will, um, of previous year's winners. You know, you got guys, Jeff Piles, Peter Pierce, just absolute legends. And then even living legends, you know, you got Walt Brooks, Steve Dreyer, Ron Pelletier, Scott Wolgamuth, John D'Antonis, Colby D'Antonis. I mean, Colby D'Antonis, a little young to be calling him a living legend, but. But well on his way. Yeah, well on his way. Uh, probably in the top top five easily of bowler of the decade so far. And he will be uh, coming up a little later this afternoon on Squad 5. How do you think he feels about trailing uh, behind his father a little bit after that first block? Well, I can tell you, he had one game yesterday that kind of cost him. He had a couple bad counts, um, a couple missed spares. He had, uh, I think he had one game in the 120s. And, uh, well, to most of us, 120 isn't too, too bad. Uh if you're, if you're chasing the lead, 120, you know, you got to cover that 120 with a 180-something. 
to get you know get back on the 150 pace. So 120 games can be pretty costly in this in this tournament. And you know, not every game you shoot is going to be 170, but you know, can you save 135? Can you save 140 out of the game? You know, keep yourself in contention. And while, you know, our pro tours and our team tournaments that we have are no easy feat to win those, I think this is this is one of the toughest one of the toughest events to win in the whole entire sport of duck pin bowling. So that's a shot right there of Bill Fox, Bill returning, uh, First time I think he's bowled in this tournament in over a decade. It's been a long time. I, uh, he reached reached out to me with a quick text message yesterday. It was really great hearing from him. Um, Just took a nine there on the uh, spread eagle. We were actually discussing the spread eagle yesterday that we have the uh, the northern small ball bowling culture has some slightly different vocabulary terms we do down south. So when you rip the middle for four up here, that is a spread eagle. Down, down south of Maryland, that is the Dave Jones shot. The Dave Jones shots. Yes, yeah, Dave, Dave Jones. Uh, it's actually it's a fantastic clip on YouTube. Uh, Dave Jones needed a mark in the tenth of the 2004 Pro Tour at Suitland. Um, he ripped the middle for three and three, and he slid it clean without using the walls to win the Pro Tour. That's remarkable. So um, there's there's even a T-shirt out now with his his famous shot on it. Wow. But, uh, down south we've we've nicknamed it the Dave Jones shot now, just because it's you know. Yeah, well, it's probably a good claim one of the fame. great, probably one of the greatest match-winning fairs you'll ever see. Yeah, I mean that sliding that pin over just to the to the pin that's like adjacent to it. I mean that's a really tough thing to do. And oh yeah, you know a lot of times it doesn't really matter. You just kind of throw the ball and hoping to get three. Oh sure. He was obviously shooting to make it. Oh yeah, I mean he made it happen to win a pro tour. I mean he was bowling against 2004 against Larry Alley, and I believe it was actually Larry Alley's birthday. He almost won a star <laughs> on his birthday. Wow. But you know, you know, you think you put a guy on a mark, you see him rip four through the middle, but if he's going to pull off a shot at like that, you got to kind of tip your cap to the guy. Yeah, definitely. But spread eagle up here because that's a uh, it's a borrowed term from the candle pin game, but yeah, it does yeah. look like the wings of a bird. There's a lot of slight variations of it. We see, you know, add a couple of pins on the left, add a pin in the back. Oh, sure. Um, all of them difficult. None of them are fun. <laughs> yeah, none of them are fun. But, you know, those of you that may be watching uh, duck pin bowling for the first time, you know, or maybe used to the traditional 10 pin game and are kind of wondering how that's even possible. Because in 10 pin, you cannot hit the head pin dead on for three or four. You know, you're you're pretty much guaranteed at least five, maybe six, you know. Yeah. And it's a it's a quite a regular occurrence in this game. Right. Yeah. Uh, not you almost you almost don't want bowlers to feel disappointed about that uh, because. You know, the, the game is trying to hit the head pin on the first ball, and then you accomplish that goal, but sometimes get three or four or even yeah. two pins. It's and, you pretty, know, pretty frustrating, you know, especially if you're a bowler with, with a, you know, 140-plus average. Sure. Those things really take the wind out of your sails and can be yeah. a momentum killer. And then on the flip side there, you see off to your left side of your screen, that's lane 15, uh, Wayne Lifka. You know, he actually misses the head pin on his first ball, still ends up tripping out now on the right side of your screen. He ends up tripping out the head pin, leaves himself an easy spare. Yeah, another thing, I guess, he actually on slides by on. pen pin bowling, you probably don't see that a, a whole lot. Not a lot of missed head pins from the, you no, know. No, but that's that's to do with the ball technology, the lane technology. Um, this is a much lower tech game, if you will. Um, there's a lot in the 10 pin game to do with the, the inner workings of the bowling ball and the lane conditioning that makes it much easier to hit the head and never mind the fact that the ball is bigger See, right <laughs> right but you know duck pin you've got a you got a pretty little five inch rock and you have lanes that in most places are still hand oiled um it's a much lower tech game plus you know the speed of the ball in this game doesn't really have time to hook much yeah so, yeah i mean a lot of you take some variables out of it 
w with respect to how much spin you've got to put on the ball, you know, the, the rotation, the number of revolutions, the axis that it's rotating on, and it, it all, like, gets concentrated into hit your object pin, you know, roll the ball and hit the thing that you've got to hit. And, you know, if you do that as consistently as possible, that's how you generate scores in oh, this yeah. game. And this is, it's again, this event is rewarding consistency. You know, how consistently can you bang on the 140 to 160 pace? You know? Right, yep. Um, do you have that one game that you go out there and get the big score? And I'm sure, especially, let's say we go back the last 10 years, I think you could say every bolt that has won the Eastern has either had a big block or one or two real big games as we show you your last 12 years of champions. You yeah. see, again, what that scoring pace normally looks like. And it does fluctuate a little bit from year to year, but you're normally looking in that mid to high 150 pace. Yeah, those last two years, um, kind of outliers, right? Yeah. Uh, 1850 to 1870 has been uh, has been a winning number. Um, I think you've got to go all the way back. There's a poster sitting right in front of us for Brian Stiles back in 2009. Who, uh, 1930s, I want to say, is what he had, which oh yeah, was a pretty remarkable year. Um, so we'll have to see this year. I mean, is is 1900 the the pace that Colby and uh, and um, uh, Colton set for the last couple of years? Is are we going to have to get there again this year to to win this thing? Or I, I think it's going to be close. The, the the thing is, you have multiple bowlers. You know, let's say we go from Steve Dreyer up, eighth place up. All those guys on the right day are capable, more than capable, of shooting a thousand for six. In fact, Colby last year, when he won, his first block was over a thousand, which is just it's it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal anywhere. Um, it's it's this otherworldly um, in this tournament at this at, on these conditions. But it's it's attainable for all those guys. It's a question of again. Who can break out and get that big game? Who can get that that 180, 170 back to back? Right. You know? And then and then just because this is this is still a war of attrition, like you got to get those games, mm -hmm. and then you've got to still yeah. be good. 150s, 160s oh, sure. after that. You know, you you could really break out to start the shift and you know go buck 96, 196 game, but you know if you come back with a 111 the following game, you know you're right there on pace again. Yeah. And yep. you then you've still got to grind away and grind away. You'll notice that if you go, you know, you, you got to go a little bit farther down on that leaderboard in the open division. You get to um, 11th position. That is hopefully a familiar name. That's Brian Ewing, our executive producer, directing the show as we speak. Shout out to Brian. But Brian uh, is what we call our leader in the clubhouse. Um, he has 12 games in and scored 1761. There's that is nothing to sneeze at. No, absolutely not. Um, that's uh, that's 880 per, you know, four 145 inch uh, average. I mean, that's oh yeah, that's good duckman bowling. It's it's fantastic duckman bowling. I and mean, I mean, he was he was right there. He was, I'm, he was to my right yesterday, about on my left. Um, Brian was grinding out most every game yesterday, but not to discount, you know, that performance of 12 games, but. That will be broken today. I have high one of the ten folks in front of him will average over that. Yeah, I think historically that 1760 would probably be a top ten finish. Sure, might not crack the top five, but like we said, nonetheless, uh, a good showing. You see Chris Louth there, the other bowler, uh, through 12 games. Uh, Mike Nicholson as well through 12 on the on the leaderboard by average. Uh, keep that in mind. The um, the leaderboard is showing you. Um, the average through the completed games yes. uh, and their standings as they are now. Uh, but nice bowling to our current 11, 12, and 14th position bowlers, um, Brian Ewing, Chris Louth, and Mike Nicholson. I should add, you know, all local guys, I think we tend to, the earlier shifts, it's not uncommon for a lot of uh, local Connecticut, Rhode Island bowlers to kind sure. of show up on those shifts. And then a lot of the folks that travel from down south uh, you know, especially a bunch of our heavy hitters look for that. I think even this shift, the uh, the north as well, even farther north, we got a couple Canadians in this shift. But in regards to uh, Michael Nicholson, uh, he was at, on my pair yesterday. We actually were the uh, the anchor bowlers, if you will, of the pair. And um, I think he would self uh, admit himself that uh, when we made the turn down to one and two for our 
ninth game of the day that we were gassed. Um, he was coming off of a 198, and actually after his eighth game, he was averaging 161. He was over 1,300 for his first eight, but it, it just it got tough, you know, the uh, – the back, the back four. I mean, we started to, you know, you throw the okay ball, you leave the bad break, you know, kind of stuff like that. But he, he did put up a very solid performance. We are just coming up on the end of the first game here. And we are, uh, as predicted, a little behind here on trying to keep those real-time scores um, a little – Shorthanded relative to, uh, you know, full staff for an event like this, but, uh, but working on it, we'll get, we'll get scores updated. I think um, we should be able to turn around the update on the leaderboard pretty quick and, you know, we'll continue working on the score sheets. Your leader of this shift is uh, Brandon Dominique, and he's currently sitting in third in terms of the average pace. He is 116 through the ninth on an open. He's going to open his last two. So he's a little uh, behind the pace to start out the morning. Only looks like three marks, his first nine boxes. But I have a saying down south sometimes, there's nothing a double can't fix, you know. Catch a double here, save the 140 game, and then you know you're not too far off the pace. Pretty pitch there from Steve Holzner on lane 12. Steve stopped in and said hello uh, on his way by this morning. Said he got he got approval to come up uh, from his wife Amy. Glad he's able to make it. Yeah, thanks, Amy. I can tell you his uh his buddy is down there on. Uh, seven and eight the rocket uh brian vest and uh brian and steve would bowl together often on a, a friday night down south and uh as the mechanic who worked one of their leagues uh you could tell where those two guys are bowling you can yeah. <laughs> there is a auditory difference when that ball hits the pins they got a, they got a lot on it yeah there's uh, there is the rocket i yeah man i think brian Honestly, might have the, the fastest ball in all of duck pins. Maybe, maybe just ever. If, honestly, if you know uh, Andrew Buckingham, Matt Buckingham's younger brother. No, I don't. I don't. Um, he's very close. The thing is, Andrew is very. Uh, it's a very athletic looking delivery. Brian makes it look easy, and that's what bothers me. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's effortless power. It's remarkable. It's a very smooth. The ball touches the lane. Yeah. Uh, you barely hear it start start rolling while it's like rocketing down yeah lane. absolutely and this is one of the characteristics of this center is that sometimes it can be tough to generate the mix and uh ball speed definitely helps um you don't see a lot with i think scott wogan with being a very clear outlier maybe steve dreyer as well there's normally a lot of ball speed that in recent years that does win uh in this house also i mean you've got to be accurate i'm not saying you just throw it willy-nilly and you know Eastern, but yeah, I agree. There's I think, a lot of there's a lot of power. Yeah, I, you know, the name of the game here in in duck pin, uh, you know, you compare and contrast again with ten pin. In ten pin, for the most part, you're really trying to kind of bulldoze over the pins, drive into the pocket with a lot of power re revolutions. And in duck pin, the name of the game is really trying to keep the pins on the plate, moving it's around back and forth, right? Mixing the pins. Yeah. You can there's, you can try to just blast ten off the deck every ball, but you know, you're uh, you're not. That's not. That's not reliable. Right. You know, you're not. You're not gonna. You're not gonna get very far trying to blast them off every frame. Yeah, and in this house, I think my observation, having bowled in it for many years here, is it. It tends to kind of push the pins back once they hit off the wall. Yes. It's not that often that you see the pin kind of just laterally come back off the wall. Sure. They they kind of 
have directionally go back toward the pit. So right. it makes it doesn't make this house, you know, really impossible to score. And you see the numbers on the screen, right? No, but, but you you must you must throw it good. Yeah. Sometimes it, I've seen and we've all seen it. We got guys that throw 150 game, 160 game, and they're they're missing the head pick and they're getting lucky. And you know that will not happen in this house for no, 12 consecutive games. No, no, you will not. You will not get away with that for 120 boxes in this in this center. No, there's no way. Um, which is again, I think it speaks to too like the prestige of winning this. Like if you win this event, full stop, you've earned it, and no one it's, can dispute that. Right. There's no flukes winning the Eastern Classic. And as someone who has not won the Eastern Classic, but I did actually. We'll call this a fluke. My first year up here, I came eighth. Eighth. That's that's great. Um, I had a nine twenty five in my back six. Uh, I think I was one ninety five down there on uh, one and two. But I can appreciate, you know, when someone wins the Eastern, I there's a level of appreciation, a level of respect. I think in the competitive duck pink community, because you, if you've bowled this event, you you can get an idea of what it takes to carry an average like that for twelve games. Yeah, I I, I don't know how many times I've attempted this tournament i i think i've got mm -hmm. two or three 900 game blocks sure but i don't want to admit what the other block was oh, to no. go with that 900. Uh, yeah i uh i had a grind out in 8 20 in, in the morning and then i was ready for a nap that yeah got down to one and two but i mean you look at like the 907 here in seventh place by colby d'antonis i mean that is no joke under his Monday night league average. That's remarkable. He, I believe he is carrying 152 at the moment. I'm sure he can correct me on that later, but he's either a 152 or a 153 on his Monday night league down, down in Maryland, which is just a it, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, in, in a funny way, it's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, if you got to uh, roll against him week in and week there, out. There's a, there's a league down uh, Monday nights down in Dundalk that is uh, – chocker block full of uh the national top 20 male and female and uh you know we we do you know the high game pools and all that and there was one week that 207 was second place oh wow in the high game pool Jeez. um we had the other week uh, alex barnes shot a 251 i mean there unbelievable are, there are there are 200 or 500 almost every week and it's it's a battle of kind of just who can offense better, and it's it's a very generous house, but you've got very good bowlers in there. Yeah, but here's our here's our squad leader, and we're working on getting scores uh, updated uh, on that leaderboard. There, we're gonna have uh, the seventh game recorded. Just about everybody, My knows, goodness. or or everybody, as far as I can tell, has completed their first game. Brandon, oh, just Two a little pins. light. And when those start to add up over the course of the day, you hate, you know, the gimmies, you know, the two pinners, the singles that you, you slide on by. You know, those are the ones you want back because sometimes you don't get something pretty to shoot at. You know, that's going to happen. Right. But when you get a favorable leave, you know, you want to you be on your objects. You want to make them. Phil Foreman there on lane four. Covers the seven pin. This is Logan Turner coming up on lane five. I can tell you, Logan has increased his average about 15 or so pins over the last two years. He's gone from your, you know, you're coming out of youth mixed league bowler to somebody who can be pretty darn competitive in the team tournament scene and on the Pop Witten Pro Tour and you know, some of the events like that. He's really uh, taken a lot of time to to work on his personal, you know, bowling game. Another local legend on the right of the screen there. That's Eric Pellet. I don't believe Eric Pellet has. I can tell you he's probably cashed multiple times, but... Yeah, just another one of those, you, you kind of shake your head. There's some bowlers out here who are so good, um, have been so good for many, many years, and it's still just really hard to put together those 12 games, the, the 12 games that gets it gets it done in a weekend. Yeah, and I, and I tell you, you know, if we could compile a list of some of the bowlers in this tournament who, you know, are household names in the duckpin world, if you will, 
but haven't yet won an Eastern, you'd be pretty surprised. You know, some very high-level talent on that list. This is the second frame for Brandon, our squad leader. He's off the side for six. One, two, four, nine. Brandon started out with nine in the first. Oh, he steals one there off the wall. So kind of gets a break back after missing his two pinner to start. Uh, Steve Holster there going for the double off the side, one, two, eight. Here comes the, comes the rocket. I believe that's on lane nine. Yes, that's lane nine, Brian Vest. Again, you'll see effort, effortless power here. A very tall guy, high back swing. I mean, it's just, he just unloads on it. Just absolutely unloads on it. That's a strike for Brian Vest. Here's Eric Pellet getting up on lane five. Eric starting out with two open frames. Looks like he is 18 in the second. Seven drop there. That might be an eight drop, excuse me. No, that is a seven drop, five, seven, eight. Good. Oh, Pellet giving it a run. A little wide on the five open frame. It starts out three opens. Switch back now to Brandon. Brandon, that four pinner that he converted in the second is 19 plus through two. Looks like he's sitting a 1050 couple for his seven games. Not a bad score, but it is behind the pace. 150 game here will get him to 1200 in that 1200 range, which is where you want to be around after eight, but then you still got work to do after that. So, again, much as you can catch here, the eight game point, I'm using the eight game course as a metric just because we bowl the eight game block on the men's pro tour. So, it's an easy, yeah, I think a lot of bowlers for, for some of us to figure out, you know, oh, I've got. I've got 1210, you know. Oh, I got, you know, I, I got excited yesterday when uh, Nicholson had the 1300, broke the 1300 barrier. I mean, um, that is something, you know, breaking 1800 in this tournament is like, you know, breaking 1300 in the men's tours, you know. You shoot right. 1300, and there's a level of, uh, you know, respect there. You understand what that takes, you know. That's a, that's a lot. But here's here's the fill for Brandon. Oh, you bet. Uh, that's what we call right in the hole, folks. 29 through two and a strike up in the third. And in terms of the characteristic of pushing pins back, what that does mean is when you put it right there, you get some bombs here. Yeah. You can you can bombs away on on the pocket. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the alternative here to trying to mix the pins around, you know, just, a, just blow them a, up. a flush a flush hit in the pocket, you know, trying to get the five pin to fall last. Sure. Is just blasting it right through that. Mm -hmm front door, the pocket, and crushing them all. That's what Brandon did. And, and conversely, too, if you can find a way, you know, however, whatever ball choice you have, however you're throwing it, where you stand, if you can find a way to carry that five off the wall, um, I mean, that's a difference maker. You know, nine spare versus throwing a double. Yeah, and that's a strike that's there in this house. You know, some some houses, well, there's there's we an attempt at it right we, there. I thought, no, we don't see that too often on uh, any Duckpin TV or Duckpins Forever. That is a foul. 
Oh, look at that. I didn't even notice that. I just noticed the 510. Yeah, and to be completely honest with you, that's because most of the houses in Maryland don't have working foul lights anymore. <laughs> but um, that is a foul. Of course, and the rules there, for those who don't know, he resets, gives zero, and then throws two more. Maybe in that situation, a well to go foul, on. <laughs> but I, I see that red light still on. I just think it hadn't shut off yet. Uh, okay. I'm hoping he didn't double foul. That wouldn't be good. <laughs> I'm also hoping he wasn't on a mark because, of course, if you're on a spare, you get zero. Right. That's um. That would be a frustrating frame for sure. I can tell you, uh, last year, I think it, something with my my footing last year, my mechanics and my approach. I actually fouled multiple times last year. Um, I just I, very long slide, which is not what I'm used to or what I grew up on. I grew up on synthetic approaches, which are traditionally much tighter. Yeah. Um, so and I kind of tend to run to the line a bit, but you know, some of these guys with the longer slide, you can tell they've they've grown up with it or they've adapted it as you know part of their game. Here comes Steve Holtzner up on 13. Steve is all marked through three at 50 plus. Leaks that one a little bit. That ends up being four off the side. So he's 54 through three. And yeah, that's on a spare instead of a strike, unfortunately. He's only going to get the four pins and added to the last box. Oh, yeah. And these washouts, um, the washout shot, very tough here. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Um, I can tell you I went off the side for five, for four or five a few times yesterday, and I shot 0% on it. Yeah. I did I, not make a single one. I think, you know, if you. If somebody were to try to figure out how to tabulate statistics about this, it seems like a higher percentage shot trying to let the ball carry him into the off the head pin and into sure. the six. But in this house, trying to hit the one on the outside with the you know with the fat side and all the pins on the left, sure. you don't necessarily convert that very frequently. In fact, and the difficulty there is that you you got to worry about the mix of the pins carrying the eight out. Right. So if you're on the left side of that shot in particular, for the double catches. The head pin heavy leaves a 3-6. That was so. a great looking ball, though. You can tell he's a bit of a body English guy, and you can tell when he likes it out of his hand. Yeah. You can also, on the converse, tell when he's in trouble. <laughs> All right, last two pinner. He uh, was thin on that and wasn't able to convert it. Let's see how he does here. I think you see him a little off balance, but just hanging on to we'll, it long enough to we'll, get it. To... We'll go with 3 out of 10 on the dismount. Nice. <laughs> Nonetheless, it's three marks in a row, and he moved to 59-plus. You, uh, you always love throwing 20 boxes in this event. Yeah, all day long, all day long. I mean, it's nice to catch a couple of a string of strikes here and there, but, you know, if you can be steady hitting the head pin and then converting your spare and try to hang on to that as long as possible, scores those, those add up, scores oh, yeah. get much higher. Good attempt there by Pat Rufo on the bread line. He leaves, leaves the corner. No, it has. It does. You can see we've got um, leaderboard in all divisions here updated for the bowlers who are on the shift. Uh, look for anybody with a, with a seven, seven game. Which in the in the open division you've got Brandon Dominique and then Wayne Lipka back there in nineteenth. Uh, Brandon firing now in front of us on our one of our featured air cameras, but he's at ten fifty through seven, so he pops another hundred and fifty game here, which he's got a shot at doing it at the moment. Um, he's around that twelve hundred mark, but it's anything you get over one fifty at this point from this point forward, you're in the plus. You know, it's a common thing in the uh, 10 pin game. They look at scores plus or minus 200. Um, I think really the number for this event is how much plus or minus 150 are you? And, you know, right now he's he's dead even on the 150. You know, John D'Antonis, for example, your leader, he would be plus 44. And he's 44 pins over the nine, uh, the 150 average pace. Yeah, on this same pair, we, you know, we've got Brandon up here. We're also tracking Eric Briggs, Brandon, and uh, I should maybe we'll go by their last name here, so it helps on the score sheet. Um, Dominique B, 
uh, and Briggs. They um, they're bowling on that pair right in front of us, actually, 13 and 14. Oh, I, hadn't, I hadn't caught that. Briggs is in the uh, C division. And that is that's for certain averages and under, right? Right. Um, I have to look this up to see where the the lines are for the B and C division. Um, but Eric currently sitting in the third position for that division. We didn't mention we were talking about Mike Nicholson earlier uh, in the open division uh, being currently now in the 14th position. But notice he's also the B division leader right now. Oh, yeah. And that will be a tough score to to achieve. I mean, Har Harmel, that's Nick Harmel. He's going to have his work cut out for him to get to that number. Good yeah, cover B there from Brandon. That's four marks in a row. Four in a row for Brandon. B division is 132 and under. I imagine C division might be like 125 or something in that range. So I think Brandon, I, I didn't quite catch his game. He he fell off the pace he had a little bit. He was he was 116 through the ninth. Okay. Um, I'm not exactly sure what his tenth was. Yeah, he's trying to make a comeback after probably being a little bit below that 150 number that everybody's got in their mind. Oh yeah, he's he's over the number at the moment. He's 78 plus through the fifth, and right into four marks in a row. Game seven for Brandon was 125, so definitely looking for a better showing this game. And I don't know if that was just a little uh, a little tight on the first game of the second block, but so he did go open in the tenth then. Yeah, he, he's uh, he's looking a lot looser and more confident so far this game. And that was Eric Briggs' um, frustrating frame. I I'm sure for him, I didn't quite see the count on it. Um, but there were a lot of pins left on that on that plate when he hit that button. Going to catch Brandon here coming up in a moment on 14, but not quite yet. Steve's going to finish out his box. That is a triple strike over there on 17 and 18 for Wayne Lipka. Actually, I think that's a... Double and a spare. I could be wrong. Oh, I'm sorry. It is um. Or maybe they just haven't drawn no, that they, extra line because they, they scored it. The extra line. Yeah. Um, all right. That's Wayne probably, Lipka. That's probably a Maryland. They're trying to keep Connecticut score. <laughs> I guarantee you. And I think you're gonna see it's, it's mostly Southern bowlers or a high concentration of Southern bowlers on the next shift. Uh, we're gonna have squares and triangles on the next shift. Yeah. And no, there's no Y's. There's no shading into the corners. It's, it's gonna be traditional. <laughs> Yeah, and you, you'd find another brand of it, uh, scorekeeping yeah. style of it from Rhode Island bowlers as oh, well. Oh, yeah. I, I actually uh, took great joy one year at the NDYA Nationals at AMF Southwest before they converted to the automatic that they actually, before the tournament started, told all scorekeepers to keep score in the Maryland style. They actually required, <laughs> for the statisticians, they required that it was squares for strikes and triangles for spares. Yeah. And uh, I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't clap a little. <laughs> house rules, house rules, oh, you yeah. know. Because when I when I first came up, you know, to this state, it was a little, uh, it was a little, uh, a little confusing. But then I, you know, I've gotten to figure it out now. Okay, here comes Brandon. Yeah, it's on lane fourteen. He's seventy-eight plus through the fifth. A little light. Good break though. Four seven. Eighty-six first half. That's what you. That's what you like to see. You want to see that that eight, 80, 80 couple at the half. The sooner you can get the triple digits, the better. And Brandon could be in triple digits in the sixth if he makes the four seven. He does not. Slides on by open frame. Catch Brandon throwing his wood ball here. He slides on by again. Nine out for 95 through the sixth frame. 
And in a second here, off to our right on 17, 18, we'll have Wayne Lipta going for the ham bone. Wayne started out 10 box, strike, spare, and then has dropped a three timer. Here he comes now on 17. The uh, lovely bumblebee looking yellow and black comet. Pretty unique ball choice. Yeah, there aren't too many of those things, th that color scheme exactly uh, no. around anymore. You know, down south, we make a lot of talk about the uh, half and half comments that the Kruger brothers throw, and they seem to do magical with them, but that's just because they're <laughs> talented. All right, yeah. Wayne for the four bagger. Oh, he crunched it in there. And a and slow, he's got a spinner. slow spinner, and it goes. It, wow. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why you let it spin. Yeah. You hit that button whenever you are ready. Us down south bowlers, we take our sweet old time pressing that deadwood pedal. That yeah, is a four bagger for Wayne Matheson, or not, geez, excuse me. Yeah, Wayne, Wayne Lipka. Wrong Wayne. Wayne Lipka. Um, Wayne. We can put him on a 200 watch now. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, he's on, a, he's on the leaderboard there on the right in the 19th position, averaging 142. Well, that is a way to seven games, you, but you drop a deuce. That's a way to climb up real fast. Yeah. You know, again, like I said, sometimes winning it, winning or placing high in this tournament is about catching that big game. Right. You know, catching the big block or a big game might be part of it. Yeah. I you mean, know. I think 200 would uh, probably move that average up five to six pins. Well, it's going to be actually, I think if he drops 200 even, he's averaging right around the one, uh, right around the 149. Mark. 149. Yep. Yeah. We've actually only had one 200 all tournament that was stopped last night in shift four by uh, Frank Schreibman had 200 on the nose. Melville Hill just sliding by on his two pinner there. Back to our pair that's in front of us here. Brandon Dominique, that 95 through the sixth on an open frame. That is off the side. Not the one he wanted to trip out there. Leaves the 148. That's a little tr tricky conversion here. Either take this really light with the with the ball on the left side of the head pin. I, I really wouldn't trust the wall here. I think I'm I'm playing I'm playing to catch the head pin high up. You know, kind of you gotta make it like it's the one four, but you've got to kind of hit the four pin thin. So that the, you know, it's 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 a touchy shot. Yeah, you're either gonna hit it perfect or you're hoping. Right. Let's see what he does here. Oh wow! Oh, and he's hoping and he oh got it. Oh my gosh! He I I'm really Wayne surprised. Five he... bagger. He goes five out the front instead. Brandon Dominique celebrating one, over to the side. Yeah, here. <laughs> 135 through the seventh frame. Or excuse me, 135 through the sixth frame for Wayne Lipka. He is shooting 247 on the left and the 310 on the right. Gives it a good bid. Counts to eight on his fourth strike. He's 160 couple through the eighth. Wraps it around the 10. Wow. Yeah, 162 was... through the eighth, so he needs two marks. Wow. He doesn't even need a strike. Spares will do it. And that fight, you know, in, in every regard was a pretty good frame. Object pin, all three balls no, just three, through the middle. three objects for a nine box. Yeah. And then I guess if you're going to go through the middle, getting five on that on that double he was counting on, yeah. you don't mind that. That's a lot better than just going through for two. You see Brian Best uh, on the top right of the scoreboard. 
Brian's got 146 okay, working in, in the eighth. I, uh, I don't know if he had He's some on, strikes you, earlier. but you can, you can put him on the watch as well. He does need to catch a double to get there. But um, we did catch a glimpse um, while you were away. We caught a glimpse of a ball. I was talking about, again, the effortless power. And he just he just destroyed ten of them. Wow. Just absolutely destroyed them. I can see one double. Maybe he's got two doubles this game, if my math is right. No, I'm sorry. One double. And he has – Brian has no Eastern Classic victories a part of his resume, but he does have about 150 broken pins. <laughs> <laughs> That's – A couple I've pulled out of a Sherman myself. But You yeah, really don't – that really just does not happen that often, I have to say. But, uh, you know, no surprise that he's he's able to, like – if there's any imperfection in the pin that was made, it's going to get exploited by Brian well, Vest. And, and just age, too. I mean, you know, last year at Southwest, we're bowling on a, a five-year-old set in a very high line in center. But, you know, they got fresh pins now. So they're they're hanging in there for the time being. As Steve Holstner off the side ends up with eight. Brandon Dominique, meanwhile, a tough seven count. He's left himself a real doozy here. It's a six, seven, ten. Gives it a run, though. Wow. I mean, he knew he had. He knew that ball had a chance. So he'll be in the one. He'll be in the one twenties. Wayne Lipka's up. Here he is. Oh my goodness me! Center of your screen. I I absolutely clocked the one three pocket, and Lucky Strike says thanks for playing. Have a seven eight. To shoot. Have a seven eight to shoot. Yeah, those. Uh, so they're disappointing. There's Brandon way over to the left of your screen he was trying to clean up that 10 and almost got it anyway with the six seven wide apart wayne blows by the eight on the right side he might have been trying to make that thing it goes through the hole that time okay he's 170 now it gets a little tougher he's got to have a triple out for a 200 but it's still a fantastic game here yeah he's gonna want he's gonna want that mark though you know you don't want to Butter out on a on a really nice game and leave two opens on the end. Uh, he's going to have to regroup and forget about that bad break. Here comes Brian Vest over all the way to your left on lane ten. He blows it in there, nine drop leaves a seven pin. That puts him at a hundred and fifty five through the eight. He has opened twice so far in the game, but he's caught two doubles. He caught a double second, third, and then he caught another one six and seven, and he's put a spare behind it. If he hits the single, watch this. Listen to this seven pin cry for help. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at oh that. He would have made the seven ten. How about that? Yeah. Celebrating that one. I imagine he's had a couple difficulties with that pin this weekend. Yeah. Um, no difficulties this game. That's 165 working in the ninth. He's basically about to leapfrog over Wayne uh, with oh, yeah. a fill on that bear. Yeah, absolutely. He he still needs a double for 200, but he's going to have a he's gonna have a fantastic game nonetheless. Wayne getting up to shoot his 10th frame now on 18. They are in the ninth frame here on 13-14. Brandon Dominique is 121 through the eighth. Ah, uh, Wayne. Wayne has punched four, six out the front. He left the two and two. So no 200 for Wayne. And get, get Wood here for 180. See what Wayne does here at the two and two. He gave it a good run, tried to squeeze it off the wall. So no two hundred. He goes three open frames on the end, but a fantastic game nonetheless. Yeah. Wayne gonna finish out one more for 179. Brandon, good ball for the five pin over here on lane 13. Again, Brandon 121 through the eighth, and he's on an open. So nice spare break to look at here. That, that one game. Oh, oh wow. Just, he knew he had used, it as soon as it fell. Used every millimeter of the diameter of that ball. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
right. and Wayne Lipka's score uh, entered on the leaderboard here, and you can see he went from 19th to oh, 12th. He's, he's jumped way up. Yeah. 11.73 through 8. Much closer to the pace now. It's still gettable. Absolutely still gettable for him. Here's the rocket. Oh, man. Just slammed 9. So no 200 for Brian Vest, but with a mark here, could shoot in the 190s. I think two or three pins went off the back curtain and came back, flying back onto the deck. Grabbed him the grabbed him the six pin. Yeah, almost got the strike. And again, it's who can who can generate the mix? Can you generate the mix in this house? And he he's he's a guy that you know he just uses raw kinetic energy, but he's all over the three. Yeah, nails it. One eighty four and a ball for Brian Vest. We'll stay here and get his fill. Yeah, Brian not. Not on the leaderboard at the moment, outside of the top 20. But this this might bring him back into the picture. He wasn't yeah, he wasn't on the top 20, but you might see his name pop up. I'm not sure what he has through seven, but I mean, definitely shooting a big number here. If I remember with my conversation with him early uh, yesterday, I think he did so so. Like he had, you know. A, a low a low 800 but this will definitely help the catapult him up uh, yeah why not wow what a Ten game more 194 for brian vest i think you know pat you can see pat rufo who you know another uh another contributor here to duckman tv he really got us set up this morning thank you to pat um but pat bull with Bri uh, brian yesterday and told me um i think he got it to like one eight sixty or something Okay. Uh, and then in my ear, there's a voice telling me that Brian had a 109 the first game, uh, game seven. Which is why I think he might have been. Oh, he was. He was. He might have been on, and he's fallen off. But you now see Brian Vest is up to 16. Yep. You see how quickly we we're able to get that updated. Thank you to anybody who was able to punch that in. Whoever there's a did, lot of we people. appreciate you. <laughs> yeah. Much love and appreciation. There's a lot of people uh, trying to keep scores updated here. Um, and um, that was a that was a really important game for Brian to rebound after a tough game seven. Again, you're looking at that that 150 clip is is the 1800. Um, he's looking 640. That's still 160, which that's tough, but that's gettable. See if Holtner off the side for two almost makes it back door. Steve gonna shoot in the 120s this game. He's having a bit of a struggle so far through seven here's a spare fill for brandon light hit and another big two and one split four seven ten this time brandon goes to 138 through the ninth again not a bad game but he's now gonna probably unless he makes this he's gonna fall just under that 150 pace And we're gonna have a we're gonna have a rain delay now on 13-14. Brandon has done a faulty 4710. 4-7-10. 4-7-10. Yeah, we're gonna have a little rain delay here. A couple pins fell over on 14, but again, Brandon 138 through the nine. He's gonna be staring down the 4-7-10 split. We'll plug for what it's worth two weekends from now, which is the 19th of March. Uh, Duckton Bowling will be live again on YouTube, this time on the Southern Channel. Duckton Forever. We're going to be covering the uh, Pop Witten Pro Tour at the gorgeous Suitland Bowl. We'd appreciate if you join us. That's a 10 a.m. start. All right. I'm done feeling. We got the pin set up. Here we go. 4 7 10 for Brandon. Kind of bounces it in there, open frame. So Brandon will fall just under the 150 line. But hold two pins here for 147, which would get him to 1197 for eight. Fantastic 149 average. Definitely cash spot worthy. Uh, not the conventional two, but two nonetheless. 
shoots a 147, moves to 1197. A little bit of a delay in the action here as everyone moves over. They do move one pair to the right every game. And then once we get to game five, they're going to bowl games five and six on the same set. All right, we're setting up... Uh... Camera down on the far end, Blaine's 21 and 22, as these bowlers are going to slide. I think, who's moving over to 21 and 2? Is that Wayne? Uh, nobody. Nobody yet? Well, no, we don't use 21, 22. Oh. All right, so I guess that angle's going to pick up 19 and 20. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to need to make a little adjustment there, but we'll work on that. On the top of every telescore during the Eastern Classic, they have uh, sponsors for each pair, and most of the pairs are a high game on the pair for the entire tournament. The highest game on the pair gets $50, second place gets $30, with the exception to 1920. 1920 is whoever gets the most spares in a game. Uh, the tiebreaker, of course, then being your score. I held second place yesterday for about 70 seconds, and then... Uh, Mike Nicholson went strike and then spared in the 10th, in the 11th, for a six spare 198 game and knocked me out of second place. But he is currently in first for that. It would take a seven spare game to beat it, which is pretty tough to do. Thank you all for joining us this morning. This is our coverage of the 93rd Eastern, the Eastern. This is shift three coverage. We will have shift five, the shift five, to, after the conclusion of this shift. And that is that is the grand finale of the tournament. you got a lot of heavy hitters in that squad. Uh, a lot of your leaderboard right now is shift five. And uh, that is where we come down to the nitty-gritty there at the end to determine who will win the Eastern. Some ongoing camera adjustments at the moment. If we switch over, there's Pat Rufo bowling on lane 12. Brandon Dominique has fallen down the leaderboard, it is still the high score of this squad. An announcer's jinx. That is another foul on camera. Pat Rufo has just crossed the line. Oh, Pat. I think he's just trying to perform for us. Prove us wrong. Thankfully, the foul, the foul hardware here does not have that insulting buzz that is attached <laughs> to some others. Make a giant scene, a spectacle. Yeah, make, sure, make sure everybody in the whole – and he's right in the middle, so everyone in the whole house could have known that uh, Pat Rufo crossed the line. That is a nice All right, and as the bowlers are kind of uh, sliding, moving over to their next game, I think we were doing a little adjusting ourselves here. Bill Fox on the right side of your screen. Wrapping up his game, he's just 
closed out a, I think that's a 123. Haven't quite been following him that closely yet, but I'm sure that's a, well, a bit was, of a disappointing he, game. He was in the top 20 to start the day, Rex. Yeah, he was. So the, you know, as the um, as the day is evolving, or as the, as the block is evolving here, and the bowlers who are going to be, com you know, competitive for the remainder of the the shift here, we're kind of adjusting who we're going to be watching. The list has gotten a little bit shorter of the scores we're going to keep for now, unless unless we see a big game out of the bowlers that we were following. Sure. Pitch there on 14. Yeah, that's Rick Gano, past winner of the Eastern Classic. Local legend here, longtime supporter of Connecticut Duckpins and uh, in the tournament, the Eastern Classic. Sponsor. Many thanks to Rick. And then, you know, kind of a fixture here at Lucky Strike Lane sure. for decades. Rick just turned back and pointed at himself. Self opening seven there for Brian the Rocket. Cover. I believe Eric Briggs doing quite well. He's a 10.53. Um, he's still sitting in third, but again, that's that's gettable. Um, that's gettable there in the C division. Yeah, you know, you rip off a 175, 180 game, and it gets you right back in there. That's Bobby Dunnick up in first position. Do I have that correct in the C division? I imagine so, yeah. I, I did hear he bowled well. That's great to see him there. I mean, Bobby's you know, a uh, part of the, the history of this tournament. I believe the youngest winner ever of the open division of the Eastern Classic. Please don't. Uh, <laughs> I believe that was the guy Babe Dugas a long time ago. Babe Dugas? Like way, way back. Um, I'm going to let my, you know, let the uh, director chime in here with to fact check us, but, uh, and update you as, as he, as he does. But, yeah. um, Great to see Bobby uh, coming back from some surgeries over the l last year or two and uh, to have a, a good showing at this tournament. Oh, sure. Uh, I see Steve Holson there just trying the six pinner and once again, uh, lucky strike wins. That's a very tough shot to, uh, to convert here, that six pinner. Brandon Dominique spared in the first, dropped nine, and then it just made it dead in the face with some flyback. It's worth pointing out, a little house characteristic here, lane 15, uh, for some reason or another, the right side of the cushion, very active. And you can see some very unique shots pulled off if you're catching something into the right side of the cushion on 15. I actually uh, made a bid at the 5, 6, 7, and the 7, 10 yesterday on that lane didn't oh, wow. make either of them the problem is i left them yeah <laughs> <laughs> on that on that lane i went strike five six seven seven nine ten seven ten and then i left the two and one the three four six man so it was a it was a grinded out 138 game yeah those are that sounds like a lot of leaves with pins next to each other not no <laughs> front nothing, to back distance nothing friendly at whenever all. somebody's just counting numbers or saying numbers in sequence it's probably not oh, a very sure. makeable shot oh sure in our, in our C division there, that's Eric Briggs coming out with a 20 box, spare and then strike in the second. Pat Rufo in that John D'Antonis-esque pink shirt. It's a good good impression. I'm, I imagine one of them will be wearing a lime green, yellow something. Today. Yeah. 
I think that, you know, Pat's showing respect and staying away from the oranges and the yellows no. and stuff. No, those are their colors. Yeah. Actually, that's not Steve Holster, excuse me. Now here comes Brian up on, excuse me, Wayne, not, not Brian, Wayne Lipko on lane 20. Wayne starting out two spares. Wayne spared in the first and went nine on and spare in the second. So he is 29 plus through two. Here comes Wayne's third. I believe they were waiting on a reset and it's come down. Brandon Dominique there off to your left, cutting a duck. Nice try by Brandon on the eight center. No dice. Wayne on. Coming up now to fill his spare. And he's right in there. Carries nine of them. Another nine drop. That's 38 in the second. We're going to be shooting the seven pin here. Brandon Dominique with a two on 10 out. He's got 41 through the third. Wayne all over it. Three spares out to shoot. And he's uh, I think he's in a bit of a groove at the moment. Be curious to see how he does when he makes the turn. Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of us up here in the north who bowl in this house pretty often look forward to that turn. One and two, three and four, usually pretty high scoring pairs in this house. But I think that's a, a double edged sword. Oh, sure. Because then there's an expectation that, you know, when you're on that pair that you're going to do well. But. Ironically, or maybe not, my high game in this house is on one and two. Yeah. Started a game, double nine, spare, triple. And, you know, sometimes there's no no good explanation for why certain pairs hit better. It could just literally sometimes be down to the grain of the wood, you know? Literally. I mean, the way the lanes are constructed might be a little more generous to certain styles of play or, you know, the condition of the rubber or... Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of variables that go into it and almost and, and some and, that are out of our control. And psychology of bowlers bowling on the pairs is is one of them. Oh, yeah. You know, people they, they loosen who, up a little bit. Yeah. People or who, they expect something out of themselves and they can send some. Yeah. You know? He's a pro here. All right, so I've been uh, – fact check is in. Yes. Bobby Dunnick is the youngest B division winner in okay. tournament history. Uh, so I think you're right. The Dave Dugas? Yeah. Yeah. I, I read my uh, I read my table quite well. I believe also that was something that uh, – And Babe Dugas uh, was uh, second Eastern, uh, 19 – Brian, give me that. 23? 1932. Oh, wow. That's just a few years ago. Yeah. So uh, He was about, age 17. An unbreakable record. I mean, that, and that's just ridiculous. I mean, Kobe D'Antonis won this tournament at the age of, he was either 19 or 20. Now, Kobe was good when he was 17. Kobe would not have won the Eastern Classic at the age of 17. The fact that somebody at the age of 17, you know, you can't even vote. I mean that's 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 kind of remarkable. Yeah, and, you know, I, conditions and times were different back then. You sure, know, you're talking a couple, you're talking wood pins, wood sideboards, uh, hand set pins. 
you know, it was a completely different scoring environment back then. I wouldn't be surprised at all to learn, though, that there were probably a hundred north of a hundred entries, maybe north of two hundred entries. I think oh, there sure. were some years in this tournament. Oh, sure. With three hundred plus entries. Wayne Lipka over there on lane nineteen in his fourth frame. He's just gone off the side for eight. Left the one four, so he moves to fifty six in the third. Not a bad start. Fifty six with no double. I mean, that's not bad. Brandon Dominique, a nice mark on lane 15 to get back on the board. He's 51 plus. Lane slides on by there. And Wayne will be in the mid 60s, 66 in the fourth. Takes a 10 box there. Nice try at that split there from Brian West, but the back to back opens. Brian struggling a little bit this game at yeah. 59. I think we've only got one mark. Second frame. Yeah, it was a strike. I believe he missed a single last frame. Takes a 10 there. So we've got uh, a, on the bottom of your screen there, a Duckpin TV trivia presented by www.duckpinbook.com. Around the time of the 1933 Eastern Classic, Frank Barber wanted to organize a national league. Name the six cities Barber originally wanted to host teams. Oh, wow. Anybody... Uh, and we're talking I don't know. national, so we're not talking just the north. But also, 1933, the uh, the map of Duckton going was a little different. You know, one of those could have been like Atlanta. Yeah, no you kidding. Know, I, uh, the sport went south back then. Um, for those of you watching who who think you know the answer to that question, or maybe you do know it, um, you can enter them into the chat on the YouTube stream. It's an interesting looking split here for Wayne. He left the bucket oh, on wow. the right side, plus the seven pin. And he almost cut, converted. He almost he went... made it, left the six, which is even stranger. Yeah. I don't know about you, Nick, but I'm pretty thoroughly stumped other than a couple of cities with the uh, with the trivia question. Yeah, so I mean there's probably some like extremely like that are the not urban areas now or main duck pin areas now, but they would have been then. You know, there could be places in Connecticut, I don't know, like, you know Bridgeport or <laughs> right. you know. Like I imagine there would be one from, you know, Rhode Island, perhaps. There's like, anybody Connecticut watching Hartford? Yeah, yeah, right, right. Uh, D.C. could have had a team. Yep. You know, Baltimore. I mean, the Duckpin, Duckpin scene in Baltimore back, you know, early 20th century was just, just absurd. You know, the amount of action, the amount of center. There was like all the center on every block. You know, we had the, the Baltimore Beltway, and it used to be the saying that there was a Duckpin center off every exit, pretty much. Yeah. It's a bit different these days, but, you know, those of us who still play the game, oh, yeah. you know, show up for tournaments like this, we, um, you know, we cherish the game the same way that everybody did back then. Oh, yeah. There's an appreciation for the uh, a lot of the history behind it, especially like this event alone, you know, the history of this event. And, I mean, even, you know, down on the lower end there, lanes one through eight are the original bedstock from the original Lucky Strike. We right. are bowling on the same lane. Tronsky, you know, other guys bowled on. Yeah. Legends of Connecticut from the thirties and the forties. I mean, you're talking very old. Circuit. Yeah. 
um, which is an interesting targeting difference because the construction of lanes one through eight is an older style of lane construction. They're the same width as the other 16 lanes, but they are made up of 41 boards. Nine through 16 are made of 39, or nine through 24 are made of 39 boards. So the boards are slightly wider, which means your arrows and your dots are in just slightly different positions than they are on lanes one through eight. So there is an adjustment there. That's Nick, you're actually teaching me uh, some history here of a house I've been bowling in for a long time. I, was, I didn't know that, but... Uh, I noticed it the first year I was down here. I went up to the counter. I said, hey, Rich, you have 41 boards on some of these lanes. Why is that? And then I got, I got the lesson. Wow. Maybe that's why one and two and three and four score so well. It's, <laughs> you, those you arrows would, are positioned in, the, in just would, the right spot. You would think, you, you know, it would be almost the converse that, oh, the newer surface would score better. But for some reason, one and two. Okay. I didn't even see the second one. So good job. Brian Vest caught a double there. I believe that was seventh and eighth. He was 69 through the sixth, and now a double up. Yeah, he needed that one. Yeah, that'll get him back in the game. Still not really a double you feel great about until that next ball. No, though. it's I mean, it's only it's only 20 until you do something with it. Right. Buddy Turner crossing over there on 13. Looks like Buddy's struggling a little bit. Actually, he's not doing. Yeah, yeah, he's 10:57 through eight, so he's he's a bit off, the, especially his usual pace. Yeah. And Buddy, a fantastic bowler from the Maryland area, comes back and makes the eight hitter though. Okay, here comes Wayne into your picture now on lane 20. Wayne. Wayne kind of keeping that 150 pace, 75 yeah. in the fifth, 85 working here. Great ball. Leaves the five. Yeah, placed really nicely in that one-two pocket. He was 85 plus in the six, right? So that moves him to 94. Yeah, so 34 above the box. That's setting the – You want to end up around 50. Right. He's, he's on the pace to do it. Converts – makes this, makes another mark, and – Puts a fill on it, and he's got 50-plus. Yeah, he's all over it. Oh. And that's two marks in a row. I believe Wayne has struck uh, none this game. He is all spare. I uh, left the strikes in the in the last game, I yeah. guess. Well, he, you know, you got to balance it out a little bit. He is on the spare pair, by the way. He is, so yeah. He's got five spares, so he's he's doing the right thing for the spare pair. I actually uh, – Got a very lucky strike on a spare yesterday on 1920, and I kind of was upset about it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was making every break. I wanted something to shoot. Yeah, he um, – it's a, it, if you can work it like that, if you're going to throw 15 or 20 strikes in a day, it's a lot better to, like, bunch them together, put three oh, sure. or four of them together, and then throw spares in a – spares only in another Ryan game. Vest coming up on lane 11 off the left side of your screen for the triple. Doesn't get it, though. Oh. Leaves the seven pin. That was a great ball. High in that one three pocket. Yeah. You just hear the uh, like the explosion that takes place down there at the at the deck. And that did, you know, turn that double into something really you know. Now he's gotta to continue to capitalize. He's gotta to continue to capitalize on it. Gonna shoot the seven pin now. Right here on lane eleven, and he's all over it. He gets his first spare of the game fist pump. Has a nice 29 box with a 20 box behind it. It gets him right back in the game. 118 through the eighth. And a 128 plus in the ninth. He's right there. Yeah, I have a feeling he's... Another mark for the 50 game. Able to breathe a sigh of relief come, getting that spare there. and Got to put one more box on the end. One more good box on the end. Yeah, the, the pressure you kind of feel as you're going through games... All, always with this target in mind, trying sure. to get to 150, it ebbs and flows. And, you know, you get to fifth, sixth frame, and you're only five, ten pins over the box. Yeah, now you're pressing. Yeah, you got. Then, you look up there, you got 64 in the sixth. Now you're pressing. Yeah. Big time. You can't, you you cannot get to the 150 number at that point without multiple strikes. If you want something that'll make you press, that's it. Yeah, margin for error goes down. Yeah. And on the flip side, too, in shift three, I think you have the advantage of if you bowl something good, let's say you get 
um, a good bit into the 1800s, yeah, maybe 1830, 1840, you know, let's say you shoot 1845, okay? you finish this squad, you're 1845, you're still putting the six-game leader on a 900 block to win the Eastern. Um, yeah. So there's that one thing in shift three, that there's a little bit of that, that final pressure that can be applied to the to the big guns, if you will, quote unquote, that yep. come in in the in the final round. Right. We got Lipka on a, a strike there. I did catch it. Put it, put it in. Put an end to the streak of spares. And because I believe that's exactly the, the the idea of the format of what I did. I had five spares out the gate early on. Then I caught a strike and you know ruined my my streak yeah. of spares. <laughs> if you're a little superstitious. Maybe you don't want the strike, but I don't know. Yeah. The opportunity at a double to really turn that into a big game. Well, I know on that pair yesterday, I started out with 28 plus in the second, and both both spares were off the side. So it was it was good strategy for that set of lanes. <laughs> yeah. There's Brian Vest. Is that a strike? No, he's just getting up now. That was the person in front of him. Again, Brian is 128 plus in the nine. Brandon on his two pin. Brandon trying to grind back into this game. He had 69 at the half and has just gone 20 box. So he's 99 plus through seven. Need a couple more marks here to close this game out. And here comes, here comes Brian. Rocket. And 128 plus. Uh, no, it's just a tough break. Um, That's a tough one. Yeah, I tell you what, there's anyone who can make it. Yeah, right. We Either. saw we saw him bring that seven back earlier uh, in the last game. So. Oh, he did strike in the ten. Oh. Okay, thank you. I'm getting correction from the statistician behind me. So that was his fill. So he did go twenty box in the ninth. So he is looking at one fifty six at the moment. Yeah, I noticed there wasn't a lot of disappointment about the seven eight. Uh, I guess yeah, he could live with a it. A little more reaction. <laughs> They were just a, the slight disappointment because they wanted to catch the double there. Yeah, it was uh, a great ball. I, I, I'd, I'd love to see if he actually clocked this and brings it out. Nope. Yeah, I mean, seven disappears, but a great, great back four. He had 69 in the sixth and brought it all the way back to 157. Like we're saying, you get that couple pins over your box late in the game, you got to throw up multiple strikes, and he did. Yeah. I think we got him updated on the leaderboard. If I'm not mistaken, he bumped up a couple of spots. Yeah, he is updated. He's 13, 18, 146. Yeah, he's, plus. he jumped two spots. He wasn't 16th. He moved to 14th. That's definitely in the cash. Yep. Um, you, you want to get as high as you can, of course. And it does, it's got to feel good, you know, to have a game that look like it's going in the wrong direction and to be able to recover and oh yeah that's that is a fantastic 150 couple game there absolutely Let's see what we got coming up here for wayne lipka wayne is 136 through the ninth so a mark in the 10th he'll get that 150 that he's looking for wayne currently sitting in 12th averaging 146 through his eight games So again, any any kind of mark, he's actually over the pace. Yeah. The o over the pace he's looking for, and he's over the pace that he's currently averaging. We haven't talked much about him. I'm just looking at his score, but Eric Briggs on that uh, C division. Yeah, he's having a, he's board. having a quite quite a nice game. Yeah. Ninety seven through the six. And that is a that's a great C division game. Yeah. That's a nice. I mean, you throw up a throw up an eighty eight half in the C division, you're doing something. Wayne coming up here in a moment. They're finishing out in front of him. Brandon Dominique, a 7-10. Yeah. Left side of your screen there. Gave that the good old fist pump just. I think he, he kind of liked it. He knew it had, had a chance when he let it go, but it's a tough eight, Phil. Hey, I tell you what, we were talking about the characteristics of this cushion. Um, the one seven ten I've seen made in this house was on 15-16. So let's see if he targets the 10 here. You get that off the wall or? And kick off the cushion. Target the oh, 10. Cushion. 
Oh no, he went. He went for the touch off the wall, but you have to take my word for it, folks. That, uh, <laughs> the cushion on fifteen is very active. You just wait till Brian Vest gets down there. Oh my god, that guy can make the back row. And Brandon will slide on by for nine out. He's one hundred and sixteen through the eighth. Yeah. 150 still in range there. Uh, two, two marks on the end. Two marks on the end. Here comes Wayne in his 10th frame. A light hit leaves the three pin. So spare leave for Wayne. Good 20 box out here for 156. And it was 157 for Vest. Yeah, right in the face there, Wayne. Strike for Eric Briggs. Eric Briggs with 106 through the seventh and just put a strike up in the eighth. Great C division game for Eric Briggs. Wayne converted his his spare. Yeah, he made the three pin. So this comes his fill shot now. Could shoot 156. And dropped seven of them. Leaves a common southern break. Leaves a two and one. Shoots 153. So that should bump him up a little bit. I believe that will get him. We'll probably get him past 11th. May get him close to 10th place in yeah. terms of average pace. But steadily climbing on that leaderboard, yep. went game after game. Him and Brian both. Yep. And and the, on the meet in the meanwhile, Brandon has uh, gone backward a little bit. Yeah. I think you know Wayne's game there was hitting, hitting the marks that uh, you want. He's all over the object. Uh, he's at 75 through five. You know, that's, that's about the pace you're trying to set. Yep. You want, Catch uh, three more. And then three, normally the three marks, three marks gets you around 70 something. Assuming you don't double or you don't have a crappy count. 70 something is what you're going to be looking at with three marks. So he, he gets to that number and then it's okay. Let me get another three marks. And I think he got, you know, three or four there, um, to shoot the, the mid one fifty. A tough two count on a double there for Steve Holtzner. Came up with an, uh, kind of a silly name for that recently. Called it a, uh, a Taylor Swift <laughs> because of her famous song 22. Oh, that's great. Of course, uh, the oh. uh, the one count is a blackjack. There is, a, there is an actual 22 there. Yeah, an Ouch. actual two and two. Ouch. Yeah. Um, tough way to, that we were talking about it earlier. It's not really a double until you fill it, right? Um, right. And ends up with eight out. All right. I mean, that's a good eight, but a very difficult frame. He goes from 74 in the sixth to 118. So he really only gained he gained 14 sticks. So that's like having two spares. Right. He ended up with really no benefit from the double. Brandon, meanwhile, had an open box there. Eight, 124 in the ninth. That will That will push him back a bit. I think you could see if you know if Wayne keeps this going with it, with a good pace that uh, Wayne could could pass Brandon easily. Yeah. Yep. And uh, Brandon will not make the turn. Hey, Jim. No. Why you up? Jim. Older than you. Yeah, have a second. Fifty one. Your your phone out of reach. Brandon will not make the turn. Brandon will finish on nineteen twenty. They'll get two games there. Um, I believe Brian will end on 15-16. And Wayne has just made the turn down to one and two. So Wayne Wayne actually got the same draw I did. So Wayne will be actually not quite. One pair off. Yeah. Um, I don't he'll know he'll whether, be ending on three and four. I don't know uh, you guys from the south. Yeah, I don't know if you guys from the south feel the same way about uh, these lower pairs here, the lower end of this house. But uh, if Wayne thinks of those things the way that we do, he's got to be happy about ending on one and two. I, 
yeah, I had some I had some questionable results on one and two to say the least yesterday. But, um, and I noticed the high game actually on that pair isn't as high as you'd expect it to be yet. Yeah, it's actually in the one. Not that 176 is bad. But yeah, that's well but, below. You know, you I know. shot my first year here again. I shot the. I think it was 195. I shot 195 on one and two. The next morning, 203, 208 shot in the same game on one and two. Oh my. So, and that's yeah, it's an explosive pair. Yeah, with uh, with explosive bowlers. With explosive uh, Steve bowlers. Dreyer and Colton Goo. Okay, there yeah. it is. Yeah. Um, I was just uh, informed that Bill Fox, even though we have uh, stopped <laughs> keeping live score for him, has an all mark game down there on one and two going. I think through eight. Try to get an update on what that score is and yeah. see if we should add him back to the scoreboard here. Tenth frame for Brandon Dominique. Right there, ten pin. Brandon again, one twenty-four through the ninth. Got a spare break here. I want to make this and get count for the hundred and forty game. Yeah, he's gonna take his time going through his little yeah, this is routine. A, important shot. It looked great. He's right on it. Every step of that delivery, or every step of that approach, and then his delivery, very solid. See the result there. Hits that 10 pin right in the face. Steve Holtzner, unfortunately, unable to like to get back after that tough ninth frame. He's 10, 10 or 126. His total was a bit low for eight, but looks like he got a chance there, and it just kind of a little short. Here's the fill for Brandon. He takes nine more, leaves the 10 again. A nice game, 143. Yeah, this time gets to hit the button and did sort of salvage that a little bit. I yeah. mean, I, I, 130 is probably a pretty disappointing place to end up. No, but that's 15, 20 pins off that mark. Kind of what we discussed earlier. If you're not going to get the big 170 game, it's okay. Stay the high 130. Save 140, you know. You got a tough game going, mark out the back three, shoot 138, you know. Yep. Shoot the 141. You know, he goes he goes 19 box in the tenth for the 143. So we got in between games here now, so some pairs haven't quite started yet. We'll have a camera going down to one and two because we've got an all marked game in progress down there. Bill Fox all marked through eight. Not sure if he's thrown his ninth yet, but we are working on getting a camera set up down there. And we will have that picture coming to you in a moment. Looks like Bill is getting up and ready to fire on lane two. And I believe this is his 10th. It looks like what I'm seeing from down here. We are behind 13, 14, some a ways away. But looking at the overhead sheet, there is there it is in your picture. They're working on it. All right, they're going to hold it up for Bill. Here we go. This is 10th frame. Good ball. Looks like he leaves the five. Not sure what his ninth frame was. I believe he might have marked a five pin now. And he's got it. So Phil shot coming here for Bill Fox. A real, real big score going down there. We'll see if Bill jumps back onto the top 20. And he will most likely take over that high game pot that is down there on one and two. Give Wayne something to shoot for. All right. Taking this time here. Letting the Ricky Schmidt on lane one fire away. Now Bill's going to step up here on lane two. Here comes the Phil shot. How many? 
I believe he dropped eight more. Seven more, maybe eight more. A little fuzzy picture there, but a very, very nice game for Bill Fox. Like Eric is coming back down to give us the final total on that. Ended up with 198. How many was that on the final ball? Okay. That is that is phenomenal. That's 198 game for Bill Fox down there on the the good pair. One and two. The unusual hit there for Johnny Blaze on lane is back. Extremely unique. We get the head pin for five. Makes it for the spare, though. That is. I was on lane 12. You don't see that very often. We're going to have our camera angle that was down there on 1920. We're moving that down permanently to one and two so we can keep an eye on what Wayne Lipka is doing down there. Bill Fox, you can scream back up onto your leaderboard now. Brandon Dominique falling back to nine. So, sorry, a little correction here. It was a 195 was the score for Bill Fox, but still an incredible game. Brian Vest blowing him up for the seven pin. Let's see if he makes it. This is his second frame of the game. He actually started with a spare in the first, so he's 19 plus. We've been following that nice game in the C division as well. Eric Briggs was averaging 133, dropped 144 in his ninth game. Real solid average. Nice ball there by Brittany Burke. Solid nine pin. Never mind. Let it spin. It's strike. That is three marks out the gate for Brittany Burke. Spare nine, spare, and a strike. Brian Vest here getting up to fire on 14. Again, he is spare, spare. Told us he felt like a strike bowler last game, but two spares out the shoot this time. Here he is on 14, right side of your screen. I mean, it's it's just it's not fair. Those those pins have families. Strike for Brian Vest, thirty nine through two, forty nine plus in the third. Beautiful booming strike. It was a five off the wall, but the five just didn't stand a chance. Switch it over to one and two now. You get Wayne Lipka here on lane one. This is Wayne's first frame of the game. He fires in there light. Leaves a favorable break. Not a, not a gimme, though. Leaves the 2-7.
Yeah, Wayne just behind that 150 mark now. And starts out, makes it on the outside, throws the two over. Just fair in the first for Wayne Lipka. Some good shooting here in front of us on 13, 14. Couple people all mark out the gate. Eric Briggs over there now on lane. 17-18, I believe. Yes, he's 11-97 through 9. He started out with a spare in the first. Brandon Dominique in 8 box to open. He, Brandon is 13-40 through 9. Averaging 140, 8.9, which again, very, very respectable, just not not top level at the moment, but he's a big game away. He just needs one big game here. And he goes light in the pocket, leaves a 9-10 split. Having a little bit of a technical issue on 17-18. We're getting that rectified, but I'm giving you updates as I get them, as I can see them. Brandon going to start out with two open frames. So Brandon looking at 17 or 18 through the second. So the other guy we're following on that pair is Eric Briggs. Eric Briggs did start with a spare in the first. Here's Vest on 13. For the double, leaps the side. He's going for a double there, leaves the 1-9. Wayne coming up firing now on lane two. Remember, Wayne spared the baby split in his first. Off the side here in the second. Six drop leaves the one, three, six, seven. Here's Brian on the one, nine. Beautiful. Perfect. Heavy hit. Four marks out the gate. Brian Vest is 69 plus in the fourth. No dice. Wayne open frame here. Takes a nine box. Wayne should be 16 and then 25 through two. The spare fill coming here on 17 and 18 for Eric Briggs. It looks like a good one. Leaks it a little left. Leaves the bread line six count. 16 through the first. Eric Briggs missed on the bread line, left the 3 6 10. The open frame there. Brandon Dominique is. Struggling over there. He's 18 through the second frame. Get him throwing his third here in a moment. I really, I mean, we haven't commented too much about uh, Styles other than maybe Brian, <laughs> Brian's velocity. But you know, Eric Briggs got a great delivery, yeah. good follow through for yeah. Le the, the lefty, you know, just kind of, just kind of, just glides in from the left side. Wayne. Again, Wayne, the tough second box, but 25 through two and plenty of time to get in a rhythm. And he has made the turn now, so he's down on the low end. Now you got to make the adjustments. It's off the side that time. One, four, seven. Yeah. On the inside of the on the inside of the three pin there, I think there's a little bit of a moral victory for not being on the outside of it, but you also tend to get better mix. Oh, yeah. More of, probably being more, being, uh, be it, head, be it heavy on the headpin. Brian, very heavy on the headpin there. On yeah. his, uh, Wayne picks, unfortunately. Yeah, 
There's Brandon. And Brandon carries it. That's strike a for strike for Brandon. First yeah. mark of the game. A three pin here on lane 14 for Brian Vest. Brian to go five marks in a row. Yes, he does. That is a nine load for 78 in the fourth. He is 88 plus in the fifth. Eric Briggs coming up now on lane 18. He's on an open. Off the side again, seven this time. One, six, nine. See what Eric does with it. Gonna get in this tough shot. He, his ball too. This is tough. He's crossing over with a lot of rotation. See what he does with it. Beautiful, beautiful shot. I think for his style, that's the way he has to play it. He's yeah. got to throw the pin at the six nine, but he covers it beautifully. And there on your screen, there we're just. Uh, bringing up that trivia question again. I don't know if you've had any more time to noodle on it, Nick, but uh, I'm still kind of at a loss. The question is, around the time of the 1933 Eastern Classic, Frank Barber wanted to organize a national league. Name the six cities Barber originally wanted to host the teams. So I think I've come up with Baltimore, Atlanta. I couldn't even pick the city in Connecticut. Um, Hartford? Maybe it's, maybe it's Hartford. Uh, I mean, I guess if we're now, talking would, metro, me, you know, quite go, metro areas, you yeah, would probably say Hartford, I go, Connecticut. I'd go D.C., maybe Providence. Um, and then as for a sixth one, I mean, um, maybe something in uh, – Did you in, go to Richmond? In north or, north or South Carolina. Oh, yeah. And that pin for Brian Vess almost walked all the way to South Carolina before <laughs> it fell down. Uh, that was some very unique pin carry. You don't see pins walk in here very often. So I think they the streak. Um, we don't have control shift R on the setup. So yeah. Sorry, Brian. <laughs> uh, uh, I think the pin was just scared to stay standing. Is yeah, what is I what mean, it came down I mean, to. Would you really want to be a single pin standing up there? Uh, not not me. I, I mean, at least when it's kind of when you share the brunt of the impact. But that is 98 through the fifth with a strike up for Brian Vest. And he is he's lighting up this game. Watch him climb up that leaderboard. Yeah, he really managed to keep that momentum at the at, that he gathered at the end of the last game where he was more bailing out oh yeah a game from a slower five slower start through five um, but he's he's definitely packed it in in the front five on this one and a nice mark still there. going in the six I believe Wayne just marked there in the sorry 10 box there in the fourth frame excuse me uh Phil Foreman uh was coming off of a double there, and we missed. I, I don't know if we had the camera on it, but I'm yeah, told he missed a single. Uh, you can see his score updated through 8-147. That's a big number. Big number. And watch him climb up the B division now. Yeah. I mean, Nicholson, that's that's tough to beat. But, you know, watch. He'll, he'll get close to Harmel now. I can't remember many Eastern Classics where we did Duckpin TV where we weren't talking about Phil Foreman a little bit. He's, he really... <laughs> He's just always around, huh? Yeah. Performs well in this tournament. You know, how, like local bowler, knows knows the he house knows well. The house, yeah. But but still just always performs pretty well in the tournament. You know, I think about it's like a Dunnix Bowl. You know, they know the place this place at like the back of their hand. You know, they know they know every board of this place inside right. and out. Thirty nine or forty one of them, depending yeah, on what lane you're on. Which, but. which lane? Eric Briggs here. That was a chop ball. I believe he was. Yeah, he was on a spare there. That's 37. Yeah, he spared in the third, chopped two, 37 in the third, and then he just took a tough. Second shot there. He's got four pins left. Yeah, only got four more out of that on the object pin. 
and then another He's, two. So he goes eight out. 45 through four. Really there's a mark there for Phil Foreman in the ninth. I saw him just walking off the lane with a clear deck, so I guess it was a despair in the ninth. Close call for Brandon Dominique. He is filling a spare on the side, but very makeable. Leaves the 1 3 6. Now over to 14. Here comes yeah. the rocket. Ryan, all mark through six and on a strike. Really dialed in right now. Let's see what he has cooking for his seventh frame. I mean, it's wow. just insane. Great ball. It's ridiculous. I, you know, some t some bowlers just kind of have a style when they're sitting up there on the approach. Oh my goodness. What, you can, oh my goodness. I hope did we catch that on camera? Oh my gosh. Did we actually catch that on camera? I really hope we did. He hit the head pin. And it slid sideways. Oh my God! He actually shot the one three six. Brandon Dominique did. He shot the one three six, hit the head pin on the way in, and it slid to the left. Yeah, you can see the disbelief, uh, you know, around him, and I, just conversing about how can, how does that happen? Well, I think he yeah, he just told you what he thinks of that. <laughs> uh, you know what? And in some ways, I don't blame him. Yeah, we caught it. Wayne over here still, you know, slow, slow start on this pair, one and two pair, where he's going to bowl this game and his next game. Really want to get something going here, knowing you got um, 16 more this frames. This is game of, 10, right? Oh, pardon me. So he'll finish on three and four. That's yes. right. See if we can catch Foreman. Coming up here in a moment for his ten. Nice ball there by Phil Clap. Oh wow, five ten. All right, here comes Phil, Phil Foreman. Left side of your screen. That is on lane seven, I believe. He is a hundred and fifty-seven plus through nine. Phil doing us a favor here, uh, wearing a colorful shirt. Bright green. Easy to we, know, we know who he is. Easy to spot him. He's all over the head pin. I think he dropped nine there. Yep, oh, yep. Carried the seven there. Just the three pin. So a big, big total through nine. Here's Wayne on lane two. Oh, my. Ouch. Blows it up for the seven, eight split. One and two is supposed to be nicer than that. It is, yeah. And it, and it does get. Foreman's yep. got the three pin. All over it. He's got a ball in hand for a possible 186. Got Brian Best up on 13. Let's see if he drops it in there one more time. He is working on a double. This is for the triple. I mean, come on, Ted. But wow. how the heck do you stand? That is just crushed. That's obliterated in there. Yeah, I mean. 127 through the sixth. I wonder, you know, I'm watching him on his first ball and his posture and how and his pace. Foreman dropped eight more on his fill. A nice 184 game for Phil. Here's Brian attempt at that 10 pin. This is to stay all mark. He is all marked through seven. No. Oh. All right, so the all mark streak ends. But a fantastic total. Yeah, a little disappointing. I think you could see. He's going to be in the 150s through eight. 155. He drops a pin there. So this is a big opportunity. It's a really big opportunity with two games after this. Put a big, big number up and climb up the board. Not saying first, but somewhere in that 150 average range. You know, he, he needs to get to 182 to average 150 after this game. Yeah. So. That's very, very gettable. Yep. At that's a mark. And a good launching point, you know, yeah. to get to that mark. Had yeah. fought for it over the course of today. Yeah. And now, you know, 160, 160, 18, 20. That's, yeah. 
That's a great finish. It's playing. Yeah. It's playing. For those of you participating or uh, planning to participate in the uh, trivia challenge, we're going to reveal the answer to that question coming up on your screen here. Uh, in game 11, name the six cities Frank Barber wanted to organize a national league in to host the teams. You could also go creative and say that maybe we're overestimating the National League, and it could have been like Willimantic, you know, <laughs> Sparrows Point down in Maryland. Yeah, you know, it could have been, it could have been random towns. You right. know, so many bowling alleys that you know back then that you know are in the history books now. Yeah, some that you know, some I don't even know about. Some undoubtedly, I, know, I wouldn't know know of. Yeah, you know, I know a lot about this game, but you know, some of the old centers. You now, someone will mention. I know, mean, that's ninety years ago. That's yeah. You know, I, I wasn't around more, nor was no. anyone in this building, oh, and wow. neither is Brian Vest bowling ball because it has just left the building. Yeah, and, and it's created a hole and he, a void in the cushion. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a black hole on lane yeah. 14. Watch out. That, um, is, that is 165 plus in the night, as easy as you'd like. And he paid the price, yeah, as they say. Oh, there's Pat Rufo, inspired by Brian. He there, I can do it too. But I'll do it in a pink shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Brandon and Dominique is doing over there. Brandon, a bit of a struggle at the moment. He's 75 through the sixth. Of course, he just had that absurdly ridiculous, terrible break last frame. Yeah. I think we might have missed a strike for Wayne Lipka in his fifth frame. Um, I believe our scoreboard operator covered it, though. Yep. We love them dearly. Here comes Brandon up on 17. You know, you got to regroup a little bit after an unlucky break. Only 15 over the box. This is saveable, though. Yeah. Mark out for 150. Mark out for 150, Catch get a, a double. double. Yep. You just you want to avoid the situations where you're late in the game and need a double. The more you find that self, you find yourself in that situation, the worse it is. Yeah. Brian. Brian stepping up here. See, we're gonna get Brandon shot first on 17. Yeah, flipping the switch back and forth between these guys. Be quick. Brandon in there for the 10 pin, and here comes Brian. Great Needs ball. Another to... strike for 200. Come on. Hold on. Oh, look Hold at on. this. Look at this. He wow. says he got teased. He Gets did. That was a strike for 195. Another just monster first yeah. ball. I mean, if he carried that hit, there's no one else in this building that can carry that hit. Yeah. It's just, he's, he's the guy. Brandon did a great job and, there. And case in point, Pat Rufo ends up leaving two and one. <laughs> you know, and he makes it breaks it up almost a strike. Let's see if Brian can cover here for 190 couple. No. Uh, you know, he's he missed nah, that 10 pin outside to the that. right. So he's gonna be in the 180s. He's 174 through the nine. He's struggling to struggling to get the ball over to the right side of the lane without it dropping off. The target leaking to the right. Still a big game, 184, and watch him climb up the standings now. He has crossed the 1500 barrier. He needed that 182. He ties it up with uh, Phil Foreman. All Phil. the way to he goes all the way to eight. Two 184. Jump to second. Yep, Phil has Mike Nicholson in out it, in front in of him in his sights. In his, yeah. in his sights. I mean. You're looking at what that number is, a 1750. He, well, he needs a bit. He needs yeah. 329 yep. to get there. A couple 165s. Yeah. But, I mean, if you just fired a 180 game, you know. Yep. We actually got dueling 184s there on the, on the stream. Yeah, no doubt. Game 10, uh, game 10, a pretty good one for a couple of these guys. to catch 
Wayne's next frame. He's gone spare in the seventh, 82 plus. Here comes Wayne on lane one. Yeah, Wayne, 82 through the seventh. He's on a spare. We'll need to catch a couple marks here on the end to save the game. Good ball. Tough break. Leaves a 9-10 split there. Brandon Dominique, good ball for the seven pin. He was working on a spare there, so... The nine fill gives him 94 in the seventh. Good brain coverage. Is Wayne shooting his spare? No, through the hole. Back to Brandon. Going 18 lanes away, one lane to the other. Here comes Brandon at the seven pin. No. Misses to the right. Makes it for 10. A big mistake there for Brandon Dominique. 104 through the eighth. Is just going six count on his ferry. He's 84 through the seventh. He's looking at the bread line. One, three, six, and ten. Kicked this earlier and makes it this time. Uses the wall. So good mark there for Eric. 94 plus in the eighth. It is a really uh, cool thing that, you know, bowlers from up north Canada uh, make their way down here. You can see th there's a different variation of the game that a lot of them bowl up there. Um, but there's also a couple of styles that you see. Um, some some of the bowlers come down and they their delivery looks a lot like everybody you're seeing who's a, who's a regular duck pin bowler. And yeah. then there's a few of them, yeah, which the, you can the see. The rubber band release. The rubber band release where they... The backspin. Put some backspin on it. They release in the. Uh, they kind of put reverse spin on the ball, and you know, I will have to say, I do have to say, like they're extremely accurate. You know, they hitting their pin. Um, it's truly remarkable how consistently they can hit it. Brandon um, Dominique goes through the middle there. Looks like he'll be open this frame. Nice comment there from La Arch, and he's watching from Delaware, an old friend of the uh, of the Southern Show. La, thanks for watching, buddy. Nice try from Brandon on that middle rip. Takes only the two six out there. He's a tricky shot here. And I, I I really hate shooting these for a third ball because it actually encourages you to throw away from what would be otherwise the object pin. Yeah. It's, it's a hold a safe too. Shooting the three four seven. 
He takes the two. Brandon, a tough game here. He's 113 through the nine. Ninth frame coming up for Eric Briggs, and he's got a chance here to make a good game out of this. He's still trying to chip away at coming back and catching that second spot in the C division, which is Charlwood at a 135 average. Eric Briggs currently sitting at a 133 even. Yeah, we've got Wayne Lipka through his 10th game. You know, only, only able to get to 125 down there on one and two. Mark in the ninth, and then an open frame in the 10th. It's tough. That's a tough game to, to have on that pair, but three and four was hitting pretty good yesterday. So let's see if what he can, you know, what he can catch on three and four. He ends, he ends on that pair. I think just as many, I hear just as many bowlers say that their high game is on three and four in the house versus one and two. So nice shot from Eric Briggs. He had the bread line plus the eight pin, five pounded on his spare and made a great shot off the wall. And our pair with uh, Brian Vest is uh, waiting to move over to their the next set. Brian Vest will be ending on 15 and 16. Our current angle we're showing now, 15, 16, is the pair on the left side of your screen. We have Johnny Blaze coming on now, the 1314. We'll have him on our other camera view. We have Johnny has a so so score through his 10 games, but we'll see if he can light it up on camera for us. Brandon has struck in his 10. Needed that. He's 123, two balls to go. He'd like to catch another one here, save 140 game, but he is starting to slide down the board a bit. With plenty of shift five guys left to, you know, to light it up. And I imagine they will. There's going to be a couple of them that are really going to get out there and get on a run, make a run at this championship. And Brandon leaks it left. That is no double. One, three, five, and six. So with Wood here looking at a low 130 game. Nice spare there. 20 bucks in the 10th kind of saves the game a little bit. 133 for Brandon Dominique. And you can see he just fell down another spot, down to 11th now on the leaderboard. Lipka has fallen back a bit as well. He's down to 16th. Brian Vest all the way up into 8th. He is on the 150 face. You've got eight guys now in the tournament averaging 150. Of course, some of them threw 10 games, others of them threw six. But Brian Vest is now your squad leader. And he has taken that lead by 29 pins. So it's a comfortable lead. Waiting on some games to start. Mormon, Lipka Vest. Briggs is just finishing up now. 117 through nine. He's shooting the 410 split. Almost makes it. Oh. No. 
Eric finishing out 126. Game could have been a little bad. A couple bad counts in there. But not going to do too much damage to him. He's still comfortably in third place in the C division. Switching over now to one of our central pairs here. This is Logan Turner thing up on lane 12. Great pitch. And Johnny Blaze on 13. Not quite as good of a pitch, but a four pin. Getting started now on 15-16. Over at the Brian Vest, he has started out his game off the side for the 1-2. Right here to the left of Pat Rufo. And he's got it. Sparing the first for Brian Vest. He's starting to get into that rhythm. Coming off a 184 in his 10th game to get to 1502. He is the only bowler on this squad averaging 150. The other seven bowlers in the tournament that are averaging 150 are all on shift five, which is coming up next at one o'clock. And I'm sure the viewership will rise a little bit as we get closer to the finale. I hope it's going to be an exciting one to see who wins the 93rd Eastern. The Eastern. Yeah, we have the full name, you know, the Frank Barber Memorial Eastern Duckpin Classic, but to us who are To us that are competitive in this game and, and know the tournament, know the history, it is just known and referred to simply as the Eastern. And you can say you've won the Eastern. That's a pretty incredible thing to say. And I think actually more so than the prize money in this tournament, it's about the prestige of being able to say that you won the Eastern. Yeah. I, believe me, the prize money is, is uh, great to go home with, but I agree. I mean, oh, sure. I mean 93 years running here. To, to add your name to that list, yeah, and it's but you know to be one of the people whose name shows up there multiple times. I mean, it's a, yeah, it's quite an honor, quite an accomplishment, yeah, deserving of a lot of honor. And I think what's cool there's a few guys that you that are multiple winners, and you look there, you know, many years apart. Not even like they had a back to back. Well, back to back very impressive. So, you know, oh, they won, and then they won three years later. Like no, they some of their guys they've won fifteen years, you know, or so after. Yeah, I mean, uh, Brandon through the middle there. We'll call it a spread his... eagle. We're, we're up north. It's spread eagle. Spread eagle. First first frame here. Both his games, 11 and 12, are going to be right oh. where you see him now on yes. that pair. On 19 and 20. You got Brian Vest coming up as well on lane 16. He had a nice bit of that spread eagle, though. He got a flyback. He did, yeah. Here comes the rocket. Oh, no. Cut right through the heart. Boy, he is dialed in, though. That's, That's a... 12 in the first. 1-5 only. Brandon shooting his wood ball now. Takes a 9 out. Lipka has started his game yet. He's down there on three and four. The Phil the Foreman's pair there must have gotten uh, an early start. They're all... already in the sixth box. Wow. <laughs> 74. He is. It's going to be hard to, to hit that one here, but not. Fair, fair five bagger gets you there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just a casual spare five bagger. Right, 
here comes here comes Wayne. They're just getting started their eleventh game now. And it's down there on three and four. I was down there doing some camera work, moving, uh, getting herself set up for these last couple of games, and I passed by Wayne. There was a little look of disappointment about that last game, 125, but he looks confident. He, he still, knows he's got to bounce back with a good game. You know, here. a big two on the end, and he's he's again, he's not looking to win at this point. I think he'd have to have an otherworldly, you know, last two. I'm talking like 400 the last two yeah. um, to have a shot at winning. But, you know, he's still got a good shot. Put two real good games here on the end and, you know, and, you know, make some cash. I think we just saw him shooting the 6'10 and miss it to the outside, got the 10 pin. Yeah, he has a pin about 15 feet back up the lane. Yeah, I guess Brian Vest not the only one with some power, able to bring pins back. Brandon Dominique coming up here on lane 19. See what he can do. He's got a nine box through the first frame. And through the middle leaves the two, three, and six. Yeah, and, he, you know, I, he looked very smooth, like well-timed delivering that ball. He looks like he's um, he's comfortable. Just need the pins and the, the lanes to cooperate. Just saw that comment pop up from Jimmy Nestor. Thank you, sir. That was, uh, that was a fun time. I didn't realize that we were talking about the uh, the Palace Candlepin show and your your famous uh, 20 or so second spare you had on camera on Candlepin Bowling, which is uh, they like to let it spin, too. They're, you know, they're, they're part of that same contingent. So. As they should. Yeah. Tough 9-9 nine, nine to start for Brandon Dominique with 18 in the second. At Rufo, breaking 10. Yeah, Brian Vest is a tough one. Zigzag plus the 7. He's on the lively cushion. Just watch. Watch out. Oh, man. He got something to come back, didn't he? He did. He, you know, he only got the 6-8 uh, the out of that, but the 6 came flying back. Unfortunately, it just flew over everything. Right. Didn't add anything to the count there. And you see, depending on where he hits this five pin, it might come flying back too. Oh, wow, he didn't hit it at all. That's a tough box. It's twenty eight for the third with a mark. Here's Wayne. Oh, great ball from Wayne. Looks like a strike. Now he's got a ball in his hand. Maybe he's got the seven pin standing. A little far from us here in the booth. That is the seven. Yes. Right on it, though. He gets the, gets the mark. Light hit for Brandon. Leaves double wood. 3-9. This is always easier on the first ball than it is the second, oh, isn't without it? without a doubt. Without a doubt. You know, on the first ball, you don't have to try to hit it. You just do. Pulls it left. So three opens out the gate for Brandon. That's not what you want to see. Eric Briggs, meanwhile, though, spare strike out the gate. So he's looking to have a strong game here in the C division. Not quite sure where he finished that last game. I know he was uh, he was doing well charging up. I think he might have moved up on the leaderboard a spot, but per maybe not. Um, who breaks? Breaks, yeah. No, he actually was a little under his average, but he stayed where he was. Okay. He's, he's comfortably in third at the moment. Okay. He's about five pins in average clear of four. Wow. That's incredible. That's blown up in the one-two pocket for Brian Best and a 9-10 split. Yeah, I mean, Unfortunately, he's on the wrong lane. If he's on 15, he can play this, play this off the cushion. Right. right. I... You have to work some magic on 16. I got to say, you know, this the 8 9, or rather the 9 10 and the 7 8, they're just out there. They're going to be in your games if you're hitting the head pin here and there. Yeah. 
you just try to minimize damage, get the, get the pin it out, and move on. You tend to get those when you're a little heavy on the head pin, pin scatter in just a, a weird way. The four pin or the six pin, whichever it is, probably just tucks itself straight through the, the hole and doesn't take either one of them with it. It's not, it's kind of like getting tapped with the, the six pin or the four pin wrapping around the seven or the ten oh, and sure. ten pin. see a question popping up on your screen from our uh, producer there. Which bull are you rooting for today? You see the leaderboard. Maybe they're not on the leaderboard. Maybe they're family, friend. I'm, I'm going to make the call right now just so that maybe I can be right later and make myself sound good. Well, we got to start making calls now. I mean, it's time. Yeah. Bernie Hipkins wins the Eastern Classic. Ooh, that's a good pick. Bernie, Bernie Hipkins from the fourth position. He's going to come out with a big first two, and he's going to win the Eastern. A big first two? You think that's going to? First two. Okay. I don't even know where he's starting. Yeah. But I think that's a really good pick. Um, I can also, I'm also going to make a prediction that there is going to be at least one 200 game in the next round. Okay. In the next squad. Those are good good predictions. Yeah. I think odds are, odds are with you on the 200. Yeah. Some good shooters. More than capable of getting the 200. I mean, that said, there's not a lot of 200s. For, for those of you out there um, that are into this, if you if you parlay the over 0. 0.5 200 games and Bernie Hipkins to win, we'll go with like plus 350. <laughs> plus 350. But I'm not taking bets. Spare for Brian Vest in the fifth. Gets himself back on the board, 47 plus in the fifth. Yeah, I think, you know, we've got a little time here, another half a game, game and a half, rather, before this is over. I'm interested to hear what some of the the higher scores here, the Bryans, the D Brandons, uh, are thinking about Absolutely. how I'll, their morning went. And we'll, what... I will say, for the morning he's having, this is not the, this is not the 11th game, at least the start of an 11th game that Brian wanted to have. But yeah. still got the time to bring it back. In the ball. In yeah, the we'll, ball. Have to, we'll have to check in with uh, Wayne down there. Wayne with a 63 half. So 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 score at the moment, and Phil Foreman down there has 94 through the eight. Yeah, Wayne wasn't able to make too much of that spare, uh, that seven pin he picked up, but uh, put seven on it and then got a ten. Brandon Dominique down there on 1920 did get in the board. Did let me start up. <laughs> he got on the board in the fourth frame, 27 in the third, and then he threw a strike in the fourth. Yeah, I mean, he's unfortunately left some, some splits this game so far. One way to solve that problem. He's, he's down to the point now he's got to throw multiple strikes. Yeah. And he's, again, he's sort of still, like, if he can throw multiple strikes, he's in range of putting up a big number. He's still in range of 1,800. Yeah. Um, you know, possibly in 1,810, 1,820, you know, get up in that top five area. That would be the question, too, is when this is all said and done today, how many 1,800s will we see on the board? Yeah, I mean, I Maybe think fifth might be 1,800. Fifth? Yeah, I mean, you look at the names that are already at uh, 900 plus. But, and you also you also look a little down the board, you know, on the six game totals there. You got John Green and John Peterman. Yeah. Two guys more than capable having a, a nine something block. Yeah. Um, and if you put your, you know, if you were going to put your money on John D'Antonis being above what eight thirty six or eight sixty six rather, yeah, fifty six. Let me try that one more time. Um, you know, I take that. I take the over on that all day long. This is Brian on a spare that is leaked out the side. Yeah. Almost takes the head pin out, but he doesn't. Probably well that he did. See him a little twisted on his delivery open. Hips not quite facing the the line square with the 
square with the pins. But in spite of that, you know, you can tell there's his timing is pretty good. You know, not everything has to be nice perfect shot. to be able to drive it. And look at that. Excellent. That, on the other hand, a very nice, stable delivery based in the direction he wanted. Makes a bit of a self-deprecating joke about hitting the head pin on the second ball. But, you know, <laughs> you know what? He needs marks right now. And however they come to you, you got to get them. Yeah, can't be picky. Phil Foreman looks like a tough ninth box for Phil Foreman. 101 through the ninth. Might have heard the cheer in the background there for Kristen Kachevsky. Her mom, Mary Ann, sitting behind her, oh, yeah. cheering her on. She's been here the entire weekend yep. doing statistician work. Tough uh, score going for Eric Briggs. He's not in terrible shape at 45 plus through four, but he had a three box. Oof. He, had a, he started out with a 20 box, strikes fair, then he went two on and three out. So he is three marks and five over his box. Ouch. That's, that's a shame. Let's see what he does here in his fifth frame in a moment. So we're trying to catch Wayne down there. Yeah, we're trying to catch Wayne on lane three. And catch that catch that ball. Wayne's shooting a ten pin down there. And he misses. Brian Vest coming up now on lane fifteen, riding two spares in a row. Yeah, starting to see the wind come out of the sails for, for Wayne down there a little bit. There's still time Off here. Off the side, walk a walk a walk it up. Wow, and that's <laughs> nicely timed. Backdoor strike for Brian Vest on lane 15. They don't. This house doesn't give them out that's that a, much. That's, but a, that's a unicorn right here. Uh huh. That's a. That's like seeing a unicorn in this house. That is not a. I actually did have one yesterday. Of course, it came when I had 57 into six. So <laughs> it's like, yeah, why not? We'll give him one. We'll give him one. Yeah. And then you know what happened the next box? Throw an absolute rocket in there, six pin. <laughs> it's like, you know, I, I threw it too good. Nice. But you do you did what you're supposed to do. You know, yeah. the house the house gives you a, a little bit of luck. You try to capitalize on capitalize, it. yep. And Dominique looking at 56 at the half. And again, multiple strikes. Needs multiple strikes. And going to be coming up here in a moment on lane 19. Yeah, Brian Vest coming up on 16 in a moment. Brian is now riding a backdoor strike. We're going to have to see what he does with it. First now, Brandon on lane 19. Very thin hit. Leaves a 2 4 10. And we are getting close to the point here where there's this place is really buzzing. There's there's people from Shift 5 rolling Shift in. Shift yeah, 5 the here. Atmosphere is starting to get a little good, especially if someone starts having a big game. Yeah. Brandon Dominique for his wood ball. Uh, his fair shot, excuse me. Nice try at it. Here comes Brian on 16 for the double. Five pin denies him the double. Wow. Stubborn, stubborn. That messenger crossing over the lane. Had two chances at it. Yeah. Left wall and right wall. Comes Brian for the spare, shooting the five. All over it. 
93 through seven, spare up in the eighth. Needed that. But it really could have, should have, would have been a double. There's the flyback that I was talking about on 15. You see right there. Still Foreman. Getting ready to start his second game. He finished out with 109 last game, which wasn't too great. That's going to drop him probably behind Harmel after 11. You had 14, 23, and 109 together. It's dropping the average a bit. Open frame for Eric Briggs on lane 20. Did fill his... There. All right, here comes Brian Vest on. <laughs> Needs to mark out here for a good game. Could mark out for 150 couple. 112 through the eighth. Brian shooting the six pin now on lane 15. Just has it. 122 plus in the ninth. He says, Hey, I finally hit one on the right side of the lane. I mean, look, they're struggling a bit down there. He's in the feet, quickly firing here in his 10th frame. As in he got wood there, not a mark. Brian Vest on a good game. Brandon struggling this game. Eric Briggs not doing too great at the moment in this game. Got time to catch a couple marks on the end. Of course, Briggs again playing for the B division. And uh, still Foreman with that 109 did drop back to third place in B division. So Foreman and Briggs, both third in the B division. Eric Briggs getting up now on 19 to shoot his seventh frame. Yeah, Bill Fox with that big game down there on one and two has gotten himself back on the leaderboard. He is in 17th, averaging 145 after 10 games. Not sure what he shot for his 11th yet or if he's finished his 11th. Eric Briggs off the side for five on his first ball. One, three, nine in the middle, four, seven on the left. And Lucky Strike wins again on the washout. Leaves the nine. Brittany Burke, a nice game going here on 15. Tough four out, though. Shoots 156. Now, on lane 16, here comes Brian. 
is a big box for Brian in game 11. He's 122 plus in the ninth. He wants another mark. He's riding five marks in a row. Make it six marks in a row. Big booming strike there in the 10. That's a big, big shot for Brian Vest. 132 for the ninth. Strike up in the 10. Absolute pressure. Just stay here. See Brian's remaining balls of the 10th. No big scores down there on 1920, unfortunately. Both Brandon and Eric struggling a bit. I want to see if Brian can do it one more time and possibly get to that 160 number. He's got a ball in hand, though, to get two balls in hand to get wood for 150 game, which can right where you want to be to be in the top couple spots. Again, I'm, my estimate is around fifth place will be 150 average. Right around fifth. That would be an 1,800. Ryan for the double. Oh, no. Just like his second frame, 1-5 only. Now he's got to hold the pins. Doesn't want to fall too far behind. You know, you know four out or two out would only be 144 games. Drop him under 150 pace. See how much he can hold here. Oh, no. Only takes three more. Five out. 147 for Brian Vest. However, a good 147. He marks out his last six boxes to get there. A little bit of in-between now for the transitions for folks between games 11 and 12. Wayne Lipka, 130. Brian Vest, a 147. A little bit slow going down there on 19 and 20. Eric Briggs, 95 through the 8th. Brandon Dominique, had a spare, I believe it was a nine spare, in his eighth frame. He's up in the ninth now, and he just buries it for the strike. Not a moment too soon there. No, not at all. Sorry, that wasn't his. That I was quoting the wrong score there. Excuse me. I'll, well, need, a, so, I'll need a score check on him or someone update that score. So the... the Answer to our trivia uh, question is on your screen. There's a reminder. The wow. question was, what are the six cities in 1933 that Frank Barber was considering to represent or, or to participate uh, or host, rather, the, the teams that would play in a national league? And there are some surprises there. Boston, Baltimore, Brooklyn, Washington, D.C., Willimantic, and Richmond. How about, I think I said Willimantic jokingly. Yeah, but how about Brooklyn, New York? Uh, man. And Richmond. Richmond, I could, yeah. I could have fought Boston. The yeah. double Massachusetts centers back then. Yep. But I got Baltimore and D.C. I'll, I'll take that. Yeah. And a joking Willimantic. I, uh, I was not, not quite able to, like, track what was happening with responses if people were – taking guesses at that, but I, uh, I'd be interested to know if anybody got as many as, like, five out of six. And anybody who got Brooklyn, New York, you know. Extra credit. That's great. Extra credit, yeah. All right, final game of shift three underway. Brian Vest starting out with a zigzag. Not sure if you guys have a name for that up here. Five, six, nine, ten. Uh, no, I don't think. I, not one that I use often, but I like zigzag. I got to tell you. <laughs> oh, 
strange hit there. I saw this a couple times yesterday. A bucket for Pat Rufo. Three, five, six, and nine. See, if Brian does almost makes the zigzag. Nice shot. Leads to five. That same hit on 15, he would have probably made it off the cushion. Shot of Bill Foreman, who is 28 through the second on an open. He throws a pretty decent ball there, leaves the triangle in the left corner. Oh, pardon me, he was on a spare, a very strangely marked spare. So yes, that is 45 through the third, and a triangle now in the fourth. We now have a current score for Brandon Dominique. He is 104 through the eighth of the strike in the ninth. So, chance for a big 10. Probably got to catch the first strike in the 10th. Catch the first strike in the 10th. Got a shot of shooting 150. He ripped the middle, though. So, and no spare. So, that's, that's really hurting. That's a seven count. 121 through the ninth. Get Wood to shoot 130. Not the 10th frame you wanted. That's pretty much going to put Brandon out of the running to, for the top spots. 129 for Brandon Dominique. Brian Vets coming up now on lane 15. Brian, nine box to start the game. Okay, here's Brian on 15. It's the left side of your screen. Off the side, one, two, four. Here's one, two, four for Brian to get on the board for the game. Catches it off the wall. He's got it. That is the very unfavorable side of that shot in this house. Yes. And you could actually see that the four pin stayed up. It wasn't until he got right. the, the two off. off the wall that yeah. take it. He, he just brute forced it. Yeah. <laughs> is one of the few houses I bowl at where I, I it really matters what side of that you hit. While we're not paying attention to him, Eric Briggs has doubled in the ninth and tenth. All right, he's setting up a, a good up close. a possible 140 game here. Get a little closer to Charlwood in second. He's on lane 20. Let's see what he does here for the potential triple. Oh, he's there. Heavy hit. Drops eight, leaves the two four. And you got it. He's in the one forties. Yeah, that he's already one forty one. Takes two more. Nice one forty three game for Eric Briggs. Had ninety five in the eighth and comes all the way up to one forty three. Excellent finish. Productive frames. Yep. Yeah. Got a, uh, a message from Mark Davis regarding the trivia question, um, saying that he has read the book. So oh, he, he, didn't, he didn't answer because he felt that that would be cheating. Ah, uh, okay. 
I'm glad you I'm glad you remembered that. Like you're like, oh, I knew this. It was in the book. Well, you, there you it is. Paying attention. Uh, the golden age of duckfin bowling, the myths the, and legends that made the game available now on duckfinbook.com. Author of that book. Trivia question? <laughs> anybody anybody know? I mean, if you know who our executive producer is, you know who the author is. Yeah. Here's Brian your hint. Took a a lot of time out of his schedule and uh, did a lot of research, turned up a lot of stories that, you know, just as easily could have been lost to history. Um, I think it's a an amazing work. Uh, lots of pages and, uh, you know, it's something I encourage everybody to go out there, visit that website, buy the book. Yeah. Some opportunities, I think, to interact with Brian. He's going to do some signings. Uh, We'll try to get those uh, the information, dates, and stuff like that uh, up on the broadcast for you at some point. But, um, you know, great job to Brian on uh, a huge body of work there. I know there was – he was some flyers he was giving out yesterday. I believe sometime in April he's going to be down in Maryland doing a signing at a AMF Southwest. So those of you down south folk that are watching Duckman TV this morning – yeah, I think he'll. I mean, I imagine he'll he'll probably talk about the book a little bit and talk speak from his uh, knowledge of the history that I, I think a lot of us aren't aren't that familiar with. Um, certainly don't know in the in the detail that Brian has sure. learned it. So I, I'd encourage anybody if you're just interested in hearing about the history, uh, distant history of the game. He's you know, it would be a very interesting uh, time to spend with Brian. Strike to start out the 12th and final game for Eric Griggs. He's in a nice position now at 1466. He's getting a little closer now to Charlwood in second. He is. Our standings aren't updated quite yet after 11. But Eric Griggs had a nice game last game. He's at 1466, and he started out with a strike. The 10 box over there for Brandon Dominique. Oh, my. Over there on 15, our Christmas tree split for Brian. 3 7 10. Yeah, he clocks his three pin the right way on 15. Watch this thing come flying back. It's on the left side of your screen here, lane 15. Now the 710. Let's see which one he shoots. I think if he shoots the 10, something crazy could happen here. Have we ever heard a 710 conversion on Duckfin TV? No, I don't think we've got one of those yet. We have this would be a great, uh, great first one here. I don't care where he hits one of those two pins. If it, you take your happen. eyes off of it, it yeah. you might miss it. It could definitely happen. A little behind on the score, Phil Foreman. Phil Foreman spared in the sixth frame, then went six on eight out. He's at 89 through the seventh. Well, 
one of the ones that we can see. I'm not exactly sure how Wayne is doing down there. Just one mark so far. He's 36 through three. Brandon Dominique starting out his 12th and final game on two opens. He's 18 in the second. Brian best up on 16, 47 through four. Big heavy hit for the strike. I think I'd, I'd say that the crowd behind us is almost doubled in size from the last time we checked in on it. Oh, yeah. And it's still not even at full capacity. And you're looking at your... Your squad leader is Brian Vest. The question is, what is he going to get to? He needs right around 155 to get to 1800. He could possibly be the only 1800 outside of shift five. Yeah, that's. And it's, it's nothing to do with the lane conditions that it is. Just the talent pool in that division is so deep. Yeah. And you just, all you got to do is look at the leaderboard and see how many, many of them have a shot at, right. at another know, at an 1800. 1800. And, you know, it's just, is there, happen. is there going to be a horse from shift three in the race? You know, it's what can Brian get to? What number does he get to? Does he get to 1810? Does he get to 1820? You know, Big difference between those numbers, probably in terms of where he ends up, you know. Uh, and for the other guys, it's it's how many marks a game do I need? Do I really need to catch a double every game? Because if you need, you know, if you need 156 a game, you're not striking. That's a lot of spares. Yeah. You're going to make a lot of spares. You have to leave a lot of spares. Right. You and know? you feel that pressure, pressure every, on that. every single ball, every time you're throwing it a single. I think there is definitely pressure to perform right now, Brian, because 57 – through five with a strike. Yeah, and he's he's done a lot of work to get himself where he is now. Yeah. You know, you don't want to... Don't want it, don't want it to end. Yeah. You know, until it's actually over, you know. So here he is. He's up on 15 now, going for the double. Left side of your screen. For the double. Oh, my... I, 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 can't, I can't believe that. I, I, I have no words for that. That's... That was a horrendous break. <laughs> you can see he's trying not to Say, react too negatively, yeah, but I think um, we all know what's on his mind after that. I, I, I cannot believe that ball hit that bad. This one's going to go down there with a couple MPH on it. Yeah. Oh, There's man. that flyback. And, and he did his, he I think right he did something tank. just like that couple of games ago yeah. flew it back and it just didn't do anything that's, when it a, came back. that's a horrendous break under the circumstances he only feels seven on the strike too yeah it kind of boggles the mind to think about how the pins have to mix yeah to leave that to leave that really leave nothing on the plate besides the pins that are standing Whoa, oh look he at that makes it did a great job getting the nine pins on that So a tough seven on and nine out, 73 through the sixth. And we're watching Phil on your screen here, Phil Foreman. Third ball, Phil. Gets a nine. So gets nine. 108 through the ninth.
Brandon really slow out the gate again this game. He is 27 through the third frame. No mark. Yeah, having a little trouble with cameras down there, so we don't have great eyes on him, but give you score is updated through three. Yeah. Brandon far, is up there down on lane, uh, lane 20. 20, it looks like. Just broke the 10 pin. Yep. So our guy Brian here, 73 through the sixth. He needs 113 to be the leader after 12 games. For all those who have finished their 12 games, to be the leader of those folks, he needs 113. Um, however, you're looking at, you know, what he's going to need to get to say, you know, which he can't, but to say to get to 1,900, you'd be looking at, you know, 250. Yeah. Um, so, which, to which get would to be a record, one of the you know, highest uh, highest game thrown at this tournament in history, uh, all the history is 242. Right. Um, just to put in perspective how monumental that game would be, but, right. you know, three frames in, uh, Sorry, uh, yeah. Let's see what he does here on 16. Wow. That's a whole lot of nine. Leaves a six pin. Because he's looking. Looking at if he goes 150 here, he's looking to be just under the 1800 mark. And that's good, but I think that is definitely that's vulnerable. Um, it's very vulnerable. Yeah. And it, it would take a lot, especially there's a miss there. It would take a lot for all seven of the folks in front of him to all go down under that number. Right. Um, and that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tough box there. It's a nine box, 82 through the seventh. Yeah, I, I think he's, you know, I don't know if it's the whole – Six game block, but certainly, you know, the last several games, the last three three games, shooting over to the right side, he's been struggling with that. Now, say if he wants, you know, the top three. So the top three is 153 average. So for 153 average, he would need to shoot around 1836. So that would have been a 190. He can't get to that either. Yeah. So his max out is 172. And where does that get him? Uh, 1821. Uh, right now, it would get him into seventh. Actually, it would get him into eighth place. Or sixth place, excuse me. Oh, so he could still, he could still climb a few If he spots. throws a bunch of strikes here. He's going to need a bunch of strikes. The converse is if he doesn't catch Mark, he's going to fall down the board. technical difficulties here. Just bear with us. I'll give you updates as I can see them. Brian coming up now on lane 15. 82 through the 7th. Needs something here. That's off the side for 4. Very tough shot to make in this building. One, two, four, eight on the left. Six ten on the right. See if you can make the six pinner. And Lucky Strike wins again. Or does it? Lucky Strike wins again on the washout. So Foreman finished out with a 118. So a little bit of a lower game than he would have liked. But he's comfortably comfortably in third place in that B division. 
and Harmel is the only one that could that could change right now in that top five. The other guys are all through twelve, so Harmel could have a good block. They I mean it would it'd be an amazing block. Actually, he shoots nine oh one. He shoots nine oh one. He could win the B division. Sure. So not a bad place to be if you're Phil Foreman. No. He'll be plenty in the – unless there's somebody in, you know, say sixth place in the B division that we don't know about that shoots a metric ton, you know, later on. Nice ball there from Brittany Burke on 15. She throws a nice 20 box there. Brandon Dominique up on lane 20 off the side for seven. And here comes Brian. Coming up now on lane 16. Frank now max out at 151, which puts him short of the 1800 number or does it no it doesn't it puts him right on 1800 right, yep we put him right on 1800 he would have to punch out no. and that is not a strike or no no it's not a strike so now he can shoot 141 he's now he's now falling below all the 150s that were from the first squad sorry from the fifth squad Two of two of those seven, three of those seven will go up. Two of them will go down. They're not. I don't think they. I'd be amazed if all seven of them stay over the 150 average. Yeah. Um. That's just you know you can't always shoot. Some of them shot a big block. There's no guarantee they shoot it today. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's fighting. He's definitely fighting uh, for top ten. Still, uh, maybe even top five. I feel like that's stretching a little bit at this point. Right. But. And it's it's not. I'm just looking behind me here. Um, it's not unheard of for someone like Jesse Deeds in 19th place to average 160 for six games, which would get him 18, 15. Right, which is playing. That's playing. Yep. We know. We know. Even a thousand is possible. We've you seen know, a thousand. Rare. We've seen it recently. So even some of it those is, bowlers under the. It is. It is very rare, but it is. There's guys that are capable of it. And they get the right day. They get in the groove. They catch that. They catch that. I guarantee you, if they catch a thousand, it's going to be with a two hundred game. Yeah, two hundred game, a one ninety something. There's going to be something big out there. You know, they're not just going to be one sixty, one seventy, one sixty, one seventy. You know, it's going to be. It'll be something yeah. huge. Brian spares or strikes out here. It's one hundred and forty one. Which would be 1790, which is just over John Green. So he would actually current, he would stay in his current position, but he's going to fall down the board quite a bit here if he has a rough 10. Yeah. This last, this having last the last game. games, the last two games on the same pair, let's, uh, I think some pace differences uh, among the pairs kind of emerge. You've got some, some lanes, including Phil Foreman there. They're already uh, done. He was on. They are done. Others here, you know, Briggs back in the in, fifth, sixth frame. They're in the the seventh, and we need a score update down there, don't we? Oh, they're never mind. They got it. They got it. Yeah, we've got Briggs uh, seventy uh, plus in the sixth. And I'm trying to see what he would need. I'm trying to think what he needs to jump jump up in the. He needs one. 50 no 167 167 he's he's got a chance at that only a 10 over the frame but working on a spare or working on a mark and Brian going for the strike here in the 10th and doesn't get it so now the most he can shoot is 130 and falling now falling down the board so there's, there is a tight behind the 150 there is a tight clump of guys that are averaging the high 140. I wonder even can Brandon catch him if Brandon has a good game. 
which Brandon is sorry, Brandon isn't having a good game, but Brandon could have actually caught him. Yeah. It's fair for Brian, so he is going to end his Eastern on a mark. It's 120 and a ball to go. All right. Final ball here for Brian Vest. All right. Getting a razzing from his friends in the back, but he's getting ready to take his final shot. Eric Briggs over there is going for a double, by the way, on lane 20. He cuts it up. Still shot for Brian. Through the middle. Seven more. 127 for Brian Vest. And wow, you see that, Brian, all the way down to 10th now. He, he shoots the founding number. 1776, 148 average. Just ahead of Ewing and Love. There are now nine bowlers on the final squad ahead of the established number. So John Biederman could throw his same block and stay ahead. But and again, I'm thinking it, it's going to have to be in the 1800s to win the Eastern. My current guess, if I had to place a guess, 1850. All right, we'll stay right here on this angle. You're going to look now to the far right side of your screen. We're going to be covering Eric Briggs, Brandon Dominique as they finish out. Wayne left it down there on three and four. 129, he's fallen off a little bit, and he's going to go back down the board. In fact, he is off the board. A tough two games on three and four. Knocked him off the board. Yeah. He's out of the top 20. Probably not what he was expecting. Not what I was expecting no. after those first... Uh, Wow. First three, four games. And it's it's amazing to see the change in performance today as Brandon does spare there in the eighth. Brandon started today in third place. Shot a 925 his first block. But falling off since then. Only averaging 135 today. Yeah, I. He was averaging. I'm sure, that's that's uh you know frustrating, but he's averaging 135, 19 one, pins lower than he was yesterday. Yeah, I mean it's it's not going to contend for the uh, for the win here, um, but 135 is pretty good Duckman bowling. Oh sure. And it's you know this, this tournament Brandon's, is tough to win. Yeah. Eric Briggs here. What do we determine Eric Briggs needed? He needed 160, 157 is what he needed. He's 88 in the seventh, so he's going to need a double strike in there somewhere to get past that. Eric's going to be firing here in a moment on lane, on lane 19. Again, you're looking to the far, far right side of your screen. The pair more right in front of you is 17, 18. We're more concerned with the pair to the right of that. It's the end of the shift. They're going to let him fire away. All right. And now here comes Eric. Oh, nope, not yet. Here he comes. All right. Leak that one out. Chopped two. I'm going to need a little luck here. This, this is not a... 
Not at all. This is not the most makeable of spares in this house in particular, but uh, and oh, especially and, when you throw it there. Yeah. So. What could Brandon gets max out with? Brandon could max out with 80 more, 162. 62, yep. Yeah. Which would get him over Nicholson and over Kelly. I think. Yeah, it would get him over 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 Kelly. Get him near Lauk. He has a big finish. Yeah. He could could get past get past Nicholson. Just gotta be in the pocket. Yeah. And then see what the bowling gods give you. He could finish out with 1764, I'm being told. So he could actually go all the way up. Yep. That would all the way up to 10th if he could if he would punch out. Yeah. I mean, um, we're asking a lot. You're asking for a four bagger on the end. And that is off the side. That's a six count. So 98 through the eighth. He can now max out at 148, which would tie him with Nicholson. Nicholson, of course, is your B division leader. You can see on your screen there the quiet uh, over to the left of the lanes on the right half wow, of the screen. No mark. Very few lanes still going at this point. It is going to be, I'm thinking. Again, you're looking at what the shift is coming in. It's going to be some fast and furious marks all over the place. Doubles, triples. Yeah, I guarantee that first game is going to have some big scores They're going to come it. out the gate. Yeah. They're going to come out the gate strong. And you're going to hear, I'm calling it now. When you get to game 11, the fifth game of the block, you know, the guy that's in contention here, you know, the Colton, the Colby, the, you know, when they catch the double mid-game early on, double nine spare, you're going to hear it. Like, you're going to hear – the level is going to rise, you know. And I think that's also what brings the best out of them. Here comes two resets. Got the tenth frame coming up for both Brandon and Eric. Strike for Brandon Dominique. Or was that a seven pin? I think it was a strike. Oh, he left a seven pin. And then he made it. Okay. Fair for Brandon Dominique in the 10th. Bill shot coming for Brandon Dominique. Ends on a strike. All right, 127. Brandon going to fall down or possibly fall off the board. He finishes with 17.29. He'll stay on the board for now.
Brandon Dominique now from third to 17th. Dropped 14 spots this morning. I'm going to still stick with my pick, though. I think Bernie Hipkins wins the Eastern Classic. I don't know why, but I got the feeling he's going to turn it on today. Let me be wrong. Hey. They want you for an interview. They want you for an interview. Yeah. Give me five. All right. frame for Eric Briggs, a good ball. He leaves the 10 pin. Interviews coming up in a moment, folks. Greg's final score shoots 109. Gets to a score of 1574, which is comfortably in third place in Division C. All right, in a couple minutes here, we're going to take our break between shifts. We got a little, a uh, little camera work to do. Regroup a little bit, maybe get a sip of water. Yeah. Um, but before we do that, we've got a few of the bowlers coming off the shift who are standing by. We're going to get a word with them. Right, just, we'll, just waiting for, uh, just waiting for a few folks to kind of get in place, and then. Uh, We'll get some thoughts from the higher shooters here on this shift. We're going to start with Brian Vest, who is standing by with Jim right now. Jim. Thanks, Eric. Here with uh, Brian Vest. Finished up his uh, second block at a 850s of the first block, and then he came out pretty hot in the second. What was the difference today? Uh, I really just found my line the last couple games on Friday night. Coming off the heels of uh, anchoring your team to uh, victory a couple weeks ago, the Feb matches down south in Maryland. Um, were you, were you, 
feel like you're able to carry some of that bowling over this weekend? Yeah, I bowled pretty well at that match, so uh, I averaged 49. So, uh, yeah, I played well that match. And were you feeling anything different going into the last game today? Uh, yeah, I was gassed. I was out of breath. what it is. I'm happy with it. It's only my second time coming up for this, so I'm pretty pleased with it. I was about to ask you how many times you bowled, so yeah, not bad for a second trip up here. So what are your what are your impressions of the house in general? Lucky strike. Oh I uh, I love this house. Uh, when I came up last time I was uh, really impressed with how everything fell like I don't think we had a single breaker on either of our trips. All right. Well, hey, thanks for your time. Nice bowling this weekend, and we'll see where you finish after uh, this big shift five. Thank you. Have a good one. All right, and just uh, and then a uh, quick transition over to uh, Brandon, who's standing by also with Jim. All right, a little bit of an opposite here. I talked to Brian Best first. He went eight fifties and then broke nine hundred a second block. Fortunately, it was the other way around. Brandon, we had 920s the first block, 925, and then uh, tell us about block two. Tell us about your day today. Struggled today. Uh, when I needed that double to come in clutch to make the game happen, it didn't come through. But, uh, yeah, you know, you come out, some days they fall for you, some days they don't. I missed a couple of breaks when I needed them, but overall not a bad performance. I can't be mad. 1729, yeah, so pretty solid score. I don't know where that's going to put you for the B division. You qualify for the no, no you're not B, not a B. Yep. And uh, there's some heavy hitters next to I was going to say we've got about a half dozen nine hundreds uh, waiting to put their shoes on for, for shift five. So yeah, uh, actually, you know what? Let me ask you. I was talking to Brian about uh, the Fed matches a couple weeks ago. How, how was your weekend down in Maryland? Uh, it was good. We had a lot of fun. Uh, the team didn't end up doing great, but uh, the tournament is always greatly run. Great, great group of people. We had a lot of fun, and uh, I'm looking forward to it again next year as always. Hopefully, hopefully and next year we can make it to the Sunday, which is always the goal. I know you usually spearhead the uh, the two frame matches on Saturday night at Westview. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. The one ball games, the cash games. You gotta have a little fun after the real action's done. So it's it's always a blast. Can't can't, can't complain. I enjoy watching them. So, all right. Well, uh, hey, good bowling this weekend, and uh, talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Good luck to the rest of the bowl in the next shift. All right, and there you have it. Uh, the second block of the third shift now in the record books here. And uh, thank you to Jim and Brian and Brandon there for wrapping up with a little interview, reflecting on their day. We are going to take a break here at Duckman TV while bowlers are setting themselves up for the next shift. Uh, we will be back in just a bit with coverage of the second block for shift five. Don't leave your, sh don't leave your uh, seats, folks. Or if you do, come back. The excitement is, uh, is not over. In fact, the best part is about to start. Look forward to seeing you soon.
All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back if you've been with us. And if you're just tuning in, welcome to Lucky Strike Lanes in Mansfield, Connecticut for Duck Hunt TV's coverage of the 93rd annual Frank Barber Memorial Eastern Classic. This is the shift we've all been waiting for. It is shift five, their second block, group five. Uh, I'm here in the booth, Eric Latesca. Another year, Duck Hunt TV, another year's gone by here. and really excited to be with you, but here uh, joined for the first year and hopefully first of many, uh, the voice of Duck Pins Forever, Nick Lloyd. Hi, Nick. Hello. Good to be with you again. Yep. Another, six, another six games with you. And then also uh, Pat Rufo, uh, Duck Pin TV extraordinaire. Here we go. Joined by the South, the mouth of the South from the Duck Pins land. Yeah. And, We're on the uh, same team today. We're that's not right. Together. We're on the same team. This isn't a challenge match. No, I know, huh? This is uh, the shift, as I said, we've all been waiting for in that uh, it's always, uh, you know, the heaviest hitting bowlers, especially bowlers coming up from the south, they favor this shift. We've seen the winner of the tournament come out of this shift, shift uh, many, many times. And uh, so far through six games, these are the only bowlers who have six more games left to bowl. Um, just about everybody in positions one through uh Boy, one through Seven, eight, eight, nine, nine. one through nine. nine of one the through entire nine. leaderboard is from shift five, and every single one of them. Let me check my math on that. Every single one of them a southern bowler. Boo! And I mean, uh, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> we'll call Dreyer a southern bowler. We just watched um, Brian Vest, uh, Brandon Dominique, the two bowlers uh, who had the strongest finish out of the uh, second block of shift three. Yeah. Um, they wrapped up their six-game shifts. They're on the leaderboard, but um, all but, uh, you know, not in first place. In fact, out of the the, the clubhouse, Brian, Brian Vest is leading the way, 1776, the highest score log for 12 games so far. Um, but, boy, uh, are, are we setting up for some fireworks with the, uh, the bowler sitting in front of him, one through nine. Yeah, I mean, without a doubt, that, that number is extremely vulnerable. And not only you have nine people ahead of him for average, but you look at the nine that you have, um, many of them more than capable of shooting 1,800 uh, today based on where they stand after six. But 944, your lead at the moment from John D'Antonis. I'm thinking right now, the way they're, they're, they're talking, I did a couple interviews over on Duck Pins Forever in between the shifts, and I'm thinking around 1,850 is going to be the number. Kobe calling a 980 this shift. So wow. Feeling very confident coming into today. And uh, I'm hoping they're going to light it up. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be cool. Uh, last year we had a uh, Kobe into the 1900s. Uh, that's not out of the realm of possibility. But I think the 1850 to 1875 score is going to be probably necessary to, to be in contention in in this particular tournament. This Absolutely. Year. And you're going to see across the bottom of your screen, right above the standings there, the standings will update live as we finish each game. But you're going to see the scoreboard of the guys we're following. I believe what we've got up there right now is your top eight. And we will be keeping an eye on them as the shift progresses, and it's going to get more and more tense as we get closer to the final game. That's uh, Billy Thomas on the screen there, lane five. Billy's a past winner. We're tracking his score on the on the scoreboard there, top left. He's got a he's got a. Opened up with two marks and another nine load on that second one. It's going to be open this frame. They'll left up and ugly. Colby D'Antonis a slow start with 18 in the second. There are many people, too. We're talking about the guys that are, you know, in the top eight, averaging 150 or close to it. Um, Nothing stopping a guy like Jesse Deach from popping a thousand block. Something oh, absolutely! And, and climbing up the board. I mean, we saw Brian Vest do it last last squad. I mean, Brian yep. really caught fire there for a couple games and shot up the board. And on the flip side, Brandon Dominique started the day in third and has ended up in 18. Right. And it probably could, could slide a little more if Johnny yeah. Wilson and Jesse Deach catch fire. Yeah. Brandon uh, Brandon started off. Uh, it, it, to put it mildly, it seemed like he had a difficult morning. I, Obviously, I was I was bowling with Brian Vest, so I got to see that firsthand. And it's, just, to, it's incredible power, isn't it? Oh my goodness! Yeah. Um, and it, it, 
he would be the first to admit to you that that 1776, uh, he, he would say it would be easy for him to be at 18, 1840, 1850. He missed oh, sure. that many. That many breaks. He missed that many breaks. Wow. I know he said through his through his fourth or fifth game, I think he said he had nine or ten breaks that he he just on his own, like his own fault, either wow. either a one or a two pinner. And uh, I saw he had a couple of rough breaks there in the uh, in the final. The last season. game, five, six, seven, ten was almost inexplicable. I yeah, I mean, it seemed it was weird because we bowled two games on that pair, and his the first game on that pair, he was you know he was dropping them, and then all of a sudden. They just the, the pitch, the it, pitch yeah, shut off. it shut down for. It was kind of strange, except for Brittany. Brittany lit him up in the last couple of games. Right. She was she finally got hot, but yeah, I mean, I know she didn't have a you know outstanding weekend, if you will, but it's kind of a she was nice. happy. She finished. Yeah. Uh, I think she finished like the last three. I think she might have gone four thirty, four forty. Nice. So that's three spares out the gate for John D. and Tonus. I believe they were all nine drops. Yeah, he's, he's 48 plus in the third. He is your leader at the I moment at 944. So he's going to be the man to catch today. We, um, and I believe Eric correctly pred predicted that he was going to be wearing a lime bright colored shirt, but he has chosen orange. Yeah, I talked, to him, yesterday. I talked to him yesterday. I said, make sure you wear something nice and bright for television, you know. So he said he'd try to, try to accommodate, and I believe that bright orange should do the trick. You did your impression fairly well with the pink, the pink I did a nice job with Fuchsia, I believe. Uh, Fuchsia. Yeah. One of the colors from that 64 pack of... Uh, That's Royal. one of the new colors, yeah. yeah. You know, John D'Antonis, every single year, it seems, is part of our broadcast because yeah. he's just always consistently good in this in this uh, event. Yeah, and then now in the recent years, there's another D'Antonis. Right, he's... As we noticed last year. How long has it been since we had a back-to-back -back at the Eastern? I believe, is it Ron Pelletier? The, um, I know yeah, Ron it's Ron Pelletier. Pelletier. I'm, not sure I, I'm not sure the year. We're looking yeah. at the, the pamphlet. Um, 2012 and 2013. Yeah. He yeah. won four, I believe, in the span of six years or something. Yeah. something he crazy. won three out of four. Yeah. Uh, it's probably, I mean, there's a lot of accomplishments in this tournament. You know, other yeah. bowlers have won four, maybe one. But uh, to get three out of four, that's, yeah, I mean, that's almost just, untouchable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you look at your guys that are four-time winners, and you've got um, Jeff Piles and Ron Pelletier. That's it. That's it. Right. But to win three in four years, I mean, that's just, it's almost unheard of. It actually is unheard of. It's, I mean, I, it, you know, we all know this game well enough. It's very difficult game to outscore 130 or 135 bowls. Right, and I discussed that earlier, you know, because this is an event like none that we cover down south. You know, we're always covering head-to-head -head bowls right. uh, down south, and there is no there is no getting lucky and, you know, winning a game 120 to 118. No. Or getting unlucky and losing 190, 188. Nope. You nope. have to beat everybody in the building. Yep. Another spare out the gate for John D'Antonis. That's four. 65 plus in the fourth. Yeah, he's not holding back this morning. Yeah, he's, he's coming out firing. And I had a feeling that these guys are going to come out. Some of these guys are going to come out firing. Yep. Not seeing any double strikes on the board yet. At least for any of the folks that. One of the bowlers I was, one of the bowls I was watching yesterday a little closely was uh, Colton. Colton Goo is throwing a heavy, yeah. heavy ball. Sandra and had a couple good games. Yep. Yeah. Colton currently sitting at 71 through the fifth. Steve Fryer is the one there as well, who seems to be always in the mix. Always in the mix every but year. Level headed too. It's, 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 a, it's a mental grind, this thing, too. You know, you want to stay mentally tough as well as you know, physically focused. Right. And you know that's what Brian Brian Vest was saying the whole the whole time this morning was he had threw the ball incredibly good but he had a 109 in both blocks and yeah that, that, it's that's hard it. to overcome two of them I mean, and probably could have got away with one currently but. you need to average 157 to be first place right. you, need 109 right. come back with the money. you just gave away basically Actually, you gave away 40 yeah. pins which he did right. <laughs> essentially this morning he did but he didn't yeah. do it last last block Friday night right now. Anytime you go under 110, you need 200. Yep. 
if you're going to, you know, we're going to look at that, we're going to look at that average number consistently yeah. all day. And, you know, if Johns doesn't go down, then those other guys are going to have to go. I mean, they're going to have to go big game. Go big. And I, I think it's, I think it's whoever can throw the game over 180. Right. You know, and they're out there. They're out there, but, you know, 200 in this house, no easy feat. I think there's one in the entire exactly tournament. Exactly one, and it was done last night, Frank Schreiber, at 200 Correct. or not. But, I, I mean, thought his, uh, other, his other 11 were so tough. Brian gave it a couple runs this morning at 200. He, yeah. We, and, we, had, we had two runs out of this morning, actually. I think uh, Phil had, Clough. We had dueling 184s. Yep. Um, in the same game. Then down there, uh, there was a 195 by Bill Box. Oh. On 102. And then, um, well, I mean, I saw – Couple of uh, personally, one the one ninety four and a one eighty four. Um, split that with a one fifty seven. That was a nice little three game set for for Brian. But it's Here's, so hard to maintain it when you when you're climbing that big of a hill. Oh sure. Here's our first look at Colby, defending champ. Yeah, yeah Colby in his little interview. I had some, uh, a little informal interview real quick on a uh, Facebook live stream. He said he was very confident. Feeling 980 close to it. Colby did win the last year with a thousand block. Yeah, I know he'd be underperforming compared to last year to get the 980, right? Yeah, it's his first block. He was uh, a thousand to stay. Yeah, hence the confidence. Yeah. And again, if there's anyone who's capable, there's many guys on this ship capable of throwing a thousand block. He is most certainly one of them. Yeah. By the way, his dad is one of them, and his dad is. The leader. The leader, and if he and if matches, it's a thousand. That's untouchable. Yeah. And speak of that number, that thousand number. We are, uh, I believe, on the thirtieth anniversary of the. Yes, we are. One of the yeah. one of the, if not the most incredible twelve games ever bowled in Duckton Bowling, a yeah. one seventy two average plus two. Yeah. A couple extra pins on top of that. Scott Wolgamuth. Crazy bowling. Yeah. And he did it on the all day Saturday ship. In one day. Colby off the side there. Gets a nice break. That leaves the one two. His father on the other lane. Cut a duck on his pair now. Just cut the other duck. Open the frame. There we go with the cut a duck. Up north, we call that chop for two or off the side for two. So that, it's kind of cool to hear the, the we were, different so lingo. We were having a discussion earlier while you were out on the lanes about the uh, the different northern lingo and the southern lingo. But I said, for example, while I'm, even while I'm doing this up here, if somebody punches the middle for four, they leave the three and that, three. That's that, a spread eagle. Yeah. Up here. Up here. Well, you, you said it like a thousand times last week, the Dave Jones. The Dave Jones, yeah. And then you guys do some sort of a kooky thing with a T-shirt if they make it, right? Yep. So we have a thing right now that if somebody makes it for a spare during a tournament, like a live tournament, yeah, yeah. that they will win a free Dave Jones shot T-shirt from sparebreak.com. <laughs> and we got these uh, our Duck Jones Forever shirts. Right no now. bad Sundays. Yeah. The nice thing, if you ball shift live, everybody makes it to Sunday. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah no you, you always ball on Sunday. Yeah. Is Colton, Colton Goo, uh, through the middle. So outside of John D'Antonis right now, uh, most of the Bulls are off to a relatively Billy Thomas has got 95. Oh, there we go. Yet. There we go. Billy Thomas is down there. Uh, I believe he's on five and six. And he is definitely off to a hot start. Looks like he might be all marked. Yes, I believe yeah, he is all like marked a, through six. A bit distant from here, but... I'm also thinking that is no double. That is 105 plus in the six, no double. So, wow. That would be all nines, nine yes. and one. So he, is, so he is banging on the front one early. Oh, he's got a strike. He put 20 in the fourth frame, so he must have a strike. In right. There. Has a look at Jesse Deach. Unmistakable approach. Yes. A little hop skip, a little, little tiny skip. Speaking of skips, the, uh, the, the original Billy Thomas shuffle is... I saw, it, I saw it surface a couple times the other night. I was like, hey, you got that little kick thing there. Not quite like what it used no, to be. No, no, not it at all. It definitely toned it down. Yeah. That was something to, something to watch. Oh, yeah. I think it's a good habit. It's a good thing he got out of that habit. Well, I don't know. He, um, he changed his whole entire bowling style. And um, I'll never forget. That was the year he won it. We were, yeah. we were on that. Colby up on 14, shooting a single after missing that two-pinner. And he puts the five right, on the outside so. right in the ear. And Colby off to a slow start here, but keep an eye on him because things develop quickly with yeah. 
Nothing a double can fix. Yeah. Here's his father in the unmistakable orange. Good ball, six pin. John 74 through the sixth. No, that's not correct. I'm not sure what's up with the um, with the scoreboard there with Colby D'Antonis showing 45 in the seventh frame. He, he actually so Wayne Matheson showing 36 in the fifth. Yeah, we'll we'll work on this, but uh, the update is Colby D'Antonis uh, 65 plus in the sixth. Wayne Matheson uh, a strike in the fifth. He's got 66 working. You see Billy Thomas in your frame there. I think he's got a, another single. Oh, no, that was not a single. That was a two-pinner. Single now. Yeah, now it's a single. <laughs> I hear shooting his football. But the old Mark game has come to a close. But it looks like from here he took... 10 out for 123 in the seventh. The uh, the ever present Billy Thomas. I was here last night during their shift yesterday, and uh, he had a similar game where he had one open or he had a double. And right. he said uh, his personal opinion is it's so much harder to throw an all mark game than it is a 200. Oh, without a doubt. Um, the um, and you know, of course, that all boils down to one thing. That's strike. I mean, two hundred games usually feature at least a double, if not more. Maybe two doubles or a triple. Um, you know, very rare. I mean, have you ever seen a uh, perfect two hundred game like a the Dutch two hundred? Um, I've almost seen one in ten pen. I've never seen one in duck pen. Yeah, that to me would be a that would be an historic accomplishment. That's the ultimate two hundred. Every other box that would be something to behold. I think it, the, the Dutch 200 is right up there with the no mark 100. Correct. That's right. That no mark 100. I think the highest no mark game I ever threw was a 97. Unfortunately, I'm a 94, but I haven't I haven't thrown a no mark game. Yeah, no, so I'm I not complaining about. No, it. no, that's true. You don't want to brag about those. Yeah. But. If I would have shot 100 no mark, I'd definitely be bragging yeah. about that. Yeah, I got every pin. Yeah, it just took I me every, every ball. I missed every spare. <laughs> When you think about that, if you throw a hundred, no mark, you average three pins per ball. <laughs> All right. Colby rides through the center of that one. Yeah, it was off a tough to a rough count. Two count on a spare, not the start he was looking for. He's off to a tough start. Steve Dreyer's uh, looking to go. 40 goes, plus. Yeah, Colby goes two on eight out for a 75 through seven. You know, Billy Thomas at plus 53 right now in his box. To me, that's the most important thing to keep an eye on is that plus number. They got to be plus 50. Yeah, they want to be They want to be 50 over the box. Got to be. At, at the end, anyway. At the end, yeah. And Johnny Antonis over there, who is your Billy Clubhouse Thomas. leader at the moment through six. He has 83 plus through six on a spin. Billy Thomas just dropped a bomb in the eighth box. So he is... Well on pace to uh, eclipse that 150 barrier, as we'll is John D'Antonis. Let's we'll see if he climbs into the top four. John D'Antonis, uh, lucky strikes best. Thanks for playing. Yes, indeed. Seven eight. Thanks for coming. You um, unfortunately you see that frequently on unfortunately good hit. That's you, you get it when you leave the seven eight or the nine ten here. It's usually because you hit the pocket. Very rarely do you get that pin spinning around and knock out the four of the six. Right. Noticed yesterday, Nick, um, I spent about an hour here watching guys bowling. It was the, um, I don't want to call it floppy, but it was the, the, the soft head pin hits that were really working way yeah. better than the, you know, the, like, Brian Best Ball. Oh, yeah. 
Brian Vestball just when, when he hits in the right spot, it's just a vapor. It's yeah, it's scary. He um he had a heck of a run this morning, but he just couldn't close it out. Yeah. Colby's gonna need to do some damage control in this game. Yeah, he's got to. He can't, this is the kind of game you can't afford. Yeah, because again, if he, you know, Peter's out here. You know, 115. I'll, 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 he's I'll one ninety. Right. That'll help. Good ball for the seventh. All right. So, you know, this is the kind of game for Colby where he's gonna he's gonna string these marks to finish this game. You know, maybe salvage a one thirty. Just get that number. And your third your third place bowler. Tough game. Colton Goo, one hundred and six through nine. Yep. So. Outside of John D'Antonis and Billy Thomas, um, Wayne Matheson not doing too much, but not doing bad either. No, he's not. Kobe missed the seven ten. I believe that was. Kobe is. Um, he did foul. The lights yeah. on. Whether or not he actually crossed the line, I can't tell. But unfortunately, that light goes on. You, uh, if you don't think you went over the line, you get a say something and have him check it out, but the first time counts. Yeah. Billy Thomas looks like a mess down there. Cleans them all up on one. That was his first ball. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. It doesn't look like 10. I think we have our scoreboard sorted out here, guys. What you see on your screen is our latest information. So here's Billy Thomas. Uh, is that the 8-pin? Uh, are you shooting the two pin? And he's got it. All over it. So he's plus 63 now. He's, he's off to a hot start. 153 plus through the nine. So chance there to mark and go 180 couple. Start that start the second block off with a big number and uh put some put some people in your rear view mirror, right? John D'Antonis on 18. Oh, you bet. You can tell he walked He walked away from that one. 100 through the seventh and a missile in the eighth. So, Nick, how much fun did you have last week with Will Rigney at the end of the tournament? Oh, two uh, weeks ago. That, <laughs> match? Um, that was a blast. I tell you what, though, we got very lucky. Most every round that we covered was a fantastic back and forth game. I, uh, the quarterfinal and the championship, especially. The two, it was North versus North. I, I tell you what, I, 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 you guys made, I, I've said this, uh, you guys made my ride home from Maryland seem like an hour. I oh, seemed yeah. like I got in the car and an hour later I was in Connecticut. Because oh, yeah. I listened and watched you guys all the way home. Yeah, it's a, it is a labor of love, and it's some long weekends. But yeah. Uh, I, Will didn't actually have his little soiree until I was home watching it in my living room. Now, <laughs> were, you, were you aware of what they did to Will when he came back to, uh, came back to league? I, I do not know so what they, they did. They actually uh, got a trash bag. Oh, my. And they laid it out on the approach at, at uh, Meadowbrook, and they – Outline body, dead body over the foul line um, from where he, yeah. Oh, Lord. and I was waiting when he showed up to league. It was one of his parents. Oh, games. my goodness. Yeah. You know, he was very graceful in that tip over. And, yes, um, and then he made a single the next frame yeah. to shoot 170 something. Yeah, he went, he did have a good game. And, um, oh, it's a tough 12 there in the 10 for Colton Goo. Yeah, two. You know, I, I only laugh about it because he didn't get hurt. It would yeah, not have been because, funny. You know, if he got no, it would have been a totally different story. He's but. Okay. Yeah, he says Bumble's bounce. <laughs> that's, that's his catch Billy line, Thomas yeah. on the left side of the screen there, wrapping up his first game. I three on ten out. Three on ten out. So that's a nice one sixty six though. That'll that'll do him some favors. Well, it's not going to hurt his average. It's going to help his no, average. Okay, here's Colby in the nine. That's a good ball. Leaves and the five. That amazing delivery. The way he put, he kind of puts the ball on the lane and then makes sure that there's a little push right at the, a little shove at the target, you yeah. know? And it depends on where he's bowling. Some centers, synthetic centers especially, he'll get the ball out quite a bit. He'll get out the air range, no problem. 
cold. It's really struggling this morning. Yeah. This afternoon, I'm sorry. Uh, you don't see him. You see him miss sometimes. Not by that much. Yeah. Especially the five pin, right? His body language is already getting. Uh, he's got to get himself picked up, pick himself up, and it's a tough start. Yeah, only sitting at ninety three in the ninth frame. Yeah, he's uh, well, well behind. First of all, his average. Second yeah, of all, he, what he was. Yeah, everything. Yeah. <laughs> everything. Jesse Jesse Beach, who's way down on the list, but going to try to claw himself back. I can't speak from any experience about this, but I, I got to imagine coming back uh, after such a phenomenal year of performance at this tournament last year. Expectations are probably pretty high yeah. for him. You know, um, I wonder if that's playing a factor in this opening what, game. I'll tell you what, another shocking result right there. That is 94 for John Green Black. Wow. Wow. Is that with or without a mark? We can we hope we didn't talk him into that. Flat, no mark. <laughs> oh my goodness! So he's See, actually tied by William announcer's Hart. jinx right there. And it was unintentional. And if you thought, oh, we thought he was in bad shape. I mean, that's even worse. Um, John Green was 13 pins behind Colby going into this game, and I mean, that's, that's and it's going to put his average a, down a well under. Start. It's going to be down in the low 140s, I'm afraid. Yeah, two bowlers who are going to. Probably stay on the leaderboard, but certainly move down way over to the right side after those. Uh, wow, John going for the double and 17 playing more defense, 7 10 that time. Wow. Going to be uh, quickly firing here. Nope. Had to, had to bounce it inside and off the wall, but didn't make any contact. So, Wayne well, Madison, your second place bowler on the left side of your screen here. On a spare goes off the side. Not doing too bad here. He's 118 through the eighth. Two marks here on the end. Save a good game. A couple other games closed out. Colton Goo only at 118. Steve Dreyer, 138. Yeah, neither of those. Uh, anything under 150 is uh, not going to help you right now. Well, no. this is not shaping up like no, the first game that I was predicting. No, I not at all. Not only, only one bowler right now has, has eclipsed the 150. And, and even, even John, that should have been a lot better. He went three on 10 out. Yeah, and even John D'Antonis, as hot as he started, has got a double to get to 150. Yeah, he's a mark for 140. Um, and Wayne Matson, who's in second place, is one pin ahead of him. Well, we go 3-9 there. So this is, this is a tough shot just to even, you know, catch 110. Yeah, I think, you know, it seems like a lot of balls are tracking left on him. He's pulling on him a little bit. Yeah, maybe overthrowing them. Another one, yep. Well, I'm not sure if uh, everyone is used to, one used to the, the, um, the, the all wood. i tell you what. Not only is it all wood, but the first eight lanes are known as the original eight. Right. I discussed and, that earlier. He actually didn't know that. And well, um, the, I knew they were the original lanes, but the boards. The boards, the boards are different. Yeah. And the, the ball does tend to move, More. I think, twice as much as it does on, on most of the rest of the house. And the ball moves, you know, it moves a lot. I, I, I find myself now lining up all the way over to the left. And Brian Best was mentioning it this morning. He said he just couldn't stop the ball from, from moving no matter what he did to adjust. And it's, it's one, of the, one of the tricky parts of, of bowling well in this house. A lot of bowlers on the ship who have some rotation, some spin on their ball. Right. That um, you know, it doesn't move a lot. We're throwing the ball pretty fast here in this game, but right. uh, you know, pulling it, it aboard away doesn't take much. Is, oh yeah, uh, is all it takes to be off the. You know, and and, and again, uh... <laughs> hey, that's not a that's ninety eight is not a bad game, Rick. Not bad at all. Wow, somebody chimed in with a ninety eight no mark. Wow. No marks a ninety-eight is. Uh, you know, it's, it's like you got that's a you need a badge of honor for that. I yeah. mean, you took it like a man. <laughs> didn't give anything away. <laughs> didn't didn't give up any. Yeah, you certainly didn't quit. Uh, yeah. I was I was discussing uh, yesterday while I was bowling because I was getting a lot of nine boxes in one of my games uh, that I once in youth league threw a all nine ninety game. All, <laughs> all nine. Man, so, there man. should be a patch for that. Yeah, I even tried to get eight the last frame and still got nine. Jeez. <laughs> So Colin Dunnick just uh, got a nice little six-pin to drop last there for a strike. 
Colin did not have a spectacular start yesterday, but I spoke to him uh, after my shift, and he said, hey, nothing 1,100 can't cure. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, yeah, you got to have that kind of attitude. <laughs> That's the attitude you got to so, have. Let's see what happens here in this 10th. You know, you got your first and second. John and Wayne are 16 pins apart. Currently sits at 15 because Wayne is up one pin, 128, 127. Yeah, and, uh, Billy They're both Thomas, on an open. Billy Thomas is uh, – he just pulled back definitely, a lot of pins. Definitely moved up the board. He's up to almost a 154 average. So if Wayne doesn't that's, hit. That's without John and Wayne score enter. They're going to go down. Yep, yeah, they are. So so we could have a, a, a quick lead change here. Billy Thomas could uh, easily move into second, if not take the lead. So if John takes Wood here, it's a 120 or 137. Um, he would still stay ahead of Billy Thomas. So yes. so would Wayne. But it's going to be tight. It's going to be yeah. tight. Let's see what happens here in the 10th. I hope, he gets, I hope he stays nice and close all day. Be, I believe Billy was for. Billy was 33, 33 behind. He's going to close that gap oh, right yeah. away. Yeah, again, that's what we were talking about. You got to, you know, for the guys that are chasing, come, down, come, down get, come now. Go get it now and yeah. then make them chase you. Yeah, we have yeah. been blessed over the years with some really close finishes. Oh, my uh, goodness. Ball for ball at the end. Yeah. In front of us, not somebody who's yeah. just chasing a score that's already it, on the board. Was it um, one of our first years? Was it, um, wasn't it Will Rigney and another Rhode Island I bowler? Think Will and Leo? Yeah, Leo Montero, I believe. Uh, it was like ball for ball, pin for pin. All right, yeah. here's John. That is fair. This is the 1 2 9. So, and now swings back to Wayne. Wayne can catch a mark here. Wow. Let's pull back a couple more sticks. John goes wood here. It's 138. It's 138. Okay. If Wayne goes 20, 148. So Sorry, it's 137 for John. John's got a 137. So considering oh, the start. No, a 7 8 for Wayne Mathis. Considering the start John had, uh, he's probably not thrilled with that finish at all. He, he yeah, you can did, see uh, Brian Best sitting down back here. Uh, not on the lanes anymore, but climbing on the leaderboard after well, the first game. And then, um, yeah, he actually just shot up the back up to eight. He's uh, Dominique shot up to sixteen. Colby shot all the way. Oh down my goodness, to seventeen. Yeah, he's um a tough game. Like I said, that that game's going to put you in the mid forties, and that's exactly seven, what it eight. Did. Nope. So hold one here. So um, and he will pull one pin back on John D'Antonis. He'll still be in second. All right, actually, he'll be in. In third, let's see. Okay, finishes out 138. They beat John by one that game for what it's worth. 138 on to 928 will give him 1050, 1066 right there. And there's your live standings in the top three. Boy, it's a good thing I'm not in the business of making predictions that first game just you did, was nothing uh, like what i thought you, it was going to be even and my guy bernie my, my horse in the race bernie is still right where we thought he would be he's yes still in the mix yep absolutely um someone asked me before the shift started and of course you know obviously you got to keep john d'antonis in the in the in the mix but i watched enough yesterday to say that bernie's throwing a really really good ball here and uh it seemingly hasn't had the same bad luck with the with the splits that we've been seeing he breaks he breaks splits them. up very well yeah i mean the, he keeps the pins on the deck moving some of these guys Blast them. gone you know nothing left to fight pat while you were um wrapping up bowling on the last shift nick made the prediction that was that's the horse he, he bet on he took bernie. Oh, bernie yeah yeah um, well someone asked me before the shift started who i and i i mentioned colton who did not start well and then bernie who has started well. So I didn't even know that Nick had picked I Bernie. Put, I put plus 350 odds okay. on uh, Bernie winning and the parlay of that and over 0 0.5, 200 games in this block. 0 0.5. Yeah, so, so we need a 200 and Bernie to win. So, so and, and, and it's a plus 350? Yeah, yeah. yeah, but I'm not booking. I understand, <laughs> but, it, if, you know, if I put a $5 on that, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to break your bank. No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, it's. I don't want it to be too late to make my prediction. I'm just going with the guy who's sitting on top right now. Johnny, you're going with Johnny. I'm going with Johnny. It's fading. All right, we're rolling into game two now. 
Colby's going to need to get it turned around in a hurry. John Green as well. So, we got to take this. So this is just going to build the excitement of this tournament. Um, obviously, right now we can banter back and forth. We can tell stories and sure. we can have fun. Right around game five, it, it starts block, to be starts yeah. We start to get a little more in detail as to what's happening on the lanes, if you will. With so many bowlers to keep track of, it's it's very difficult. Yeah, this, this shift is incredibly strong. Yeah. Incredibly strong. Right. I mean, last shift you only really had to focus on two or three guys at the most. Wayne Matheson open in his first frame. So, Nick, last week, uh, were you able to uh, – to what? Did you see any of the, the production from last week at all? I was able to watch a little bit. Actually, during the broadcast, I was uh, helping out at Suitland during their once-a-month. Ah. So I had it up to my ear, and I wasn't paying, you know. Well, the reason I was questioning you is because I was just curious if you were able to answer – any of the trivia questions correctly from last week at all? Um, I can promise you I was unsuccessful. <laughs> In fact, the one this morning that he asked, uh, I was two for six. It was a six-part answer. Wow. Was, uh, what six cities were a part of the initial proposed National Bowling League from 1933? Really? And you got two? Um, I got two of them. Well, hopefully, I, Baltimore I, and would say, I would say Baltimore and Washington. Yeah. Was it, um, it was, uh, Hagerstown? Nope. Boston. Really? Uh, Willimantic. Um, the weird one was Brooklyn, New York. No kidding. And then Richmond, Virginia. Wow. That would be considered a real travel league, wouldn't it? Yeah. Boston to D.C. Colby starting out a little better now. Spare. Oh, here it is. Duckpin TV trivia. Name the only bowler to have competed in the first 28 runnings of the United States Classic, the Eastern Classic, and the National Tournament. Wow. I bet you if you read a book on Duckpin Bowling, like the golden age of Duckpin Bowling, I bet you you'd find that answer. Yeah. <laughs> Go get yourself a copy. You know www.duckpinbook.com. Yeah. You know anybody that might think about writing a book like that? Uh, I think Pat's finally a betting man here. He must know something. <laughs> Oh no, I, I didn't I didn't have a chance to read the book yet. I'm I, waiting to meet the author. <laughs> Maybe we could make that a trivia question. Who's the author? Uh, I believe the author is someone that we all know pretty well. I, uh, it's not going to be any fun for me to to bowl with the author because I do that every week. <laughs> yeah, another hint. His name is on the leaderboard. <laughs> this is true, and and up a couple notches from earlier. <clears throat> So let's ah, twenty eight consecutive years uh, of the Eastern. Gotta go back. Well, so I'm, ass in the I'm assuming this is a, an older, yeah, from uh, the 1930s. older age. So uh, maybe uh, you think it could be Barber? Could be. You think it might? I mean, he was his inspiration for this tournament was to to. Uh, Kind of mimic the national tournament. That was, I think, that was one of our trivia questions oh, wow. last week. Colby just chopped another deuce on a spare. I'm gonna go with Frank Barber. I, yeah, for lack like a, of a better. That sounds like a safe. I'm not supposed to answer yet, but I mean, it that's cuts just a off another guess. two there, Colby. Man, this is yeah, a nightmare start. Yeah, yeah, he's 20 in this in the second with a mark, and you can see him just kind of rushing through his frame. Frustrated. Looking at the scoreboard right now, uh, again, this game, there's really no one flying out of the gate yet. 
John Green with a 20 box. That's about it. Well, he's, I'm sure he's thrilled with that for considering oh, his yeah, last yeah, name. Um, he's already got two more marks than he yeah. had the whole last game. Your, your, your top two there, it's a nine box for Wayne and a 10 box spare for John. So John's... John's got the early advantage. And while they're not directly bowling head to head, it does help themselves that they are on adjacent pairs. I so think, yeah, they kind of are bowling head to head. At this basically, point. they they must feel like that at this point. Yeah, with with you know Billy Thomas, you know, in the mix there, two well. lanes down. I mean, again, you know, Bernie's you know two three pins behind an average, but at this stage in the in the day, that's a hundred and seventy game. Well, it takes one big game, and uh, as we we're seeing already, if the leaders drop and somebody comes up from below, it's 150 to me is always the uh, the leveling point, you know. Anything over 1800 is you're, you're in the mix. And uh, six seven split there for John trying to go for the double. And speaking of Will Rigney and Leo Montero, they're only a couple lanes apart from each other right now. So if they were a little bit more on the leaderboard, there would be another story there. They reenact their uh, famous finish. Here's Bernie Hipkins on your pitcher. Just missed the 10 pin. Oh, that's nine out. Yeah, that's he's... 35 in the third. I wanted to see two on the lower end here in the top 20. Have, has anyone jumped onto the board? Um, I'm not I'm not seeing any. I don't see. Uh, uh, Brandon was there. Uh, John Blaze was there, I believe. See, James uh, Simon had a big day yesterday, but he's still yeah, and there's 10 a, pins there's average there's behind. One left in the feed division we got to worry about right now, which is Nick Carmel. Um who dropped a spot. He dropped a spot. He wasn't in that second. game. Yep. But that's going to Nicholson. It's going to be very tough to beat. He actually would have to go 901 this block to beat Nicholson wow. for the B division. Yeah, Mike bowled tremendous yesterday. Um, and Nick had 850, so he only went 109 his first game. So John going for a spare over there and missing wide. Meanwhile, Wayne Matheson with a strike in his third frame. So Wayne 29 plus and John is 36 through three. Yeah, uh, another story uh, to talk about. Um, uh, Bobby Donick, uh, really uh, incredible tournament for him as a, as a C bowler, um, a 135.9 average. And he has, I mean, he's been bowling for many, many, many years, as we all know, he's the youngest uh, at the time to ever win the Eastern Classic. And uh, he was the youngest. We, we discussed yeah. it earlier. He youngest, was the youngest B division, B division winner. winner. Youngest B division winner to win it. Right. The youngest Open was by the guy Babe Dugas. Babe, Babe. Have you ever seen? You've seen the picture of Babe Ruth throwing a buck pinball. Yeah. Seen, it's pretty cool, huh? We've got it hanging up in our uh, area. Oh, do you really? Yeah. yeah. Right over the. Uh, Where right is right right it? Really a tie? Yeah, tie. Right. And then I love one they have hanging up at Suitland near the bathrooms. It's a framed picture of the season report of Jeff Pyle's 164 average every single game. Oh, wow. And it's seven weeks in a row over 500. Just, that's, that's just amazing. Incomprehensible. We'll be covering that five pin there. Gets itself back on the board. His low set in that whole season was like a 438. <laughs> and I'm sure he was ticked. Oh, man. And what's incredible about that 164 average, his 655 series was not a part of that. Yeah, that was years before, right? Yeah. And he shot 655 when he was 21. Yeah. That's an untouchable record. I, do you yeah. Think, yeah, I was just going to say, do you have any? We had a guy the other other week at uh, Dual Lanes who had that unreal start. He had 255, 186. Holy moly. Okay. That's 441 for two. He still he needs a 212. Needed 212. <laughs> He's hit everything in the world. Yeah, 
one one score I can recall, and it's not even that recent, uh, but it was Dave Marsh and at Perillo's in Waterbury, Connecticut, probably 20 years ago now. I think he had, uh, I, I wouldn't remember the order, but I want to say it was 240, 232, 160 for a 632. That's, in, that's incredible. I, I think it might have been in that order. 40, wow. 242, 230. Can you imagine having 472 for two, for two games? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, the, the Piles record was 235, 185, 235. Unbelievable. Yeah. Here's Colby on a spare. Oh, wow. Rock solid four. Looking at our, our top two here. John D'Antonis getting ready to step up on 19, far right of your screen. And Wayne right in front of you on 17. John D'Antonis, good ball for the 10 pin. This is Wayne Matheson for the double. You bet. That's a big double strike there for Wayne. There's two spares in a row for Colby over there on lane 15. So maybe they're going to start warming up now. Billy Thomas there, nice try at the three-pinner. All right, I believe. Uh... As a reminder, your trivia question, give your thoughts down in the comments. Name the only bowler to have competed in the first 28 runnings of the United States Classic, the Eastern Classic, and the National Tournament. As your Duckpin TV trivia presented by www.duckpinbook.com. So, um... The Eastern Classic started 1931. Okay, Jeff Ferrand. Someone just I guess uh, from the peanut gallery. Somebody just gave us a Jeff Ferrand uh, guess. Could be. I'm, I'm just looking at the um, the beginning years of the Eastern Classic and some of the names. Babe Dugas is on there. Right. We just mentioned him. Um. So 31 to. Or is it someone who didn't win? Well, I'm just saying. I know maybe they didn't win it, but somebody like, um, you know, just, uh, I don't know, George Pelletier or Hip Carenti. you got to be thinking it's someone, you know, a legendary. Is it, is legendary. It, is it a legend? Is it some nobody? Yeah, well, that's, no a, that's, a, tri that's a tricky is, question, right? I'm guessing that. We're not going to embarrass that person or disrespect them at this point. No, <laughs> just because we don't know who they are. <laughs> and if they were bowling in 1931, yeah, I'm going to go out on a limb. Well, I think we're, maybe we're making the case for the for legendary status with this <laughs> trivia question, right? <laughs> I'm just going to go out on a limb and say this person is no longer with us in spirit, maybe, but not on this earth. All right, this is Wayne Matheson over on lane 18 for the triple. Drop eight, left the two four. John D'Antonis nine count on his spare, left the five pair. He's just missed it. So this by. is a green light opportunity now for Wayne Matheson. Starting to heat up over there. See Billy Thomas struggling this game. See what Wayne does here at the spare. Missed it. Pick the two off the four. John takes 10 out for 65 in the fifth. Wayne is going to be in the mid-70s. He takes nine out for 75. So he's got a 10-pin lead. Just saying, Billy Thomas struggling this game. And one under, two yeah. five. Going into this game, it was a 15-pin lead for John D'Antonis. As we speak, that is down to five. And five boxes of bowling, and they're five pins apart. Yep, and I'm telling you right now, they're gonna, they're gonna be seeing that now. John's gonna move away from Wayne for one game, but they are gonna finish the last two games right next to each other. That could be an interesting uh, scenario if it continues to play out as it is right now. We literally could have that ball for ball moment. Oh, 
the Bernie's not off to a too bad start. He's got a strike working in the fifth. Bernie currently 26 back of the lead. Not not much at all, really. Even you go down the list, I mean. I think the best Colton, thing we Colton, got going this this game is Colton there, 73 Colton. in the fifth and then a double. Colton Goo on a big game, and he's There's only my guy. 44 back of the lead. There's my guy. He had a little let down the first game, but he's right on it now. I'm going to take a peek there. What pair is Colton on? Looks Colton like might be on down on one and two. Uh, I think he is. Yes, he made the turn. Yeah. yeah, he's down on He is down on one and two. I can see his telescore sheet. It does put him as far as you can be from where we sit. Uh, makes it hard to see the scores, but fortunately there's – You can't make it too easy for us. Come on. <laughs> there's people running around and trying to keep up with it. We do, have, even our, we do have a camera down in that area. And uh, our executive producer is also keeping score. Uh, yes. Well – Switching cameras and back checking us making and making us look better. Yeah. Than we actually are. <laughs> they can't see us, right? No. <laughs> that was a joke. No, uh, well duck pins forever. We have a webcam that sits right here. Oh my I saw, yeah, I know I saw you guys I saw you guys do that last week. It was kinda cool. Yeah, it's great. It's all fun and games till we hit that button by accident, and then I'm sitting here. Oh, you're right, right. Your hot dog here. hanging out of your mouth. Yeah, Colton yeah. getting up on lane one. All right, here we go. See if we can switch over. There we are. You're going to see him in the far left of the screen. Just not really going to be able to see him other than throwing the ball. You'll see it go down the lane. He's on the lane right now. There's a mic down there. You'll hear the crack. Off the side. He backs got, it up think, for the triple. I think he oh, might have goodness. backed to a triple. He threw a back door, took the head pin last for the yep. triple. Was a, in this house, we call that the Tom Dom special. So here comes Colton Goo. And he tripled down on the one and two. Pushed that button. Didn't have any doubt, any second thoughts about it. No. I'm going to take that. He said, that's exactly what I meant to yeah. do. Not at all. <laughs> a spare, I believe, there in the sixth frame for John D'Antonis. So now Colton Goo with the triple. Sorry, up. 10 box for triple. John D'Antonis. Triples add up extremely nicely at this point. And Colton's the kind of bowler that I would bet my last dollar that that guy's going to get up there and put it in the pocket on the well, next ball. And you know what to... happens when you get a backdoor triple? You throw a four-bagger. Yeah. It'll be there. It's not going to be a sucky ball, you know, off the corner or whatever. It's going to be there. Billy Thomas here. Billy's second game not going wow. really at all the way that the sec the first one did, but uh, he's working on a strike here, puts nine on it. <laughs> yeah, Billy um, really got off to a slow start this game after a 166 in his first game this afternoon. And he, he does cover convert. He yep. covers the single, so... You know, halfway halfway through, you got to just—he's got to close this game out with all mark. And the troubles continue for Colby over there, and the yeah, Colby's really, really struggling. Goes through the middle. I'm afraid after this second game, he won't even be on our top 20 board. This game, not—I mean, certainly going better than that first one did. And wow, he gets punches that two pin, but brings it back, and then kind of rolls around the lane and gets him to. Three. 24 over the frame. Not too bad, but yeah, you know, he's got he's got a he's, go. he's in need of a of a pretty good game. So this isn't quite gonna cut it yet. But you know, if Col you end up at 150, you say, All right, I'm moving in the right direction. Yep. I see Colton Goose stepping up onto lane two right now. Colton We're trying to put a, a fourth one there. You're going to see him come flying into your picture just outside of the – there he is right there. Big ball. And don't have the greatest angle, but it was on the head pin. It yeah. looked like it might have been a little right, light on the right side. I'm not sure if he left eight or seven. I believe that's an eight. Yeah, because I just saw the scoreboard. Four seven for Colton. Yep, saw the updated scoreboard. Colton is plus sixty one with a mark up in the eighth. Yep, and that's chopped it. Picked off the picked off the four pin. Ouch. 
So that'll put him at about 160 through nine if he covers the wood. Out of here with our he does not. top two to our right, Wayne Matheson, Johnny Antonis are tied at 84, but there's a frame in hand for Wayne Matheson. Oh, yeah. Bernie having a so-so game at the moment, 93 for seven. Colton Goo, a big 160 in the ninth. John Green having a much better game this yeah, time around. Early. Broke that first game, or topped that first game. Unfortunate, 94, but 101 in the seventh. Got to collect some more pins. Try and uh, make up for the damage of that first game. Strike for Wayne Matheson in the seventh. That's going to put some pressure on John D'Antonis. You're going to see a big yeah, game out of Colton. You're going to see a big shake in the top eight here. Big uh, the, uh, John Green fell right off the leaderboard and all the way off the 20. Oh, yeah. He actually disappeared. He disappeared from the top 20. From the top 20. Just with that one game. 94 can do that. That'll do it, yeah. When the Tournament average uh, leaders are in the 150s. That makes a huge difference. It's taking 142 right now to make the Just board. to make the board. I see Billy Thomas right there with a, another head pin hit. Jesse Beach approaches his... Um, Jesse did not have the first game that he needed to... No, he, he was on the bottom end of the board, but he's falling yeah. off. See, Colton Goose score was adjusted to a 159, so he did not make that 10 box. I believe one of them might have been James Snyman who made a come on with a good game, his first game. Yeah, he was bowling sure very exactly well yesterday. exactly what he had out, out the gate. Was blocked, but... Waiting on Wayne coming up here in a moment to our right. So is John D'Antonis. Wayne having a strike to work on. Colby had a two-pinner here, and he has it. Colby's uh, better, right, better this game. Writing the ship, but, you know, he put himself in need of a, a buck 90, 200 kind of a game to get himself Correct. right back where he was. You know, if you're going to throw that game, first game is not a terrible place to do it. Spare for Colton in his 10th frame. He is Jeez. 169 on a ball. So he's going to be in the 70s. He will. I'm waiting on his. I think he's already thrown his fill. We're going to wait on his score to be put in. Yeah, we had a minor score correction. I think. Did we have him at 160? Yeah, well, I, 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 I called that. I called it. Yeah. He's coming this way. I might catch him. Steve Dreyer's wrapping his game up. That is 175 for Colton Goo. So uh Steve Dreyer in at 147. Not a bad game. So you're gonna see you're gonna see Colton Goo now probably uh at one fifty one point five. You can go down to the right side here. John D'Antonis firing in his eighth. He's off the side for seven. One six ten. Now Wayne Matheson on seventeen. Going for the double strike. Got a strike up in the seventh. Man, oh, it's that's right a, there. How did that eight-pin stand? My goodness. That was a hammer. That, that was a good ball. It is called Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike? <laughs> hey. oh. John, a little light on that. Colby. Edpin. Colby. All right. In the house. Wayne for the 20 box. Got it. And John at his 6'10". Got it. So, John, the head pin fell on that ball? All right, advantage uh, yeah. advantage Wayne. Advantage is Wayne now. It is 114. Oh, it was a wood box for John. Sorry, it was a that wood was box. All right. wood. So 114 plus to 94. Right. 
It's now five pins and a hit. Wayne Matheson over John D'Antonis. And Billy Thomas doesn't have too much at the moment. No, he's he's uh, right there with John as well. Looks to me like uh, Colton Goo is going to move up into the top three, if not top two. All right, there on your screen is the prediction from Michael Spiegel. He's got Bernie up there. I'll take you know what? I'll ha I'll take a second place. Yep, yep. I'll take a second. That's my and, horse, but I'm okay with the silver. And Billy Thomas has proved once in the past already. He's got the he's got what it takes to win this tournament. Oh yeah. Yeah, many of these guys can turn it on at a moment's notice. There is Bernie in your picture. Yeah. Colton has uh, moved himself into the fourth position with that game, 175. Oh, he shot right up there. And when um, when Billy Thomas's and John D'Antonis' scores are entered, it's going to get even tighter. Oh, it's going to be it's going to be a little fun now. Thing is, though, Wayne could still shoot a big game and actually yeah. increase his average. Wayne is actually yes. Depends on what he does in the ninth and tenth. He could twenty box out one sixty four. John D Antonis could strike out one fifty four. The classic Chris Roth response. One of our bystanders here just asked Chris Roth when is April and he said it's next month that wasn't the intent of that question but he was not wrong <laughs> <laughs> John Green shooting at a single oh no ooh a single and it's a 3-6-10 for Bernie Hipkins which he does not convert just takes the 6 out for an 8 box wow so Billy That's Thomas will be finishing up his second game of this block, needing hopefully at least a mark, if not a double. All right, down here on lane point, I got John D'Antonis stepping up the fire. There we he go. is 94 through the eighth. He needs marks. That, that is not a mark. That, that, that sound is middle. bad. That's a bad sound. That what, are they, sound. what do they call that? Um, that is ripping the middle. <laughs> that is ripping the middle. Okay, so we, we're consistent on that yeah. one. Sometimes I'll, I'll call it like three out the front. Three yeah, out the front. Watching John there, I saw him glance up at the scoreboard. He knows, you know, he's he knows what an open box means. Yeah, and, he just, and then he just picked the two pin on the spare attempt. So now he's got a six pinner to, to deal with. To he's got to hold to... as many as he can. He only holds two. It's oh, a sorry. six box. Two, two, two. That is one hundred and the ninth. Frustrating frame. Really frustrating. Now watch the confidence from Wayne here if he throws a strike. Mm. This is going to be green light to Wayne. Colby oh, working on this nice game over there, 148 through nine. There's a double for Colby. Yeah. Uh, All right, he needed that. Absolutely needed that. That is a confident young man there. Yeah, he, you know, what? He, is. he didn't yeah. get, but he had a little bit of body language going on in that first game because he was, we, as we saw, he was turning that ball over to the left. Mm. Now seems to have sorted ball. that out now. Seems like he's fixed okay, it. Here's Wayne. Big ball from Wayne Matheson. Sparefield. Heavy hit, seven. 247. Goes so, to 121 in the eighth. Here's a now sizable lead over big, John. Big shot here. Boy, and watch out, Colby. See if Colby can catch fire, shoot back up the board. Yeah. Wayne, Wayne Matheson no. goes off the side of that one. Right, Billy, Thomas, Billy Thomas' Billy score is in here, 114. So he struggled. So he's going to go back down. So Billy, yep. Billy's back, back, down down to back down to one under ninth, under 150, which is, you know, again – not too far off the pace, though. Nope, He's only nine nope. off the pace. Well, yeah, there's just not that many bowlers who are, well, you know, forcing you to keep the 150, 150 plus. Well, you right. got to figure John, John D'Antonis is going to be Bernie's flirting only, with 150. Bernie's going to fall under. Yeah. He can strike out, actually, to be exactly at 150. Right, right. Actually, Speaking Bernie, of. Actually, Bernie did not strike, and he just missed oh. a single. And single pins are really starting to add up for some of these guys. Bernie's gonna shoot a 120 game. Watch his, watch his standing yep. jump down. Yep. Yep. Well, surprising 
first and second game. You know, a couple of couple of scores standing out here, but, but none of, by and large, the the top uh, the top bowlers going into this. Not not making not what it you happen. would expect. No, not no. happening. No big games yet. But I guess that doesn't mean this is. Um, I guess the good news about that is it's still a tight race. Yeah. You know. Well, don't everybody's still in the mix. Yeah, Nobody exactly. pulling away. And don't put it past Colby to throw another one right here. Yeah. They're giving out Colby an opportunity to kind of rebound from that right. game. But Colby is seven before this game was seventy three tens off the lead. Right. He's got some work to do to say the least. A triple strike down there. Not this guy recovering, but a triple strike from Kyle Bull. That's a yep. Triple uh, be a one eighty game with count. Sorry. Here's, no, that was Colby up on it's 50. a four bagger. Colby yep. up on fifty. That's so four he's bagger shooting for, for mid mid nineties. Colby for the triple. Oh, that was a bomb. Eight up in the air. Four seven. He loved it. He too. loved that ball. He was jumping back, like getting ready to celebrate the triple. Yeah. Kyle yes. Bull ends on a five bagger down there on nineteen and twenty for a one ninety six. Hey. What a game. Nice See if he game. shows up on the on the sheet. I don't know where he was, but he was nine four. Well, you know, he was nine forty eight through through seven. Through so. seven. That's yeah. the spare pair down there, isn't it? Yeah, and yeah. He so threw for it. and he threw <laughs> seven strikes, ah. two spares. Colby, uh, that moved him into twentieth position. That's a big miss there from Colby, though. Colby light on that four pin doesn't get it. He's going to have to settle for about a 160, 161. If he can get the ten, the seven pin here. So. A nice game, but not the game that's going to take that sting out of that first game that he threw. Yeah, still, yeah. still, still in, the in the building. In the building, he's still in the building. Not quite exactly sharp, but Bernie with one twenty-four jumped from fourth to eighth. Wow. Well, the movement is pretty, pretty amazing uh, when you look at what can happen with one bad game. Yep. When, Johnny Wilson, Johnny Wilson out of the Bump blue. Big game there. What'd you shoot? <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah. I guess we hadn't talked about him, but uh, we hadn't noticed that that Johnny Wilson jumped into fourth with a one. He's answering game. our trivia questions. Well, things are shuffling eight, around. Though. He was probably in the fifth to eighth yeah, position yeah, after yeah, that, yeah. but uh, you know, look at him climbing the leaderboard. He didn't. He's going to go back down once we get that eighth game in there. Hey, what did Wayne just? Lose? Oh, Wayne hasn't gone yet. Wayne's 131 through the nine. Gandhi Antonis, 100 through the nine. There's a chance here that Wayne Matheson ends up as the leader. There's Colton getting going on his third Johnny game. D with a nine ball. That's the ball for John. That leaves the nine pin. Yeah, the nine ball. <laughs> Got it. Literally the nine ball. The literal nine ball. All right. Let's slides see what Wayne does here. Wow. Wayne, mark for the 150. Right there. Yes, sir. What a ball. So D'Antonis finishes, no doubt with, about that finishes with a Crusher. 110. Very, very difficult that was a game. 10 box for John. That is a brutal 110. Yeah. John's so, going to fall way down the board now. Yep. And that is uh, puts him already in third place. Colton Goo. We'll hang on to second place, and uh, Matheson score should it can creep up a little bit. So, with is there anybody on this uh, in the top eight here that hasn't thrown a game? Uh, I, I think everybody's got a game below one thirty at this point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know about Steve Dreyer. He's also that's true. He's jumped up into the correct. picture. Yeah. Now, Wayne, right now with one hundred and forty-one counted, is at twelve oh five. Right. So he needs he a seven. Eight, eight puts him ahead of Colton. In the, he's in the lead. Maybe but Wayne's the another exception to that. John I forget what his first down name was. To third. That's not bad. He's tied with Dreyer. And that is eight for Wayne. So your leader now I've is been. Wayne Matheson. With like a 151.6 average. Wayne's final score. It's not taking any crazy, Four. unbelievable games right now to no. move up the leaderboard. Yeah, Just two well, solid games 50 60 60 70 yeah 151 for Wayne Matheson and your new leader and Colton Goo Colton Goo is taking the second position five pins out what's incredible too is like i said you know you get someone like the 
the B division leader Nicholson, he, you know, it's over thirteen hundred after eight. Yeah. You know, um, it's when do you catch the when do you catch the run? Right. Or do you fall off after you catch the big game? You know. Yeah. All right, a little delay here as we're getting set up for our next game, game three of six, final shift. Well, we're at a little slow moment here. Here's our trivia question again. Still curious what your thoughts are. Name the only bowlers who have competed in the first 28 runnings of all three of these tournaments. The United States Classic, the Eastern Classic, and the national tournament. Give us your guesses down in the comments. The answer will be revealed in a later game, probably game four, game five of the block. Just hanging on there, it's fair for Bernie Hipkins. Colton Goo down there on three and four does not convert. He's got an open frame. So now we got we got some bowlers that we're gonna keep an eye on right in front of us, which is gonna keep an eye on Johnny Johnny Wilson. Wilson he dropped back down to ten. Right. But he's forty four back. Right. With four to go, so four games, four games to go. either one big game or four four better games than what he's been throwing. 146.6, looking to get that average up close to 150. And right now at that 152 pace, let's see, 12 times 2 is 24. We're looking at an 18-24 clip right there. Yeah. We gotta move one of our cameras down to one and two now to cover uh, John D'Antonis. Then on the other end here, we're gonna have Wayne Matheson. Wayne yet to fire in this third game at 12:15. Kind of interesting little there thing there behind the scenes. Bernie coming back, looking at his standings. Oh, oh what, did he? Come yeah, he just came back and took a peek, see how he's doing. Then he's in seventh right now. Actually, Brian Vest, who is not on this squad, currently sitting in sixth ahead of Colby. So, yeah. Colby's behind Bill Fox, yeah. Johnny Wilson behind Bill Fox as well. So, Bill Fox, Brian Vest still in the top eight at the moment. John D'Antonis is getting up right now on lane one. Chopping two on his first ball. This is John for this. The Joker. Is that a trivia question? Yeah. That was the Joker, I think. <laughs> All right. His first frame of the game for Colby, who has fought back to 11.69, and there's He's a bomb. kind of getting hot. You know, if he starts off with that bad game and then strings five in a row. And there's a strike out the gate for Wayne Matheson.
tough break there. Six, seven, ten for Johnny Wilson. Eight. And Johnny Wilson now on the scoreboard here. Oh, he is. Yeah, welcome, Johnny. Bernie, a tough uh, six on ten out there. His first two frames. He's at twenty six in the second. You know, if someone can catch a double out the gate, a little pressure on the rest of the field. Uh, yeah, right now, again, Wayne Matheson, your leader. I'm trying to recall where he started this shift. What position? He was in second, I believe right? second, he yeah. He was second. Yeah, I think we started the day, John, Wayne, and then it was um, Brandon Donovan. Yeah. The third. And Brandon is now down to 15th. Up to Hank. Yeah. Um, I, you know, if you're making picks right now. Two two bowlers looking uh, most confident by far is Wayne, and then Colton, and then uh, you know, Colby starting to look comfortable. You know, yeah, he's got his work cut out for him. He's got some work cut out for him. He's, he's starting 40, to, 48 off the lead. Yeah. Starting to throw some fist pumps and look really confident. Matheson so far to get to that 12-17 has shot a 141, 185, 158, 150, 160, 134, 138, 151. It's too bad he's not consistent. So yeah, and he's, he's got 289 for his first two today. I think he's the only one of the you know top eight that we started with in this shift that has not thrown a game below 130. Which is what you need. You've got to save 130. Yeah, you can. You don't get the big game. You got to save 130. Yep. Colton, on the other hand, did have a game below 120, but you know a, lar uh, a higher second game in this block yeah. to kind of level out with Wayne. To start today, Colton has gone 118, 175. So that's a 293. Okay. Okay, we're gonna give um, Jim Kaufman a chance here to talk with a very, very special guest who has made his way into the building. Jim, uh, take it away. Hear me all right? Barber. Jim, Pop, nice to meet you. Jim, Pop, I'm with these guys over here with the, they're, we're, we're showing the tournament on the internet. So we've been doing that for the last, I think it's the 10th year or close to it. All right, this one's working. This microphone's working. The other one wasn't working. <laughs> so your father, your father started this tournament, right? Yeah. Oh, you're Tony Barber Juniors, right? So yeah, good. You're senior. Ah. I, okay. So no senior junior. A lot of the <clears throat> the big names would come up here. A lot of the athletes would come up, right, to open the tournament. Yes, they did. Yeah. They used to have years ago, when the first few years, they had a match game. The Blue Ribbon, the Blue Ribbon team will go against a famous team. For second before the tournament, then the tournament they got bigger, yeah, they got bigger, and so they did away with it. That drew a lot of people. I think I'd, I'd like to see that again. That's not that's a pretty good idea is to get a couple of all-star teams together and have them have a match, maybe, right, like you said, at the beginning of the tournament, right? Yeah. What, uh, what, what's your earliest memory of the Eastern? I go way back 19, 
feet in the 1940s. Because I used to set up a few times. You were a pin boy? Yeah. Nicholas String? No. What do you mean? How much did they pay you? How much did they pay you to set pins? I was the owner's son. So <laughs> you got <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> yeah, I was an owner. Who was uh who who was your favorite bowler to watch growing up? Growing up, oh, quite a few. Oh boy, I can't think of it. Did you ever get to watch Nick Tronsky? Yes, I did. Yes, because he was one of the bowlers on the Blue River team. Jack White, Joe Gazer, Pelletier, Bill Bill Tato also. Yeah, George Pelletier, yeah. I bowled with him for good many years. He came from the same time. He's Hartford, or where is he from? Daniel Cincinnati. Oh, from up in the corner, the northeast corner here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Miles, about 18 miles away. I thought he was from the Hartford area. I, well, he did, yes. Yeah, well, I was at the time I was bowling at Lucky Strike. I was on Main Street. And he came to me one night and said, you know this guy that they call George? And I knew who he was talking about. He said, yeah. He says, get him to come up here to bowl. And I knew George. So I asked George, I want to want to see him. So he wanted to see my uncle also, but he wanted me to go and do it. That's what got him started. That's how I got him. Yeah, my uncle took him out of it. Yeah, because he was, he bowled, he had the Blue Ribbon team, and Nick was bowling on the opposite team. So we asked him to join, join him and the other bowlers on the Blue Ribbon. Yes, they were a famous team. They were quite well known in the squad up and down East. Who was the best you ever saw? Well, Nick is a great bowler. Yeah, yeah. I I knew him not very well, but I, yeah. One one last question before I let you go. There's that famous picture of uh, the the bowler who who threw his ball down and, and one pin landed on top of the other. Were Were you here for that? No, I wasn't. No, I probably was. Might have been setting up pins. I'm not sure. Because I wasn't supposed to set up pins. I was, I was about 13 years old. Then. I've never seen that before. I've never seen it again. Uh, that's such a one of the first things I think of with this tournament is that picture of the one pin on top of the other. Strange things happen in this game. Pins is like that for sure. So, I right, thank you for your time. It's good to see you. I appreciate it. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. So um, that was Tony Barber, legendary. Um, I think he's the nephew of Frank Barber, who is the obviously the, the person who put this tournament together and, and basically created the whole concept of the Eastern Classic. Um, something that we, uh, we also know about Tony is um, he put together some – ridiculous string of never missing a bowling match <laughs> that went on for years and years um the last um last week when we did the show brian's one of one of our uh, trivia question was uh, what tournament did the eastern classic hope to rival what they wanted to create something that was you know something that could rival a um a tournament that was big and it was called the u.s classic i'm not sure if you're familiar with that or not i never I, I had never heard of it um, myself, but um, he um, he talked about uh, his blue ribbon teams and just a couple of names. He bowled with Nick Tronsky and George Pelletier. Have you heard those names a wow. couple of times? Yeah, yeah. So uh, can you imagine the the, the five man team? Uh, oh, I'm sure. Home. Uh, prime, they were probably untouchable. Yeah, I mean, just unbelievable history. He says he goes back to 1940 with this tournament. So. Just Incredible. amazing, amazing. They talked about being a, a pin setter. Yeah, uh, it, it, not getting paid. <laughs> yeah, you know, but um, you know, when your dad owns the bowling alley, you just uh, do what you're told, right? And yeah, 
Can you imagine setting up the pins for no, Dombrowski? No, no. I'd be nervous. Get, I'd be getting out of there. Like, <laughs> don't throw it yet. I'm not quite out. Of, I'm not quite out of the pit. Um, but no, that's a, it's just a wonderful, wonderful story. Um, uh, Tony Barber, uh, I bowled with him a couple times in leagues here. And, it's on uh, our screen Tony. now. John D'Antonis going for a triple. Yeah. Uh, he's uh, outside a little bit. I think he uh, yeah. off the side. Can't tell if that's a seven eight or it's like the one seven eight. So, uh, yeah, Tony Barber uh, made his appearance uh, yesterday, and he came back again today. So it's it's good to see him uh, getting up there and uh, go way back with Tony. Um, my dad uh, coached a little league baseball team. Wow! And uh, back when I was, you know, nine years old, and, and his dad coached and stuff. And uh, for tryouts back then, you actually had to make the team. So uh, this kid picks up the ball at center field fence and throws it and hits the backstop from 200 feet away. John D'Antonis, uh, unable to convert that spare, gets gets a nine box. That kid, his name was Brian Green, and he had two brothers who were probably not quite as adept at baseball, but my dad took all three of them, and that kid, Brian Green, is, is uh, Tony's nephew. So Him and I have a family history as well. So the, the scores are not, I mean, it's kind of limping along here a little bit right now. Yeah, nothing huge at the moment. Yeah, John D'Antonis, 79 through 5. Fulton Goose, 70, uh, 87 plus in the sixth. Yeah. So Matheson's not quite on pace with his last game. Wayne is 45 in the fourth. He got an eight in his fourth frame. So he's certainly not on that 160 pace. No. Which looks like John might try to take his lead back at the moment. At the moment. For the time being. Colby getting ready to take lane 17 on a strike. 58 plus. It was a bomb, too. I did see it while the interview was going on. It was a flush hit. See if he catches the double. He's going to need a couple doubles, double or triples to get back in. Oh, just with the well, doctor order. Know, uh, the, the announcer's jinx in the good way there. Yeah. <laughs> I can just, I've, you know, I used to pull a league with him. I yeah. carpool with him on Monday nights. I can just tell. I can tell you just know when he's locking in, right? You know it's going to be there. Like, you don't know it's going to strike, but you know it's going to hit the pocket. Well, he certainly has righted the ship, and now he's got three and a half games to uh, do the work. He's got to yeah. do some work. 78 in the fifth with two hits working. So Starting to separate himself this game from the other uh, leaders. The other leaders who are, by the way, doing pretty good. Everybody's north right. of that 75 mark, the halfway point to 150. But if Colton's going to contend for this, he's this is exactly what he's got to do. Or, sorry, Colton, uh, Colby. Colby. For, excuse me. We got Colby. We got Colton. We got two yeah, Antonis's. <laughs> it's, it's a mess. Yep. Billy Thomas doing okay here. 65 half spare up. He is not far at all off the lead. Just 26 back. Bernie Hipkins working on a strike. What? Not on, uh, not on the screen here, but... That's oh. Steve Dreyer. That comment is going to... Hey, happy up. birthday. Yeah, it's his, Billy Thomas's birthday. It's your get birthday. Out of here. It's your birthday. <laughs> we got to get... We got to get him a cake or maybe a 175 game. How about that? Well, how about if he wins the Eastern, he can go buy his own cake. Yeah, yeah this right? is true. And, and some wings to go. Yeah. <laughs> Here's John... On lane two, looks like he's shooting a it's like the six, three, ball, six, three pin, pin maybe, six, seven, and he got it. Yep. John spares. John at eighty nine plus in the sixth. It's like another open frame down there for Wayne Matheson. Colby he's steps up. Fifty five in the fifth. Colby Colby's on eighteen, filling a double. 
going Ooh, for the triple sure solid is. five. Wow. Yeah, wow. That was two pins interfered with each other. They were heading for it, and they knocked each other off the back of the pit. Big 29. He's uh, 77 in the fourth. He's 37 up on the box. Well, yeah. Plus 46 up on the box without the next ball here. He needs big games. And he, these are the stuff he can't he can't miss he can't miss these the rest of the day. No. On he the face. That one, right nope. all over. Ninety seven at the half for Colby Antonis with the spirit from the six. So that's Colton, the kind of Colton Goo uh finished his eighth frame, open box there, one twenty three in the eighth. He's so, forty three up on the box. He's so two to go. He's in decent shape. Not terrible. He's definitely ahead of the pace of that main foot though. You know, uh that, that leaderboard average is creeping ever closer to 150, which is, yes, you know, is. always yeah. where we, we set the bar. So I'd say everybody's everybody's starting to warm up a little bit here. Yeah. Well, certainly Colby. Yeah. Um, Colton has been fairly hot since a relatively you know poor yeah. start. But yeah. 118, and he's on 175, and he's on a strong game here. I'm not positive, but I think – Colton finished that 118 with a couple of marks, so it was actually a little bit worse than it could have. I mean, it ended up better than it could have. It could have ended up bad, very bad. Steve Dreyer's still hanging around. Hanging around, yep. All right, here There's comes John. John. John looking to put a big number Right up. all over the pocket. Wow. Another nine drop. Bringing 10, I think. Leaves the 10 pin. Yep. Be able to tell by his body language whether he makes it or not. You can hear it. He's Nailed all it. over it. Nailed it. Yep. That Billy Thomas. Uh, looks like uh, he's on lane 10. Filled his mark in the seventh with an eight. He left the five seven. And there he is with his attempt at the spare. Uh, I guess it was a ten, uh, the third ball. So nine box for Billy Thomas. 150 in range over there. Wayne right. Matheson getting up on 19-20. He's really struggling this game. Only one mark in the first five. Coming off that 160 game. Good ball there to try to rectify it. Leaves the eight pin. Let's see, Colby. Colby. Uh, Kind of pacing around yeah, behind the approach there. He's like he's, ready he's to go. He's like a tiger and wait and wait. He starts throwing a good ball. He just wants to get up there and throw. Yeah, it's like a predator stalking the prey. Yeah. That, can, that can work against you, though, if you try to overdo it. Yeah, it's oh, tough God. to. Instead of, going through your same, instead of going through your same routine, that you try to, you know, amp it up a little. Mm -hmm. you got to manage emotions and, you know, your physical form when you're bowling no matter how good or bad you're doing absolutely yeah. he's got the opportunity there to start coming back though he pulled himself back to 12. once again the uh, trivia question will be on 17. Spare fill. Light yeah, hit, 9-10. Yeah. Not, not a great result, but it wasn't a great ball. Yeah, that's okay. Bought himself a big, little bit of big uh, eight. room for an open box. Yeah, he's 115 one through 6, which is plenty. That's wood out for 150 game. Right, with Bolton maybe looking at 160. He really only needs a mark to try and keep that pace. He can get a second one. Colby just about just about tipped that into the corner. So that uh, Friday night, Brian Vest made the cleanest 710 I've ever seen. I mean, he hit that. He made the 710? He oh, made wow. the 710 for a spare. And um, we saw hit, him shooting it a couple of times today. We, <laughs> he hit the seven pin so hard it went directly down into the pit and straight up like one hop into the 10 pin. It was like it happened so fast. 
I mean, I believe, out. I believe you, though. No, yeah, we'll no, have I, to find out how many times he's made that. Oh, I don't know. Uh, it, career. it happened. No. F- yeah. <laughs> as fast as the seven pin got hit, the ten pin was down. It was unbelievable. Bernie was filling a strike there. Left side of your screen. He got eight on it. Gets to 100 in the seventh, but he's going to leave it open here. So, you know, looking at 140 unless he can catch a double. Billy Thomas went off the side, cut the 3-9 on the first ball. No hurt, not filling a mark, but unable to convert for the spare. Going to leave another open. Right. John D'Antonis on two. Uh, he picks his baby split. He picked the front off. Way Matson off the other end of the center is on 19. Good spare fill. He's going to need to mark out to save this game. I guess everybody's pretty much had their turn at a, at a low game in these opening three oh, yeah. here. Bolton. That's a uh, Bill. I can't quite see what that seven. is. Seven. Leaves the one three six. So off the head pin, but very makeable spare here. Oh, and he cuts out the head pin on it. One forty in the ninth gets these two for one fifty. Good game, but not as good as he would have liked it to be. Colby through the middle in his eighth frame. Rips five, leaves a two, four, seven on the left, three, six on the right. Colton did finish that with a 10 for 150. Nice, nice total though of 1362 for nine. 12 over the 150 pace. We know what that is for three. Um, who shot what that game? 50. Four forty-one. Four forty-one. Okay. Forty something. Yeah. Bernie. Bernie, one hundred and ten through the eighth. Ah, uh, and, and heavy in that. One. Yeah, heavy on that one-two. You know, there's a couple of splits in this game that you see with some frequency on head pin hits that you might not expect them. That's one of them. Two and one, either the two four six or the three four six. Then you get the five seven or the five ten. And then that seven eight and seven nine or in uh, nine ten rather, those show up a lot. Wow, good bit at it. John D'Antonis, that's seven, seven ten. ten. Just cut the ten. So John could wood out for a mid one forty game, mark in the ten, get him to one hundred and fifty. Only two guys left right now in the tournament that are averaging in the 150s. That's including Colton. 151 average through nine games. And Wayne. And I think that was Steve Dreyer with a double right there. In the ninth and tenth? Yeah. Could be wrong. Waiting to see him come back to finish that 10th frame. Maybe it was a spare. Just being informed that there is a 192 on three and four shot by Walt Brooks. Oh, Walt Brooks. Pass winner. Eastern Classic. I believe that is also the, I could be wrong. I think that's the pair they sponsored. Is it? No, it might be, it might be right right near us like seven and eight yeah i haven't talked a lot about that today but i mean worth mentioning is like a, a fun part of this tournament that a lot of the lanes have sponsors for uh high game prizes or uh other types of accomplishments i think 19 and 20 they're looking for spares, spares. but there's a really fun part of this game that 
even if you're not really in contention for the open division win, you could still find yourself with a hundred dollar prize sure. because of uh, all the sponsors. Billy Thomas wrapped up eight box in the 10th frame, only to 130 there. Here's Walt, the bottom of your screen. John Biederman. There is uh, the Duckpin TV trivia presented by the duckpinpook.com. Name the only bowler to have competed in the first 28 runnings of the United States Classic, the Eastern Classic, and the National Tournament. Um, I don't know. We got a couple theories here, but could it have been Frank Weber? I, 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 it's as good as answer an answer as any to me. I mean, strike for Colby D'Antonis down the other end here in the ninth frame. He's 143 plus on a strike. I got to get my copy of the Duckpin book out. Uh, Mark Davis is somewhere at home flipping through. Yeah. He didn't answer earlier because he already read the book. He's a gentleman. Didn't Leaving the glory out there for people who just yeah. who haven't read the book yet. There shouldn't be many of you. Was the, Go get that book. Did somebody, did we, get, did we answer the trivia question in my Not absence? Yet. Oh. John Dean. Oh, eight, 11, 11 and 12. 12. Yeah. You see uh, four, six, seven there left behind by John D'Antonis. 142 game. He got seven out. And Johnny Wilson in his 10th frame throws a strike. 139 plus. Wayne really struggling over there on 1920 at 93 in the eighth. So Kobe. Wayne is going to fall off more than likely. It's going to fall off the top spot. And Bernie Hipkins on the left side of your screen finishing his game. Went through the middle. So we got Kobe and at 43 plus a, box. plus a strike up. 28. Kobe is at a chance for 170 game with another mark. I think he's going to want more than that. I think he wants the first hit in the 10th and high count for 180. Is what he's okay. Say. All right. I'm telling you just as a buddy of his. Okay. Running through his All right. right now. I, I wouldn't settle for 170 if I thought I could get 180. That's for darn sure. I, it's amazing how many times I've watched Kobe shoot 170 with a rip, middle rip in the 10th and he pissed. <laughs> To be that good, right? Yeah. Like, I wish I could be mad about shooting yeah. 170 over here with my 112. I should have. It should have been a 180. Yeah. Johnny Wilson gets nine, 148. He keeps plugging along. There's Brian. Brian Vest. How many times in your career have you made the 710 for a spare? Besides, the other night was the first time. Oh my God! I witnessed oh God. a history. <laughs> I told them that the seven, when you, it, the 10 pin went down just as fast as the seven. It was amazing. <laughs> Up in the air and came straight down into the 10 pin. So the first time in his career he made it, I was, I was there. You were there for it. Wow. You Nick, would, you would have never believed that. Wayne Matheson off the side for the head pin makes it for the spare. Puts his fist up in the air. All right, big frame here for Colby on lane 18. Huge, huge ball. Strike in the ninth. Good double. It's there. Five oh, pins. and that five pins uh, sticking on lane 18. Down. It's yeah. nailed down on lane 18. All right. Spare and strike for Thankfully, 173. It doesn't have any friends with it. No seven, no 10. So, do you think he'll settle for a one? Do you think he'll settle for a 170 now? Uh, kind of has to. <laughs> All over. He's it. on it. Made that look easy. Seven or better. Gets him to 70. He's going to be our highest score, I think, out of all the uh, yeah, out of all the featured, all the leaderboard, all the featured scoreboards. So there. he's going to pick up twenty pins on Goo, so cuts into that deficit. He's going to pick up pins on the entire field ahead of him. Yeah, we'll be moving left on that leaderboard. Oh yeah, it's just a question of how far. We'll find out here in a second. Like, can he get past Wilson? Oh, he will. He will get past Wilson. Can he? I think One, so. Two, I think two, so. Yeah. Get past Wilson. Right. Yeah, he's going to be past Wilson. He's going to be. He's going to be up there quite a bit. 
Ooh, that ball outside. Well, well that's, there's the two, but not the two the, that he probably two. normally puts on the spare at the end of the game. 165. So a 165 is not a well. And all right. That score goes in, and Colby D'Antonis all the way to third. Third place. Boom. Just Look at like that. that. Steps After ahead. starting Holy with a 1 0. Steps ahead of his dad. Said, Step out the way, dad. I'm That's heading up. Incredible. One pin difference. A huge, huge. Uh, waiting on a 10th frame move. here from Wayne Matheson, but it's possible that Colton could take the lead and Colby could be second. So it is very possible. You know, and uh, Colby finishes uh, two games on lanes one and two, and if he can get those, if he can get fired on one and two, he can put up some oh. big numbers. Yeah, my horse in the race has gone back to. 1307 for nine, which is 13th place. Yeah, well, Bernie. My, my horse is struggled, running second. Struggling to open a half of this of this block here, but more than capable of putting together a 500 on the on the last three. Oh, again, that's the thing. All these guys are capable of shooting a nine. They're all capable of shooting a thousand. They're all definitely capable of shooting 500 to back three. Mm -hmm. Just who gets the breaks? Who gets the rhythm? You know. Yet to be determined. Over three games left. See Billy Thomas drop down to back to ninth. The golden age of duck pin bowling. Great book. If you like duck pins or not, it's a great read. Here's the 10th frame for Wayne Matheson, all the way to the right side of the house. On a spare, crunches it in there. It's like a nine drop. Big nine. Needs everything he can get right now. I'm sure he would have enjoyed a strike. Yeah, he needs to, nine uh, spare nine, nine spare strike. He needs a spare load to get this game to that number you talked about, that number thirty. Yeah. The spare and strike for one thirty-two. Four pin, got it all, all, over. all over it. So, like, like you were saying, you can't, you, you, you know, you can't afford a one oh but maybe you can. I mean, Colby's proven us wrong. Who knows? We'll switch to the high side. To the, you know, the camera there, do we? No, we do. Spare fill for Wayne off the side. How like many does he steal? Six, I think. It looks, looks like, like six. 128. So he does not eclipse that 130 mark. So he will drop down out of the lead. And Colton Goo, my horse. Colton Goo is in the lead. Coming around the back stretch, not quite to the not quite to the turn, but coming around the backside. The home stretch is about a game away, I'd say. So how much is his lead? His lead is over Wayne by 17. Wayne Matheson one, sorry, 11 pins ahead of Colby. So and Colby one pin ahead of his father. And uh, John D'Antonis and Steve Dreyer are tied on the on the nose. I mean, couldn't be closer. Second to second to fourth place, second to fifth place. Just two pins separating four bowlers. And Colton just, you know, out of out ahead by a car length. I'd say yeah. 20, 20 or so pins. Got to keep his foot on the gas. Everybody else got to find another gear. <laughs> so, Colby is moving now to 19 and 20. Colby will make the turn, and then bowl his last two games on one and two. Which could be a different that could be a difference maker. Kobe needs a good game here. Then he makes the turn bowls his last two games on one and two. Yeah, and uh, as you know, we've heard in this house over and over, one and two have the the highest games ever bowled here. Um, I think in one of the Eastern Classics, I believe was it uh, was it Eric Pellet that threw a two forty something game down there. It was a, it was a big big game on one and two in the Eastern Classic. This year, um, I, I don't think the scores have been. As good on, one, as good two, on so. one and two. So, yeah. But the, the guys that have scored, you got to get locked in early. 
And if he, if Colby can get down there and get locked in early and find that groove. Yeah. John DeAntonis, that is a strike out the gate. Yeah, it bears repeating, guys. Position second through fifth. Two pins separating them. That's incredible. I mean, we've got the best bowlers in the country here. A father and son inside that inside oh that group. God. I didn't even recognize that. Um, and Colton's out in front by a little bit, but I mean, you couldn't ask for a much more competitive. Well, it's, it's twelve, thirteen forty-five to thirteen thirty-three. Is it? Oh, pardon me. Yeah, but third, third to fifth, two pins. That's yeah. crazy. It's gonna make it such that uh, we might have some excitement in an hour or so. Yeah, we have. Um, there's only one bowler right now in the tournament. That is above that 150. That's Colton Goo. And it's Colton Goo. Colton has won this before? Colton has, yeah. yeah. Um, not two years ago, three years ago. I, I believe he won it on the, did he win it on the of, first weekend? It's 2021 winner. Out of your top five, only one of them has not won before. <laughs> is that Wayne? That's Wayne Matheson. Yep. Looks like a spare conversion for Bernie there. I... John DeAntonis. Strike in the first for John. Colton, 26 through two. Steve Dreyer, 28 through two. See Colby getting ready to start his game on 19 and 20. The unfortunate part for us is all the all the heavy hitters that we're following are on the outside edges right now. Yeah. So we just whiffed on the bread line. Yeah, there's a bad second ball. Well, it wasn't a good first ball either, but the second ball was not where he would want it. it does does again, not touch the head pin. Not often you see Kobe miss the head pin three times. Yeah, just hit the button and forget it. The name on the top yeah, seven, uh, Fox. Uh, Nick, are you familiar with someone the uh, last name Fox? Bill Fox from Ocean City, Maryland. And there you go. He's creeped up into the seventh Him place position. Brian yeah, uh, Brian Vest as well. This, uh, without a doubt, the scores today, the shifts have not been what I anticipated. They are lower. Nope. I mean, Brian Vest could find himself in the top five here if. Uh, yeah. His, his 148 average is solid because he's already one, bowled it. I thought 150 was going to be fifth. 150 is winning right, right now. Right. And his his 148 is in the bank. Yeah. Oh, he's cashing. No doubt. So. Oh, he's cashing. He's he's going to make money so many different ways in this tournament. He threw, he threw at least high game on a minimum two pairs. It may have been three pairs. John DeAntonis over there on three. I believe he broke nine there. Like a four pin. So Colby's going to say, try to right the ship in this game. He started off with a nine box. He's going to be coming up on lane 19. I saw John DeAntonis walking away from a, a lane with no pins on it. I didn't catch if that was the second or third ball. I'm going to go with it with the string. Yeah. He, he did throw three balls, but the second one was used to do some housekeeping in the gutter. Okay. Kobe with his second box of the 10th game. Solid. Leaves a solid 10th pin. Yeah. 
Colby did cover that 10 pin in the second box. He's up on a spare in the third. Goes solid through the head pin, but I believe he got away with nine there. Yeah, Colby looks like a nine drop there, three pin. That was really heavy on the head pin. Good feel. He'll take nine and go quietly. Oh, yeah. Not that quietly, I'm I sure. I mean, I, I just haven't seen this much bad spare shooting out of him in a long time. Yeah. Just, just whiffed. And that wasn't, that wasn't even really close. That wasn't even, that ball was way off to the right. Man, got it for 10. Non D'Antonis just cleared whatever was left up there. And that's, he's off to the start he needs this game. Yeah, strike for John. It's a big ball. No one out Getting the ourselves gate a little caught up on uh, scorekeeping here. Yeah, not too much out the gate. I mean, John D'Antonis with some 20 boxes, but that's about it. Yeah, it's interesting. These... Um, a lot of our bowlers here who are in contention are really close to each other. You know, on the on the lanes, Colby's going to make yeah. Colby's going to make the turn. Everybody who's we'll in, down on in the, the lower six, pretty much. yeah, they'll all have eyes on one another's range. scores. And we yep. won't need to change too much. It'll be down one, the one through four camera, and then the yeah, we only kept to cover eight lanes. Yeah, yeah pretty much eight lanes. That's all we're going to need to cover. Yeah, we haven't mentioned much about Steve Dreyer, who has just quietly just climbed the mosey, board, moseying along it, uh, closed the distance <laughs> between the you know the, his score and the first place score. His scores have been 157 first block here, 157, 126, 181, 141, 149, 152, and then so far his first three today, 138, 147, 142. Again, nothing spectacular there, but that's been about what the average pace has been for this squad. Right. Yep. About about four. Why we haven't paid much attention to it. In the four, good or bad. Four twenties. Yeah. Others. Four uh, other bowlers have had you know one fifteen, one eighty, one twenty right. something, one seventy. We're noticing the good and the bad. We're not noticing all the medium games. Right. So you got the four twenty one, the conventional way. You hit one forty. <laughs> right. Is that 420? No, it's more than 421. It's uh, 427. Steven's a past winner. Has he won this twice or has he only got one? I, uh, I know he has one. I'm not sure about two. Um, he won it in 2008. One win in 2008. Yep. Yeah. 
been a while. It has. It's 15, I'd say he's due. 15 years. Yeah, to Nick's earlier point, right? There's some bowler, you know, plenty of bowlers out there who have some distance between their first and second wins. This would be 15 years. For Colt, it would only be two. <laughs> Got to go out on a limb here and say that this year's score is probably not going to get to 1900. Yeah, it wouldn't not, say so. Oh, it's not 1900. I can promise you that. But I can tell you, uh, just get, not going to discuss what it is, but I just received a pretty telling hint oh. from a viewer about the answer to our trivia question. Hmm. Yeah, I think that. I think that, that viewer might. Up might know what uh, the answer is. Yeah, I think that sums it up. It also tells us we were all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and look, um, you know, Colton really struggling so far. First half of the game, only 54 in the fifth. One mark. Four, four straight opens trying to get back on the horse here. Current Duckpin Bowler of the Year, right? Duckpin Professional Bowler of the Year, uh, Kobe yep. D'Antonis. He's gonna. I think he's got a two four six there. And I um, also tell you, Colton for the roughly the first two months of his fall league at Dual Lanes in Hagerstown was averaging one sixty. Oh, wow! Incredible. Yeah, it's just silly. So Dual Lanes had is where the two fifty five was shot. The guy ended up going. You know, 186, then 129 for a measly 570. <laughs> then the next week, Bernie Hip, not Bernie Hipkins, uh, Richie Hipkins shot 594. <sighs> Unbelievable. That was just short of 600. He missed, I think he missed the house record by two or three pins. So dual lanes where they play duck pins with a 10 pin ball? Is that right? <laughs> uh, kind of, yeah, because they have 10 pin lanes downstairs. <laughs> It's a very unique uh, layout. It's it's twelve duck pin lanes on the ground floor yeah. that are numbered twenty five through thirty six. Then the the land slopes down off the street, so then underground, wow. you know, underground, which is down a hill, yeah. there's a side entrance to the ten pin lanes, which are one through twenty four. That's crazy. It's a very unique setup. Therefore, named dual lanes. Right? Yeah. Well, it's on dual highway. Oh, okay. So as last year's uh, Bowler of the Year standings, Kobe was ranked number one. Steve Dreyer was ranked fifth. Kobe having a 152 average over 96 games. That doesn't seem like he seems like he'd bowl a lot more than that. Yeah, I, you know, I can't even average 152 for one game. <laughs> 96 games is a lot of games to yeah. bowl on tour. That I mean, he did, you know, he make he it did, Sundays. <laughs> yeah, and he broke a 50, he broke a 13 game world record in there. Oh yeah, that was yeah. Just, uh, Unbelievable start and match play. He went 6 0 1 his first three. John D'Antonis just went on, right up the Kobe gut. He's on the struggle bus down there. On, As is like, John right now. He just left the 5 10. John on middle rip. Riding that struggle bus together right now. Yeah. Uh, John. They're one pin apart. I mean, they're, they're close. Yeah. John having a better game, though, here. Yes. John is absolutely having a better game. He's 75 through the fourth. Colby wishes he was in. Anywhere near that. that. Yeah. I wonder here, maybe John uh, noticed how close he was to Colby and said, all right, I got Here's a nice graphic that's just gotten flashed up on our most recent classic Eastern Classic Champions. And what's interesting, you look at the average pace, and I would be stunned if we see an average pace. Anywhere near any anywhere of those. So Chris Kruger in 2020 with a 150.58. It might be close to that. It might also be close to Will Rigney from 2016. The 152.75. Worth noting, too, there are a lot of factors that go into what creates score besides just the bowlers. Um, temperature, outside temperature, can make a significant difference on the performance of the lanes and the pins. And we've had a cold weekend here. We yeah. had some snow. Um, Friday. Right. Um, Humidity the levels also mm -hmm. an important yes. factor. Colder, colder mm -hmm. air. Right. Yes. And there was one year, it was uh, 2021. Um, and, um, this is, I think that was the year Colton won, correct? Yeah. And Colton fired back to back 200 games. 
So that was the year due to COVID-19 that the Eastern was moved to October, September. Warmer. Yeah. Um, warmer temperatures. That's the only reason I became eighth place. <laughs> it was warmer. <laughs> Shot 925. Back six. That's a good block. It's a great block. Yeah. I think I got money for it. <laughs> yeah, because if you ever go back there to the pits, uh, there's not a lot of heat back there, so they're basically outside. But it varies from center to center. Yeah. Some do have heat in the back. Yep. Um, I can tell you a good amount of them don't. Right. Just because the most important area, you know, where the bowlers are. And Correct. Where most of the customers are. Us mechanics could just layer up and suffer. Sure. You, but, yeah, uh, yeah. Who cares? Having, sure. having Wear heat, a jacket. So, yeah, having, <laughs> having heat over the pins uh, does make a significant difference. Sure. In, in the performance. So would you, would you equate some of the higher southern scores to the weather, the climate? Is that? possibility that some of the northern houses are, or, or is it more the lane conditions um i can say unequivocally it's just a different standard of lane maintenance there's a few centers up north that do hit like the ones in the south but there's a couple that are in the south that are just unmatched right um, and you I, think it's simply because they spend enough time and, and effort I, maintaining I can, I can tell you that some centers that i have worked for um have very exact and very strict lane maintenance procedures. Okay. And it gets results. Um, so the bowlers that, that bowl in those houses feel a level of consistency, perhaps. That... Sure, which is why I think you have that northern teams tend to do quite well in tournaments down south. Because their averages are a little lower? Not that they're sandbagging, but they're Just bowling because. on tougher conditions. Understood. So a one... 40 average at I'll throw out a house Whitford. That's that's that's, it's that's not the same it. as a 140 average. I promise you, no one averages 140 at Whitford. <laughs> right, but it's not the same as a 140 right. at Southwest or a 140 at Glen Burnie or sure. a 140 at Suitland. Right. But some houses are going to play slightly different, and there is no right. good realistic way to do a rating system. Sure, yeah. sure, Eric. If, uh, the, the, the old the, the name that comes to mind for me, and I never bowl there, it's a place called Heartside. Heartside. Oh, and yeah. I, I heard that, that, that it was just a nightmare right. to try I, to score. I never bowled there, but it is probably up north the, the one most. The one that everybody talks about. Yeah. Yeah. Tough to score it. Um, I have to say the hardest house I ever bowled in, and it just on, it just closed, unfortunately, was uh, Patterson. I went in there one day to do an open play uh, probably about three, four years ago now. But it's not a league house, hasn't been for a long time. So the lanes themselves were clean, but they're not doing the actual conditioning and the side rubber maintenance and all that. And the racks were a little off spot, but um, you got what you hit and <laughs> not a not a inch more than that. Yeah. I mean, you you had to, you wanted to strike, you better drill them. Yep. That's kind of similar to what I grew up on, you know, at the, the youth league. Sports sure. Park when I was a sure. Youth, and then uh, we didn't do it everywhere else. Well, we need to, uh, you know, we've been talking about Steve Dreyer's consistency, and here he is again, just just, just put, putting, along. Put, putting along, but he's probably going to hit another 140. Yeah, and this is, I mean, this is looking like a better game than the three that he's had right, so far. Right. He's just dropped a 20 box, so he's, so he's, so he's, so he's the seventh strike and up in the eighth. As far as this game goes, he's one of the only bowlers that's actually putting, Doing up, something. putting up something. Yeah. Of the eight bowlers we were tracking here, you know, the, it's been a sleepy start for most of them. I'm looking at the fourth frame, and all but two of them were in the 40s. Right. Um, needed well, one mark. Um, oh, and, yeah. Well, the, the other thing about it right now, we're in, you know, we're in game 10. It's not that noisy. There's not a lot of hoopla. There's not a lot of – it should pick up in the next game oh, or two. Oh, I think, I think the 11th game is when it starts getting serious. Yeah. When, you hit, when you hit your final pair, yeah. you want to you get into a group. It's going to start getting serious then. But we do have uh, John D'Antonis standing out a little bit in this game, 92 in the sixth. And then Steve, as you said, Steve Dreyer. Plus 33 plus in, in yeah. that eighth frame. And John is ahead of Colby by a good bit now. Colby had a one-pin lead going into this game, and John currently up 29. Right. So 28-pin lead overall for 
going to totally be able to struggle this game 63 through the six. This is John on lane four. That's a heavy hit. Looks like he left the two and one. Uh, he's definitely one in the corner there. Oh, gave it a good effort. Just got outside of the three pin. Comes a wood ball for John. Take hey. 101 through the seventh. This is worth mentioning. Someone on the board. Anthony Howell in seventh. Place the 143.9 average through through the nine games, but he is 84 through the sixth. This game double up seventh and eighth. Yep. See if he climbs the standings a little bit. A couple games like that, he can find himself looking at the top ten. Yeah. It's like a triple for James Simon, I think. Another name that's <clears throat> floating around out there in uh, top 20 land. Johnny Wilson still, still uh, in the mix. In the mix, and you know, what look, place was he in early? He was in eighth. So he was not far back. He's forty-one back in the lead, but he's on an okay game here. Yeah, I mean, said, no one's blowing him up at the moment. See, uh, Colton, Colton's on a low game. Colton twenty-nine through the night. But it kind of seems like the last few games, someone gets the lead. Boom. And then the top game. Right. Yep. And then right back down. See right. a new name on the top 20 board there. Yeah, we've, uh, had, we've almost had a new leader every game. Walt Brooks right. moved himself up. Into Steve the Dreyer's got, at the moment making up 22 pins on yeah. Colton. I mean, yeah, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm shocked about how medium the scores have been this year. Yeah. Like the Colby over there in his eighth frame, he was only 78 through the seventh. Yeah, he's got to string him. Past 73 through the seven. Oh, even worse. Yeah. Really flat this game. I don't – haven't caught too many of his balls while he was throwing them, but – Well, he missed a couple of – he missed a couple of spares. And, missed a few. Uh, yeah. Holton in need of uh, in need of a good finish here. This last frame wants 18, 19, 20 pins at least. It's light. I believe that is a split for Colton. Yeah. It's like two, five, and seven, perhaps. That is makeable then. Two, five, seven. Yep. John D'Antonis got a spare in the eighth. Take the 10. That is a tough 119 for Colton Goo. That is going to shake up the top of the leaderboard. Uh, I think there's, you know, a few bowlers here. 
What does Wayne have? Billy Thomas, uh, Bernie Wayne Hipkins. doesn't have much. Wayne plus, plus eight with a hit in the six. Yeah, and they, what did they just do there? Oh, no, that's not um, Where is my Wayne's down on one and two. So he's about to get up and fire. He's about to fire on lane two if we could switch down to that. Wayne firing now on lane two. That ball looked good to me. Yeah, that was gorgeous. That is a clean plate right there. That is a 20 box for Wayne Matheson. That'll help to get them 18 over his box now. So with a load, Dreyer's looking at a 150 game. Yeah, Goose. he's he's 141 in a ball. Yeah, yeah Goose, right there. Goose score is in. Fulton's Dreyer did throw a 10 on it, so he's at 151. He's 119, and he's going to move down. Fifth to, place? Yeah, fifth. Dreyer's at least in fourth, possibly third. Yeah, just keep an eye on that leaderboard, though, and see these uh, one scores from other bowlers are in, who are a few of them also, you know, not as high as you would expect. Um, Gu may stay first or second place, or depending on what happens. Dreyer's in second with place. 151. Makes up 32 pins on Colton. That was off the side there for John, I believe, in his, his effort. Matheson to the top of the leaderboard. That's a six count, 115 in the eight. There's Wayne trying to capitalize on that strike, and he's Ooh. looks like to the left. Pretty favorable mix there. Maybe, maybe an eight. I think he has left a four, ten, a six, ten, I believe. That is an open. John eight out. Seven out, excuse me, 122 through the ninth. Costly frame. Yeah, and that just kind of erased, and he's got it. erased the advantage he set, him, set himself up with. Toby the end is down there marking in his tenth frame. 109 and a ball. That's not going to be enough. Is not good at all. Not the right time for that at all. Toby's going to try to save as many as he can here. Well, now he's looking at that puts him in a position that he's got to throw to 100. I mean, and he's just shot two again yeah. on the field. That's 111. Yeah. I mean, that almost is a must. I don't. I mean, you think you would think somebody's going to start to make a move here, but they all seem to be two steps forward and three steps back. The only people really making moves are the people that have finished twelve games in. Right. That one forty-eight average of Brian Vest is starting to look like a. I mean, I'm not saying he's going to win with 1776 but no, uh, gonna it's going to be a little, little bit a little bit more than he I expected and that's going to lead to him probably questioning himself even more with the amount of breaks that he let just let him go you know he did mention that he was having a little difficulty with his ankle he was having a little stability problem with one of his ankles so like well I think pain and so especially when he was like more so on the 10 pin he had a real difficult time going to the 10 pin well, 
about to make a move one more time. Everyone is going to get home to their final pair. We are two games away, 20 boxes away, determining a winner of the 93rd Eastern. I guess the theme of the day right now would be who wants it. I mean, does anybody yeah. want it? I think that if, if anything from the previous games is the story, um, don't be in first. Don't yeah, do not. Yeah, don't, don't, take <laughs> don't take the lead. Don't take the lead. Be like third. Yeah, like, throw a big come game. from behind. Although, you know, maybe uh, the tortoise in the hair, Steve Dreyer, steady, steady as she goes. He hasn't really had a game under much under 135. Lowest game is a 138. Pretty good bowling. Yeah. And his highest game is that 181, but everything else is right there around that 45 to 50 mark. I'm imagining, by the way, that uh, Nick Harmel not doing too well because too well, he has disappeared from yeah, our screen. And I think that's where Walt Brooks came in. Let's just see uh, John Biederman on the uh, top 20 board. Talking about James oh, Simon. D'Antonis with a strike there. John D'Antonis. Yep. So, nothing nothing really standing out here. Um, no. D'Antonis can, can get to 50 with another one. but Everybody just trying to minimize damage, it feels like. Even Johnny Wilson with a 135. He's going he's gonna to fall off of that piece a little bit more. John's on one strike. Today, right? John is on one strike. That's correct, yeah. So he's looking at 140 with Wood if he gets another one, which he has just cut the middle. So now it's going to be a struggle to get the 140. Yep. This is a uh, disappointing finish here for John. He was really 83 in the fifth. I mean, he does get a few more pins out of that. He was plus 33, and he ended up only plus 30. Nine, I think. Well, Wayne Matheson score not put in yet because he has thirty-eight. Not finished. Well, Wayne he has. A, he's got an opportunity though. Wayne can pull it off still. Thirty-eight. Yeah. Yeah. Fifty-eight. One fifty-eight is the highest mark. Twenty out at one fifty-eight, and Steve Dreyer with one fifty-one. Look where Dreyer is. Second place, so only he's all the way up to second. Only so Wayne, no 150 averages left on the board, right? And I am stunned to be saying that it's crazy. Ryan Green behind me, unbelievable. We had seven 900s to start this shift, we're down to including a 944. Yeah, and the guy who had 944 is averaging 147. Could not have predicted this. Your leader after six games, John D'Antonis, is averaging 131 today. Wow. 131. And he's... Nobody's blowing him up, though. Right, and he's still in this. In part because of the 944, but... Nobody is running away with it. And I, I think Pat's, uh, Pat's thought there about who wants it. Like, I think that's what yeah, it is here. We I, got I, two I games. I, and just, I would not want to be in first because no one has held on to first. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't want to be. I think, I think you have to think now. Drag, yeah. Yeah. There's Wayne on one. Heavy in that one two pocket. It's got the three pin, it looks like. Yeah, it's predictable, whatever. Happy birthday. This is a big mark for Wayne. Bir birthday boy. Billy Thomas just gave us a wave at the booth. I'm a big ball for Wayne. This is a single, looks like it's the three pin. Nice. 
and he misses it. Wow, so wow. many, so many singles have been missed by so However, many he can get wood here. Bowlers. He can get wood here for 147. Which is gonna, it's right gonna, there, right? about a good enough. Hang on to that first position, right? Um, Barely. I don't know. He, he would shoot 47. He made it. He would. He would by six, and so now by five. So Dreyer's only five pins off the lead. Dreyer is Steve Dreyer. Uh, it is, uh, let's slow, slow and steady, man. Slow and steady. You would think right now, if Dreyer puts together another couple of 150s, he's going to be in position. Yeah, I mean, nobody's lighting it up. If you, if you were picking one and you were just looking at today's performance, it's, it's probably Steve, right? No, I mean, as far I as would say consistency. Right now he's God's own favorite. Yeah. And he hasn't had any big games, which means he Not might yet. still have him he in, might have one in left his in back him. pocket. Yeah. He's okay. basically doing the same thing he did yesterday, except yesterday he had a 126. I think. I, I really think everybody in the top 12 has a realistic <laughs> shot at this. <laughs> Including Brian Best. And Brian Ewing. And... <laughs> yeah. And moving up, moving forth and with a bullet. <laughs> Tell him he's got to come back and collect his money. Just wrapped up here. Billy Thomas with his lowest game of the block, it looks like. I, I do just want to point out, though, that in terms of average pace, we have a couple people that have already bowled 12 games, but right now the difference between, for those who have bowled 10 games, the difference between first place and 12th place, 36 pins. That's crazy. Oh, my goodness. That's so gettable. Yeah, it's so gettable. Yep. One game, just erase that. A ball game, and you're there. Yeah. It's just who can shoot a 180. Yeah. I don't know. There's there's so much caliber out there. So I know. much caliber out there that's throwing okay scores. It's yeah, just, it's really almost jarring. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but. It's exciting, but in its own unique and different sucky way. Yeah. I mean, well. I think this morning we had, to my knowledge, I think we had at least three games higher than anything anybody's thrown on this ship. That, yeah. and, that, and I wasn't really able to follow too much. I think Bolton's gotten the only game in the 180s. Right, because I know there was an 84 and 80, 94. I think there was a 96 this morning, right? Kyle Bull had a 196. Oh, in this, in this ship, right. Four bagger. Well, five in a row. Well, five, five. Yeah, and that's a shame because he and I bet a Taco Bell meal on who was going to bowl better because I was four pins ahead of him. <laughs> and, uh, and, then, and, then, and then not so much. And then not anymore. <laughs> so uh, I owe him a meal. Thankfully, he was a little lighter than I did. Okay. So, not too bad. Colton and Steve opening up with a strike and a spare. Colton making an attempt at that spare. I think it was a four, seven, eight. Picked off the four, top the four through. Birthday boy Billy Thomas right there. Picking up his 10 pin for a spare. With the birthday ball. Yeah, we're, we're playing for a finish here. Even going go back first to eighth. I'm sorry, first to seventh, because that's a 10 game total. First to seventh is nothing apart. 32 <laughs> pins. <laughs> Sorry, 22. 22 pins. That's, that's just amazing. First to 12th 
history. Yeah, so it's really anybody's anybody can take this. Cole Antonis in 13th is 45 back. Right. And he's a, he's like we, we talked about it. He's a 200 game away from being right back in the middle of it. I mean, that's and it's not even that it's close. I'm glad it's close, but it's just it's, I didn't yeah, it's not not this place. way. Right. I thought it was going to be close, like 155 I, average. I did not think we were overestimating. No, I mean, I considering how they bowled yesterday. I thought I was being very fair on my estimate. Right. Billy Thomas must have had a tough game there. He's dropped all the way to 20th. Yeah, he had a rough, rough game. Well, Kobe's made his way down to the far left end of the building. And he's about to throw his first ball, I believe, on his 11th game. Yep. Getting up on lane two right now. Started out with a good one. He goes in there for a nine drop. It's like a five pin. He's been staring at that a couple times today, hasn't he? Slowly making his way. Yeah, I just feet, by the way, I just saw that knee. He is all the way up to seventh. He is twenty-two back. He said uh, eleven hundred. He is actually the one bowling well, but again, no big score. Right, and again, he thought he needed eleven hundred. He doesn't. No, he's one fifty-nine, one fifty-eight, one sixty-four, one fifty-seven. So that's uh, you know, for him, that's ten pins above his average, roughly. I mean, you know, shooting six twenty-eight. Yeah. So here he is. He's averaging, thinking, he's averaging 157. Thinking he needed a, a 1100, and he's going to be able to get there with less than a thousand if it, if yeah. if it keeps going the way it's going. We have to get some. Of course, he has he has won this tournament. Back in uh, 2011, that was a year after um, Walt Brooks, his 2010 winner. I um, I had, I had the pleasure, if you will, of bowling with Walt during that uh, Eastern, and uh, it was uh, it was an experience, but it felt good to you know somebody to, to see somebody bowl that you know he he was I say only he was 1834. Okay, that's, yeah, that's yeah. that might win today. Yep. Very well might win today. In fact, um, for Wayne Matheson, who's the current leader, to get to 1844, he would need 354. To so, him. yeah, so 1834 is, uh, is a, I, I think. Wayne needs to average 155 his last two just to hit 1800. That's amazing. 1900, forget it. No, I think that's, that's off gone. the board, yeah. The last two years' winners have been over 1900, and uh, that doesn't look like it's going to happen. And that's what I had I kind of said. You know, I kind of caught it yesterday. It was a little tougher this year. Well, I I, I think you're seeing a lot of um, a lot of wide splits. I mean, I'm, I'm, and listen, Brian admitted this morning that when he got some splits, he didn't feel like he threw the ball well. Um, I know some of these guys coming off the lanes. Like I talked to Jesse Deach yesterday a couple of times, and he just said, "No, I I, I didn't. It wasn't a good ball." And right. you know they know you, no, you we, know you we, know we know but yeah. there's sometimes that down down south there's iffy balls that we get away with right well it seems like that's what's been happening don't get away with it. right but you know the, the man who's making the biggest run so far today Steve Dreyer throws that comfortable ball that smooth ball mm -hmm. Dreyer slow to start yep right now thirty six in the third. So at this point, we're down to um, less than 20, 17, 8, 16, 17 boxes. And um, we are definitely needing someone to make a move here.
Colton Hugh and Steve Dreyer in side-by-side -side pairs. We have John D'Antonis and Colby D'Antonis separated by about two lanes. Two pairs, right? Yeah. Two pairs. It's like two, two pairs, pairs of lanes. Matheson's down there in the same. It's all happening down there in lanes one through ten right now. Yeah. We got Dreyer at nine and ten, but he is the highest lane number that's in contention. Correct. Everybody up past us, we know. But we're claiming that. We're, we're claiming that Bernie Hipkins isn't going to throw 280 right now. Well, that, right. Because he, he's not. He, he can't. Correct. <laughs> and we're also claiming that there's 12 bowlers, we think, eligible right now to, to pop into the picture. They're all, they're all basically in the same. The yep, they're all basically down the same area. Colin Dunnick, no mark yet in the game, but it's early. Got 18. Johnny Wilson, nine box, 10 box spare. Johnny Wilson still on the board in 11. 34 back. Wow. And it's over. An absolute bomb. <laughs> Give me that strike. Wow. That was uh, about as good as they come right there. I, I saw that he was bowling off the wrong he way. He's a wrong foot bowler. He would tell you it's the right foot. Well, it is actually it's, the right it's foot. It's the right foot, but it's not the correct foot. Okay, here's John D'Antonis on lane six. Meanwhile, Wayne Matson on lane three. Now in the same picture, John blows it up for eight. And so does Wayne. Similar ball, similar pin action, same, same lead. result. Yep. Uh, that's an unlucky pick there for John D'Antonis. He's huffing and puffing. He knows he's, he's put himself in a position where he needs a yeah. much bigger game than he, he he just hasn't strung him together. Wayne did there on his oh, good start for Colby, by the way, on one and two. He has spare nine spare strike. Well, that's what he needs to do right now is string them all together as much as they can. As I said, if he can find a groove on that pair, they can blow up in a hurry. Here's Dryer. Shoot. Oh, what is that? Shooting at the five, six, seven. Ah, it's an inverted triangle. of our heavy hitters up at the moment. Found that last week it was all the either everybody we needed to watch was bowling at the same time or not bowling at all. You know, just, we've got them all clustered down on one end. They're so. all going to be up at the same time, aren't Correct. they? Correct. 
keep it easy for us. Colin uh, ripped the middle on his first ball and could not slide that over. So he's off to a little bit of a rough start here. Colin is over there on three and four. And yeah, Colin, no mark so far in the game. 37 through the court. See if we can get a shot of Wayne Matheson here on three and four. There it is. Wayne Matheson riding it open. John D'Antonio is going to be coming up right next to him. Oh, right through the middle. He's off the side. Break seven. Oh, got away with it, I guess. Yeah, he did. One, three, six. All right. Here's Steve Dreyer shooting what looks to be the head pin on lane 10. He's got it. Spare for Dreyer. You need the, the spare that's closest to the ball that you, when you throw it. Close so he, range. He needed, uh, he needed to get something going. What Wayne does here on the three pinner. He picks it. He knew it. Letting them bowl the whole frame. I, and I, I'm okay with this. But letting them bowl the whole frame. Well, I, me personally, I'm from the South. I don't, I don't. This time, this time of, the, of the tournament, I don't mind. You know, today when I knew. And look, and John said, good things come to those who wait. Right. Let me mash that off the deck real quick. Well, the thing is, you know, it, we bowled at a good pace this morning. And in my humble opinion, the only thing ball for ball is good for us to keep the pace up. And as long as the pace is good, I don't care if you go ball for ball. So there were times when Brian was up and he was on a spare break and I just yielded because he was throwing big numbers and I wasn't. So sure. I'm not going to go jumping in front of somebody no. just to, for the let sake him, of. Yeah, let him put, oh, well, I have to keep the pace because they stay Look, I could see it if we were if we were dragging. But no, we were yeah. three, four boxes ahead of the group in front of us. So right. I, I wasn't worried about it. And at this point, like you said, at this point in the tournament, who cares? These guys are all gonna. These guys are all gonna drive home, a lot further yeah, than I did. It's on them. And if they take their time, they take their time. Here are your past winners again. Look at the top five and look at your recent champions. Uh, Wayne Matheson, the only one up there in the standings who has not won the Eastern. See Colin. See uh, Colin Dunnick in 2011. Yeah. I mean, they're all up there. John Steve Dreyer. Steve Dreyer. Multiple times in the uh, won it in 2008. There's your standings. I mean, you look at your top five. I mean, the best now in the top four. And and possibly moving up. There's no, there's no way, right? Like you actually. Well, I wouldn't say there's no way. Colton, Colton Goose having a decent game right here. Well, a, a collapse, right? Yeah, a, three more than one bowler, right? Three yeah. bowlers would all have to. I think, but the fact that he's made it this high up is is remarkable, to say the least. And, Holding a nice 20 box there. 104 through the seventh. Spare up. And Antonis heavy. Almost strike three for five. Well, I I can guarantee you, having only bowled with Brian just this weekend, he is going to hold himself solely responsible for that. I, well, I think, oh my he, goodness. He was going to be a little disappointed before. Now he's going to be kicking himself. <laughs> yeah. Because he is a couple of breaks. So if he yeah. if he finishes at 1800, there is serious pressure on them right absolutely now. absolutely like serious pressure and that's what i said when you're in that shift three position you kind of you, put you can set the tone up. you set the tone for how this goes sure so he's thinking i mean i can tell you right now just having talked to him he's thinking he left 60 or 70 pins out there no, so take a third of those yeah, he holds half of that sure you know he shoots 18 -0. yep and he's putting him then he's then he's got these guys thinking at this point, yeah. maybe not when they first walked in, but by this point in the, the day, they're thinking about it now. Yeah, this Matheson is Matheson on the side. This is not the tournament where somebody just ran away with it with big scores. No, it's no. just who missed, who 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 made He's most right. of their shots. Yeah, yeah right. Who missed less. Yeah. Who made the highest percentage of their uh, opportunities? Yeah, I mean, no, you know, no huge games. Uh, been a, anybody on this leaderboard? I mean, just, been a few strings of strikes, but nothing ridiculous, nothing crazy. Nice shot yes. by Wayne Matheson, clean yes. on the one three eight. Spare it up in the fifth, and he needed that. Steve Dreyer, a tough game here. He's only six over his box. This is the first game of his tournament where he's really struggling. Struggling. Well, the only the lowest game he had yesterday was one twenty six. He is six over his box with two marks. Wow. 
Well, we saw that ridiculous leave he had on one ball, so we don't know what happened there. But Colin Dunnick is coming up again. Colin did respond with a strike in the fifth. He's looking to throw a double. Yeah, he's going to need to catch a double there. Not too many marks on the board at the moment either. Um, well, there's four on the board out of seven. So we're not tracking a score down there at the moment, but Colby Giantonis down on one and two. Uh, still on the leaderboard here, but I, he's got 76 working in the fifth. Keeping an eye on that just in case he's, you know, we should add him back to that scoreboard. Sure. Again, remember, he wasn't too far. He's all the way down there in 13th, but he's 45 back. So, you know, he throws a big game. Yep. We'll, we'll, we'll keep him in the mix. Colton throws a strike over there. Strike in the ninth? Strike in the ninth. So he's plus 44 and a hit. Yeah, he Colton's in Colton's in a dream spot right now. Yeah. The dryer is struggling, and Matheson doesn't have a lot yet. Right. I think Colton is in a great position right now that he's got a ball in hand for a hundred and set possibly hundred and seventy game. He can more importantly, he's got about a three or four blocks advantage in he's terms of pace. Correct. Yeah, it's just almost like stunning that every one of these bowlers Come back found up. a game like one, what happened? One hundred five, mm, one ten, right. one fifteen. Yeah. Colton, I think, is maybe 120 yeah, was the one bottom. 117, I believe. 17, yeah. yeah. I mean, thank you. Wonder, by the way. Remind me what Colby's first game was. 104 oh, was Colby's yeah. first game. And then. Uh, Imagine if he shoots 140. Colton's, Colton's low game was 119. And 36 to that score, and Colby is 1481, tied for third, nine back on the lead. There you go. That first game one is game. the difference maker right now. And uh, John on lane five, five pin. Tell you what. Ryan Vest shot a 109 on both shifts. Yeah. And either of those games is contending for the championship. Either of those games is a 140. He's 18 something. Here for John D'Antonis. 96 plus in the seventh. Here comes Wayne Matheson. Wayne on a spare in the fifth. Six over his box at the moment. Yeah, we're really starting to. Get down to the nitty gritty. The last hour here and five going box, for Wayne. box by box. Or is it a five? I think it's, it's a, a five ten. ten. Yeah. Ouch. There's another. There's a five seven right next door. That was Colin Dunnick. Eight off the deck for Colton Goo. Five eight. Make him a pair wow. though. That was clean. So Colton just a single for Colin. By the way. Oh, Wayne Matheson makes the spare. Wow, nice. And Dunnick did not leave the five pin. He got the extra really kick. He left the single. All right, this is Colton at the two player. It's a big shot. He picks it. Oh, you he heard that. What a critical moment right critical. there. He goes one forty three through the ninth with Woody's one fifty three. One fifty two. One fifty two. He misses no one fifty two. Only one fifty two for Colton. So that's gonna it's good his average is gonna go up slightly. Yes, but not as much as they could have gone. Oh, he had a big chance there. And Wayne is really still trying to make something out of this game. Grind it out. Yeah. That was great. He just converted the five ten for a spare there, so keep himself alive. Steve Dreyer continues to struggle with his eleventh game. Just an inopportune time. He's trying to convert a single here. Eighty six through eight. He's all over the three pin. So he covers that single. Even still, at best case, he's looking at 130. Yeah, games. it's not going to do it. There's John D'Antonis. Oh, my goodness. He just left the 8 9. Yeah, clean as heck. That was a clean. That's horrifically bad. Ball. Yeah. Among the splits that you see on a pretty regular basis with head pin hits, the 8 9 is not one of them. No. Extremely rare and extremely brutal when it happens. John takes the win. 
Toby, I believe, was bidding for a 20 box down there and just left a five pin on lane. Toby having a good game down there. He did give himself an out shot in the dark chance at this. That was a 5-10, I believe, from Toby. Actually, he's going to throw. That's why his reaction was so strong. Toby takes a 10 out. So it looks to me at this point in the game that Brian Vest is going to move himself into third place. Very minimum. Oh, yeah. Maybe, well, Dreyer, maybe second. Dreyer is going to shoot 136 at the most. Right. He's going to – oh, absolutely. He already moved Brian up. Brian third. And depending on how Matheson finishes, uh, he could end up <laughs> finding himself up in second, second place going into the final game. And he's, the thing is, he's got two 148s in the bank. He's a 48.5, is Colton Goof. I know. So Colton needs 144 to, to get past. Yeah, so he's got to have a decent game. I mean, that's not happening. Shouldn't be anything out of the range of possibility, but it's still it's, it's a little yeah, pressure there. Game. That's a pressure you game. Shoot 144 to get by him. Yeah. Colby D'Antonis down on one and two, 113 in the seventh. So plus, plus on open, uh, yeah. 43 on an open. Yep. I, I mean, this is going to be really interesting now to see where Colby ends up. Is to see Dreyer where is going to go down below Vest, even if he strikes out. It's a question of what Wayne Matheson does. Right. So. Yeah, Wayne getting up on. So for Wayne to go past Brian, he needs to be at sixteen twenty nine, which would be a one thirty nine game. He's which not, he is currently not on pace to not do. there yet. Right. So he's got room. If Wayne is under one thirty eight, Brian Vest is in second. Unbelievable. I, Unbelievable. And, and he's four back of Colt. <laughs> I just. No hey, speech for that. I, oh, I and Wayne it. gets a strike there on that. That's, big, That's a big fill. That was a huge he's conversion and then a big, big fill. Right on the back of the 510, he bombs it in there. Yeah, talk about taking advantage of that. That spare, difficult yeah. conversion on that 510. That's a great way to follow up. Is John D'Antonis in the ninth? Solid. Right in there, oh, come and on. it's a nine ten. He goes from the eight real. nine to the nine oh, ten. Yeah. Holy! Did he get a kick? Did he get an extra one? No, he didn't. Oh, that is horrible. That is a horrendous back to back break. He's just simply not used to seeing those breaks and, here. And I'll be honest with you, if you're wondering why they're not averaging 150 to win, that would be why. There's yeah. one reason. <laughs> that right there. I think even if you're not quite that sharp on your first, second ball, like, you know, those those are just. Yeah. Well, between. Bad spare shooting, there's nothing to make there. Right. But between the missed singles and the bad breaks on seemingly decent first balls, that, uh, that's really all it takes to drop that average from 55 right. down to 50 or and less. The, and the bad breaks scattered inside of a game really crush momentum, you know, kill right. momentum. Well, and back it, to back balls like that. Yeah. It, they, they really like so dryer with a one you to worry a little bit more when you're up there with your spare opportunities and they're coming you know less frequently so unfortunately Steve dryer picked the worst possible time to shoot a hundred love that 12 out there and he's gone all the way down to 12th place. 12th place and uh we see Brian vest in third and uh <laughs> might go up another he, spot. he could but uh Wayne seems to be right in the ship here so yeah Bolton's 152. Wayne still needs another mark Still needs another mark. Sure. Yeah, Colton's 152 is just looking Solid. fantastic right now. Yeah. Well, what it could have been. Yeah. Well, yeah. Right. Steel nine up here, all over it, Hoss. Look at that good ball there from Colin Dunnick. What was that? Yeah, Colin, uh, not sure what that was for the it mark. Was, it was a strike. strike. It was a strike on spare. No, I don't believe so. No, he was on an open. He was on yeah. an open. So strike on the open. 
and Colin Chu has been bowling all of this. He's only just, plus five. He's only five over the box right now. But I think he's having the game that everybody seems to have had. It seems yeah. to have jumped up and bit everybody. Yeah. You definitely caught the tension down there. You can hear it. It's. Well, they, I think everybody knows how close it is. They know. You know there's going to be people coming down here. They're, they're yeah. Gonna, they're going to be peeking. Colton's in at second right now through his 11th game. We're waiting to see how Wayne Matheson finishes up his game. He's getting up there on lane four, lane four filling a strike. This, this is a big ball here. This is for a double. And Got he it. did it. Big, big, big double for Wayne Matheson. Great that ball. That is going to keep him in the lead. It looks like we might be getting ready for an answer shortly here. Name the only bowlers who have competed in the first 28 runnings of the United States Classic, the Eastern Classic, and the National Tournament. That's our question for the shift. Put your answers in the comments. There it is. Nick Tronsky's participation streaks include 28 straight entries in the U.S. Classic and Eastern Classic from 1931 to 1958 and 31 straight entries in the national tournament from 1928 to 1961. That answers the question as to whether or not it was a legend. Yeah, it might have been. Yeah. Well, I knew that a lot of the book was written about Nick Chomsky. So <laughs> that, was he, the hint, um, that was the hint from Mark Davis that gave the answer away. He bowled with Tony Barber way back. So with that double, Wayne Matheson puts himself in position A. Puts him in brilliant shape. I believe that's John closing out his 10th. There. Yeah, he's, he's just frustrated as heck on this game. Don't, what do you got to do? He's thinking, what do you got to do? Yeah. Yes, it's fair. It's fair. He's 134 to ball to go. What, this could have been a monster game with the ball he threw, but he just got at least three terrible breaks. 8 9 and a 9 10 back to back. And there's a rip. And that's through the middle. Yep. Five. Yeah. Yeah, he's just totally. Pulled the break on the end of that game there. Fortunately for him, he's got to stay on that pair. <laughs> he's probably not happy about that. Still a good from Colin Dunnick here. He's not, not dead yet. Having a tough game here, but he's currently sitting in fifth. And on a strike. And on a strike. He's going to need a multiple strike in here. It is. There's the double. He caught the double. All right. That keeps him alive. That's not, oh, that's brilliant. No, no, that no. That's just that's like he's not, the nail's not punched in. No. One thing we hadn't noticed, we haven't, we haven't updated Colton Goose score in a minute. Steve Dreyer either. They are waiting for the other pairs. Yeah, they, they want to, they want to, yeah. They want to all finish at the same time. And I, I I can yeah, respect they want a photo finish. Don't we I can all? respect I, it. I think we I think we want a photo finish. All right, here's Wayne Matheson. Remember the big double he threw. This is for the triple huge, in lane huge three. Ball. Here we go. That's the tree. That's huge from Matheson. Monster. Huge. Really Your clutch. Leader. Clutch moment there. And yeah, you know. Probably feeling some other bowlers trying to catch catch up with him, and this turns a triple here. That is your leader after ten dropping a triple in the seventh, eighth, ninth. Just when he needed it. Exactly right on time. One fourteen through the seventh, double up eighth and ninth. You can't underestimate how big that is. That's the tournament right there. That could be a tournament winning triple for Wayne. 
with he's, an opportunity for a fourth. And he's truly he's still counting. Truly the first bowler we've seen in this shift that in a position where he needed one, did it. Like seemed like everybody else got to that point, like we were saying, don't be in the lead. Well, Wayne said, I'll be in the lead. And and under the circumstances, if he were to take this off the sheet for a two hundred game, oh write him the check. Yeah, just I don't think anybody's coming back from that. No, write him the check. And as much as John D'Antonis doesn't want to be on the pair he's on, I'm sure Wayne says, let me stick around here for a little bit. Yeah, now they get the they get the, the advantage here that they stay on the pair. I really Wayne, love Wayne doesn't want to go anywhere right no, now. I love that aspect of this tournament. I think it's kind of cool. The way it, you finish two games on one pair, I think it's really cool. I just checked in on Colby down there. Colby D'Antonis finished game 11 with 159. It's not a bad score. But That's I'll say not quite, not quite a little on the, bit. Don't have that updated in the leaderboard just yet. But not we'll good get enough. That. But good, a good score, but not not what he needed after that one. No, one minute, one twelve. Massive. Yeah, and if we're talking about first place here, I mean Wayne's basically gonna, you know, neutralize a game like that. So picture in picture. We have a little split screen action for you here. And there's Colby's game is in. He has moved up to the tenth position with that 159, averaging 145.8. It's not it's not totally out of reach. Colby's a big big shooter, and we've seen just about everybody have a really out of character game somewhere in this set. By the way, based on the fact that we've seen no changes in the last few games. Yes, we could congratulate uh, Mike Nicholson and um, Bobby Dunnick. Bobby, Bobby Dunnick, Dunnick, B and C, on winning the B and C divisions of the Eastern Classic. Congratulations, guys! My uh, my bowling partner on Monday nights is that Charwood Scott Charwood finished a yep. close second place in that. He's now nine pins back. Nine wow. pins out of C. Yeah. Also fifth position in the B division for Charwood. Correct. Yeah, yep. he had a nice tournament. All right, this is what we want to see here. This is four times. Tenth frame, Wayne Matheson going for the four timer, and that was a spare, I believe. For Colin Dunnick, no, it's a ten box, one thirty-one. Here comes Matheson with a chance to really put some pressure on everyone. What do we think? Oh, I like it. He loved it. Oh, I like it. Oh, he got he it. Got the trip. Slow motion on the seven pin four bagger. Yeah. What I mean, ball was he tripped probably up. that was perfect ball. It was as good as any of them, if not better. Probably the best of the four and to get that trip at the end. The man. flair for the dramatic right there. And if he throws another one, sign the check. Yeah. So the one name on the leaderboard that wasn't on the flyer. Maybe it will be on can't next, say that next, next year, year maybe. maybe. Man, he's got to feel good about. Wow, what a what a strikes. strong. He's going to start this next game, game on the oh, same pair. No, what a and strong and finish if, to a game that was not looking that good. And if he throws another one right oh. here, hang on to the roof. Yeah. So 164, two hits working. Oh, I, I just can't believe that after all the score we the score or lack thereof we've seen. Now we get a full someone's bench. throwing it this good under the circumstances. Yeah. I mean, but this is this is what it takes to win the Eastern. None of those were none of those were light or sloppy or anything. Those are all no, bombs. All, absolutely, all right in there. He's waiting on the ball. He's got it now. Okay, ball in hand, looking for our second five bagger of the afternoon. Here we go for the five bagger. Off, the, off side. the side of the head pin there. So seven drop. He'll take that and run. No 200. Yeah, perfectly good seven there. Can make the one, two, four for a 191. What a spot for that. 191 for Wayne Matheson in the 11th game. That is second highest game we've seen on this shift. And one highest, of the highest. it's the highest game out of anyone that's been in contention. contention. Yeah. yeah. And at, at the moment that he needed, you know, he probably needed it most, right? In the lead, but needing to needing to distance himself a little bit. 
and look at that. He is 48 pins. Clear. Yep. Good luck. Yeah, that's uh that's a I mean, I bowl handicap matches, but you give somebody 48 pins and you forget about it. You got to hope for a train wreck on one side and a miracle on the other. Yeah. But if you're, you know, if you're no, late, you're not you gonna, gotta, no, you're not going to. Colton has just fired his first frame. You gave, gave, yourself, start open. gave yourself some breathing room here, but right. you got to keep your foot on the gas. Well, he's as Nick was saying earlier, he's the first leader of the day, really, that responded when he had the lead. Yeah, I think he's the first person in three or four games to actually hold the lead. After, yeah. All right, updated leaderboard. It's all in now. It paints the picture. Get the scoreboard up there shortly. I think so, we're watching two bowlers. What's the goo? Uh, what's uh, Matheson's average at this? Is it 52.8? 52. 52. Right. So he's, he's above that golden number. Yeah, 119 to get that 1,800. Colton Goo needs 144, I believe is the number we came up with, right? He needs 144 to get, to get past, past Brian Vest. Right, who's, who could easily move into second, second place in this place. tournament. The other bowler that could catch Brian Vest is all the way down in seventh, John D'Antonis. John D'Antonis would need to fire 167. Wow. So Brian Vest, Vest is Vest looking like a great shape to run her up. A great shape for at least third. Yeah, absolutely. This is going to be kept up. It's pretty much down to a two horse race. John D'Antonis is behind Wayne Matheson by 71. Could you explain that to the folks at home? Basically, what I'm getting told from Billy Thomas is that his birthday is today, but our current leader in the tournament, Wayne Matheson, his birthday is tomorrow. Wow. And it's going to be an early birthday present. Let's see how he starts out the final game. Yeah, he may wake up on his birthday, the 2023 Eastern champion. We're 10 boxes away. Eight drop to start. Fair for Wayne Matheson. So his, Colton has started out with two wood boxes. He's 19 yep. through two. With every open <clears throat> from Colton Goo, Wayne Matheson's task becomes that much simpler. Keep the ball in the lane pretty much. Wayne just has to keep the ball in front of him and get wood. The pressure is squarely on Colton and John to throw multiple strikes. Just talked to uh, Billy Thomas, and he uh, was relaying a story to me that not only is it Billy Thomas's birthday today, tomorrow is Wayne Matheson's birthday, and they've talked about this in the past, that eventually they're both going to win this tournament because it always falls on their birthday weekend, and 
there's a possibility that that could come true today. Billy has already got one in the bank, and Wayne is looking like the clear-cut favorite right now. I can tell you next month the Johnson's Pro Tour falls on my birthday weekend. It, my birthday is that Friday, and uh, while I'm hoping I would win, I'm just hoping I make the cut. <laughs> you just want to bowl on Sunday. I just want to bowl on Sunday. That is a mark for Colton Goo. That's a strike for Colton Goo. And a strike. He's going to need them. Needs multiples. Another big difference between this tournament and a pro tour, uh, you know, I think most people that bowl in, bowl in a pro tour are just thrilled to be able to bowl on Sunday. Just that's, that's like certainly task number one. Here, it's like you got two different weekends. I mean, somebody could put up a number that it's is so untouchable yeah. in weekend one, and you come here in second weekend, but that doesn't happen very often. It's strange how it just never happens. Yeah. It could happen, but it just doesn't seem to happen. Got a spare fill coming here for Wayne Matheson. Getting up now on lane three. No, nothing but hammers on this lane for about the last 10 minutes. That is not quite a hammer. No. I believe that is a 710. I think that's the goalposts. Heard somebody earlier requesting some barbells so they could roll them down and make the 710. So Matheson trying to clear up the wood here to complete the 10 box. Every stick right now. And that one does not cooperate. So he's at 27 through 2, increasing his lead over Goo, but Goo is on a strike. Cole Here's filling a strike. Oh, it's oh. another 710. Oh, that's three I've seen on Walt Brooks left it, Wayne Matheson left it, and now Colton Gould. Yeah, it's the it. wrong time to be leaving it. Not that he had any control over wow. the matter, but looks like a better ball than that. Maybe a nine drop, but 710 instead. It'd be, be something if he could pull this off. Well, I've seen it made this weekend, but not there. seeing anything huge down there yet from anyone else that might have been in contention, such as Kobe or John. And they really are the only ones left in contention. At this point in Colton's game, we got to start <clears throat> thinking about that 144, which would... Yeah, you got to worry about getting second. Second. There's, I believe, a $500 difference. Second place is in, in peril. I think it's 2,100, 1,500. There's a $500 difference right. between 144. Yeah, and not 144. Right. And 142. Yep. A $500 difference. Oh, you got there before you did. I'm on 
We got Wayne Matheson coming up now on the right lane, on the left side of your screen. Not a critical ball here, but anytime he throws a mark in this game, he's going to put a, just another nail yep, in the just, coffin. It's another, another turning of the screw. Yeah. All right, here comes Wayne. Right in there. Strike. Oh, there he is. You can almost say it now, Nick. It's getting closer and closer by the minute. One more of those, and uh, Colton's task is going to become almost impossible. And he rips off the side, but catches. No, he did not catch a break. Not at all. He left the zigzag. Yeah, it's a zigzag back there. Four, five, seven, eight. Yep. The inverted V plus one. You got the ball strength here to knock it off the wall. Nope. Not if you don't hit any of them. So every box that goes by, if uh, if I had told Brian Vest when he headed out on the road today that he was going to come in second, he would have laughed in my face. I mean, now <laughs> second is looking good. Except again, look look how close it's going to be for you know. I know. For, for possibly of being in first. It's unbelievable. Like if Wayne were to have a bad game, shoot like 120. That's yeah. 1801. Right. 25 Ryan pins. 25. 25 pins. I got a feeling Wayne's not going to have that game. No. I think he'll put a good game on the end. But Colton again, quickly running out of frames. And he's only plus five, so. Johnny Antonis actually has yet to mark in this game. Yeah, he's struggling. Just made a spare there, but that takes him out of a, any possible backdoor yeah. victory. Yeah. Walt Brooks is actually crept back. Yeah, he had a nice he had a nice day today. He wasn't on the board. He crept back up into 13. Yeah, he wasn't on the board when we started, and he's moved his way up. James Simon has finally put his name back on the board. Our executive producer and uh, author has uh, made a jump from 10th place up to 5th place. Yes. All right, here's Wayne Matheson for the double. Off the side, for 7. Let's see if he can bring it in. One, two, four for Wayne. I say if he runs this down, we can call it a day. You think so? I think he's so. He's got it. Big spare for Wayne. I mean, he's up 48 pins in the tournament, and he's now 19 more, possibly, in the game. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a well over a – that's at least a 50-pin to 60-pin lead. Goo with the seven boxes. His hopes for second place are fading fast. Oh, yeah. And I think you can, you can call it now. I don't think it's a matter of who wins. I think it's a matter of who comes in second. Who comes in second now. So I think I'm going to make the official declaration right you now. You're going to. We're going to. I'm going to do it right now. The, the epitome of the announcer's jinx. Wayne Matheson <laughs> is your 2023 Eastern Duck Fan Classic champion. Happy birthday, brother. Happy early birthday, PG Chillin, as he's known down south. Come on. Is he like a DJ or something? No, PG Chillin because he lives in PG County. And he, oh, he chills, oh chill. he chills in PG Wayne County. Wayne Matheson is going to be your Eastern Classic champion. Oh, it there's looks... a good chance that from shift three, Brian Vest becomes your second place finisher. Yet to be determined, though. That, one's, a, still, that one's still up in the air. What a difference, you know, one game made here. 
you know, the, the four, after, the four strikes. Yeah. Not even the fourth. I think throwing the, the third. The, the third one was, was a championship. Massive. That was a championship strike right there. But it's again that when it mattered, there were four balls right he's, in the hole. He's the one that responded. Yeah. He's the one that broke out and got the big game. And you know, you gotta make good shots. You gotta throw the big game to win the Eastern, and he well, did it. Everybody else was, everyone, everyone in contention was limping in, here and there, you know, and then he just took advantage of the situation and, and with a monster 191 game. And he, I mean, he doesn't have it yet, but I mean, might be our only bowler above 1800. Oh, he's going to go over 18, I believe. He's, he only needed a 119. Plus he's 19. one more mark. He doesn't even need another mark. He can wood out. Colton See is, what? I think that 1800 is out of range for him at this point. Even considering uh, some some strikes on oh, the he, end, I guess it's possible. But it goes 182 if he strikes out. That's it. Uh, that ain't it. That's not going to happen. Boy, I think we're going to have some fun when this is over, comparing this to other years. This is just so so different than anything we've seen. This will be a good one to recall next year. Yeah. Um, and I will I will hope that next year the winning number from this year will not be the metric. And in fact, if we could if we could flash up the previous winners from the last twelve years in terms of what the winning score was, I want to see where he's going to rank in terms of the recent years. Thank you, there it is. Mr. Magical Director. <laughs> um eighteen oh seven could be our winning number. Yeah, he is not uh Eight could be also the 18, um, 33 is probably not going to be touched. So, I mean, we're looking 18, low 1800 is going to win this tournament. And here comes Wayne. Yeah. Spare Phil in he can, the fifth. He can cheer after this ball. He can cheer after that ball. That was crushed That's right in the one two pocket. Nine drop. Colton, by the way, co converted that 510. I did. Oh, I, nice saw, I saw that. Yeah. And another mark, just in case you weren't sure. So that's three marks in a row for Wayne. Pile it on, Wayne. You got to get yourself uh, in the mix on that. The last 20 years here with your with your total score. But just adding to that lead, I mean. Holton, the only person to do it all day. Right. Holton may not actually end up. I mean, we'll see how this goes. But he may not end up in uh, second position. No, here. He's, he's way off um, the pace. He might not. Bill Fox might get by him too. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm for real. So he's two over his box at the moment. And with a hit, with a hit. Let's say he shoots 111. Doesn't mark again. Okay, shoots 111. At 111 onto that, he shoots. He shoots 1744. He would drop all the way down behind Chris Lout. He'd be behind Mike Nicholson. So we're not, yeah, that's incredible. I mean, we're not, Yeah. I guess we haven't been watching his game too closely since the moment we realized, all right, it's out of reach for him, but he's still, he's still got a lot he, to bowl for. Yeah. How far could he drop? And again, second and third is a $500 difference. I mean, you're, that's a big chunk. And somebody sitting at home right now is looking at possibly getting into the top five, four. Or that's big, big nine drop there for Colton. 81 through the seventh, spare break. Leads the five pin. Colton Goo with the spare in the eighth, plus 11 with a ball working. I think that's the exciting thing that we need to cover now. Wayne has won this tournament, but it's, it's where is Colton going to end up? He could drop as low as sixth, or he could actually drop as low as eighth, eighth or ninth. Yeah. I mean, 
I can tell you, John D'Antonis isn't throwing a big game at the moment, so that helps him a little bit. Right. But uh, four of the bowlers are already done. So Vest, Fox, Ewing, Louth are all in, all in, Nicholson are all done with their bowling. Here comes Wayne. Wayne going to fire in the sixth on a Sperry, 76 plus. I'm sure he can look down a couple of boards and know that he's in very good shape. Oh, yeah. All right, Wayne getting ready to fire on lane three next to Dunnick. Colin Dunnick, a uh, so so game. Right around 130, 140 pace at the moment. All right, here comes Wayne Matson on lane three. Meanwhile, Colton Goo going to be getting up on lane 10 simultaneously. Okay, here's Wayne. Hammer time. Five off the walls. Cool, calm, and collected as you'd like. Just adding to the lead, adding to the total. Here's Colton in the ninth. He's right there, seven pin. Big nine fill gives him 100 in the eighth. So Needs Colton one more hit. If Colton were to wood out for 120, that's 1753, which would get him ahead of Nicholson. Right. He really does need one one more mark, which is going to make a big difference in the payout. If he Huge. can get over 1766, he's in fourth. He's got it. On that one. Colton can get to 134. He's in fourth place. Yep. Sorry, he'd be in, excuse me, he'd be in third place. He right. would only drop one spot. Correct. But he needs to get to 44. 34, he gets third place. 144, he gets second place. Correct. To shoot 144, he's going to need a double. He needs a double. Can't get there without a double. Most he can get without a double is 40. He needs a mark. To get fourth, he needs a double for second. Yes, Brian Vest. Mark if you're for third, double for second. If Brian Vest is out there listening. Your your buddy that bowled with you all weekend is like, holy moly! I don't think he is in the house. Is he no, here? He's not in the house. I just took a look. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not seeing him, I think. but I'm sure he's watching at the moment. Walt Brooks having a medium game at the moment. Nothing special. I believe he just... He's around the 120 mark in the ninth. He did find his way onto the leaderboard in 13th place. Right before... Here comes Xander Beto on the right side of your picture. Leaves a triangle. Colton Goo now his brother. Firing at the baby split. Colton counted eight. And he missed the That's baby gonna, split. Gonna basically, he shoots 128. Going to put him in fifth place? It's 128 for Colton Goo. He shoots 17.61. Just got word that Colby, Colby's plus 40 in the eighth. 120 in the eighth. 
Next year. You see Colton Goo drop to fifth place. Just like that, down to fifth. Two pins ahead of Chris Lauk. So Brian Ewing, you've jumped to fourth. And Bill Fox is a third. Brian Vest is <laughs> second. I Kick, can't believe that. Kicking his butt probably in Jersey and right if it now. For that four bagger, it would have been a shot at winning. He could have won the tournament. Yeah, without the four bagger, he's got a chance to win it. I mean, it's unbelievable. Wayne just tried for a double there. I believe he left a single. Yep, just the four pin. All over it. Victory lap. Yeah, he's, he's just taking the victory lap now. On cruise control right now. That was a championship triple, though, in the oh. eighth, ninth, tenth. And then he just added one for good measure. Just, just fantastic. I mean, the, the back and forth we've seen this afternoon, the medium wow. scores, and then all of a sudden someone says, you know what, enough that, of this. About, about time somebody takes over, and uh, he did. Uh, and as you look at the leaderboard, he's the only bowler on this shift that survived, survived the top the four. Top seat. It's, the, top that's four? Like, Never yeah. mind top seat, top four. People were dropping, you know, like flies. Right. I mean, we watched this morning, Brandon Dominique dropped all the way to 17th, and right. he actually is now still in 17th. If you look at the top 10 now, there are five of the top 10 that bowled. Oh, my goodness. Not on this ship. And Steve Dreyer shot 116 in his final game to drop all the yeah. way to ninth. He was, he was second. He was three pins off the lead, he I was think. three pins off the lead. He ends up in 19th place. That's unbelievable. Colossal well, we said, money. you said that the 12 leaders were all within 30 or 40 pins. So you had to figure that there was a possibility of a tremendous amount of movement either way. And there was. And there certainly was. So now it's just a matter of Wayne closing out the final couple boxes here and, uh, Make it official. Make it an official score, which is now beginning to look a little bit more impressive than it. A little more respect. I think you know, we, we are. No, but we might be pushing 1840 or 50 at this point. 1833, I think, is the number we were looking at. That was the next closest. Yeah, the back in, um, I think that was, might have been Will Rigney. 1833 was Will Rigney. We could flash that up one more time. We had an 1807, I know, in 2020. And they were looking at an 1833 was 2016, Will Rigby. 1837, the year after that, Dan Richmond. Right. I don't think we're going to hit the 1860 and higher threshold. Unless he goes, you know, Big, four bagger again. You know, again. Right, like he did last game. Just a question of what the final score will be. But we can very confidently say it now that Wayne Matheson mathematically. Oh, no, he, he doesn't have to get another pin, I don't think. Mathematically, I mean, is your 93rd champion of the Eastern Classic. Absolutely. Now how about a nine more? 125 through the seventh. He's going to go out in style, too. He's going to go out with a big back, too. You can add Wayne Matheson to that banner. He will have get his a, own get, hanging over the raft. And get up in the... Next year. Gonna have to take a picture. And another mark. He's just rolling. He oh, it's a my, I mean, it's. It, I, I I'm not gonna he, say it. It's easier. I think he wants the pre bowl for next year. Yeah, he he's like, hey, let's go. Let's keep it going. And this is this is what he does on a Monday night. I watch him bowling league, and he just when, he, when that team, his team is himself. Uh, Brian Santiccio Weaver and yep. Phil Dix. Okay. And those guys, they can they light, can you light up. it up. They light you up. But they get in a rhythm and they just start banging on the yeah. Yeah. There They're you go. They're throwing strikes. They're throwing doubles. Yeah. Bernie Hipkins finished his tournament with a 132, good for 13th place. One of your uh, early picks today. Well, he, he made it, he made it, he, he made it interesting. He cashed. Okay. He cashed. They had Colton Goo. He made it interesting. Yeah. Um, I, I wonder who picked Wayne Matheson. Um, 
I don't know. If anyone picks up, I, 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 I mentioned him early because I, you know, I, I, I wasn't really familiar with him, but I saw that he was yeah. only a few pins behind John. So and I did that little impromptu interview with Mar different Maryland bowlers earlier on Duck Pins Forever's yes. Facebook page. And I believe I did chat with Lane for a second. I'm going to have to go back and see what he said. Oh, okay. Because uh, I, th I think I got him. Um, there you go. It was right down here. Sure. And he said, you know, hey, we'll see. We well, never know, right? Sure enough. Maybe I'll drop a four-bagger in the 11th game and yeah. seal the deal. He was like, it's going to suck until we get to that last yeah. couple boxes. I'm not going to give you any good footage until I'm, I need it. Yeah. He was in championship form when he needed to be. Wow. And they were all, like I said, they, they were nothing sloppy about any of those. Those are all clean strikes. Absolutely. With a slow trip out. Well, whatever. I mean, it, it, it's that's, right that's, that's the game, but it's right there. it wasn't like he threw the ball to side for. No, no like, not, not backdooring it no. and all that. Or ripping the middle. Saying Colby D'Antonis. His fourth place. Colby, 1762. Four pins behind Bill Fox. But he passes Ewing and Gu, who tied at 1761. So we've got a tie for fifth with Ewing and Gu. Colby D'Antonis in fourth. Bill Fox in third, Brian Vest in second, and Wayne Matheson, of course, is your champion. I don't know what John D'Antonis is shooting. It's not a lot, though. So he is going to shoot around 120. Um, so he will actually fall. He'll fall down the list. John D'Antonis is going to fall, fall down a little bit. He's looking at around 120 game here. Yeah. He, um, well, a lot of movement going on with just a minimal amount of pins. Walt, Walt Brooks is going to go past Walt, him as well. Walt Brooks might move into 10th place. He came onto the leaderboard. He threw a 192 in the third third game of this uh, afternoon. And um, once he got onto the leaderboard, he closed it out nicely. He averaged about 150 going out. He had a 905 set, which might be one of the highest sets of this shift. Yeah, it more than likely was. I would love to know what Wayne shot this block. Um, not well, he had a not nine. Know yet, but. He had a nine. Uh, I think he had a nine twenty something yesterday. So he was that high. Uh, yeah, he was. In, he was only a few pins behind John D'Antonio. He started the day in second, didn't he? Yes, Wayne did start in second place. Back. As another mark for Wayne Matheson. Yes. Is that a strike? See, uh, Wayne scores yesterday, 928. Yesterday. Yes, I, just, I just found that. So Wayne was in second, but it was a roller coaster to, oh, it, to get up to first. No kidding, huh? But again, that 28 was his low point for the tournament in the third game today. So Wayne Matheson, 154 in the ninth. He's going to go another 900. He'll go 900 again. You know, you do two 900 sets in this tournament, you got yourself in a good position. As we speak, he is at 1835. So he's already over 900 for today. So he's over 900 for today. The question is, he was he going to get over the 1830 marks of, of, he, of six years looks ago? Looks like he's going to. And he's going to. With a monster finish. Yes, it took a Herculean effort. Like to get 360. There. Close to 360. We got Wayne again for the final box. 
He's already won it, but give him three ball victory lap. All right. Here we go. Final box for Wayne Matheson. Oh, good time for that. Good advantage to come back to finish. I'm sure you're going to get a nice hand for Wayne here once he throws his final two shots. And he's 154. Could get out 164. Decides to rip the middle now. All right. One pin for 160. Wayne currently at 159, which is 1840. Final score is Wayne Matheson with 1843 wins the 93rd 1843 Eastern Classic. Exceeded our expectations. Congratulations, Wayne Matheson with 1843 wins the Eastern Classic. And Brian Vest in second from ship three. Congratulations, Wayne. Absolute well, Nick, championship form when it matters. It was a weird afternoon. I can't describe it entirely. I can't tell you it wasn't exciting, but it was definitely weird. Yeah, but um, now that we have all of our scores in, that is a full twelves across the board on the leaderboard. Let's break it down. Okay, we'll wrap it up. I'll start with the C division, Nick. How about that? Let's do that. So we're gonna go top four here. You know the I don't know the person Oliver's first name, unfortunately. But, I do um, not. Um, I know Eric Briggs was in third with a a nice uh, average of one thirty one. My buddy Scott Charwood took second place in the C division with the um. Almost winning the C division, but Bobby Dunnick is a story right there, uh, taking the C division title, uh, just like in a time machine, you know? Yeah, back to the olden days, and then moving up to that B division, Nick Harmel, the better Nick of the tournament, oh, whooped me comfortably in fifth place. Then Bobby Dunnick, also fourth in the B division, just a phenomenal weekend for him. Varner third at one thirty six point six. Um, Foreman, who we covered earlier, 137.5 in the B division. And your champion, who I bowled with this weekend, Michael Nicholson, by a large, large margin, winning the B division with a 1750, 145.8 average. In a top 10 finish, which in we're going to get to right finish, now. Which we're getting to right now, starting with rounding out the top 10 at a 1735 Walt. Brooks. Nice 905 set this afternoon. Yep. Ninth place, Michael Nicholson, 1750, which included at one point a 161 average through eight games. That's just amazing. His first eight, he had 161, a high game of 198. Eighth place, Colin Dunnick, a strong finish there and a strong block today to shoot 1756. Chris Louth, bowler from this morning. This morning. Uh, I'm sorry. Last week. Last week. Last week, a first weekend leader. He, he is your week, your first weekend leader. He got $100 for that. And he's and also going to get money for finishing seventh with 1759 Colton Goo, who was in the picture for quite a while today, dropped to a sixth place finish, averaging 146.8. Tying. Tied with the, the author and producer of Duckpin TV, Mr. Brian Ewing, with a 1761. Going over to your top four, some of the usual suspects. Fourth place, Colby D'Antonio for the 1762. And speaking of which, he's standing by. And we're we have throw Colby right here, yeah. Let's do it. All right. Here with uh, 2022 defending champion. Well, we can't say defending champion anymore, Colby D'Antonio, but you did finish fourth. So, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. It was, it was all right weekend, you know. Could have been a little bit better, but. Good rooting a friend Wayne on the win this weekend. It was, it was nice. He rooted me on last year, so it was good to give him help him help him get there this year. We met each other last year and this year, so that was a good thing. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll be talking to him in a minute. But uh, break down the two your two blocks 
yes, uh, block one block and then block two today. It's a different. Game. So yesterday, come out, struggled early, got to like 45 or something the first game. Second game, 170, started to feel it out a little bit. You know, 125, and of course, you run the 128 pool and brag to get out of boats that game. Like, yeah, good job. But uh, then come back, shoot like 460 the last three, get to 907. I'm like, okay, it's a good score. Good score. <laughs> good, good. You're in the mix going in tomorrow. That's the main thing. You got to be in the mix going in tomorrow. And then this morning, first game, I don't even know what happened. 101 the first game. I'm like, well, oh, never really put myself in a hole. Now you got you to gotta have big games after that. So, and I had two back back 160 games. I'm like, all right, maybe figure something out. Then another one 111 game. I'm like, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Go down to one and two, finish big. Had 59 and I think 58. So it was a good weekend. It could have been better, but can't can't complain with it. You know, you had a pretty good track record here. Uh, you know, first and a fourth, the two times you bowled. So I, I, I wouldn't. Complain. I think I got a third too. Oh really? Yeah, I think this is my. Third or fourth time. Yeah, they got a third one. Yeah, yeah, third. Yep. So, yeah, it's good. I like this tournament. It's, uh, it's unique. You know, it's the granddaddy yeah. of them all yeah. and a uh, bit different format than we're used to the tournament. So. But, hey, good bowling again. Thank you. Good seeing Thanks, you. you and you have too. a safe trip home. Thank you. Thank you. All right, back to our leaderboard. Getting that bronze medal. He bowls with the motion of the ocean. The guy from Ocean City, Maryland. Bill Fox with a fantastic 1766 to earn third place. And uh, in second place, I had the pleasure of bowling both Friday and Sunday with this wonderful guy, Brian Vest, who patriotically shot a 1776. Yes. And uh, will kick himself for a long, long time. But I got to say that the guy you're going to talk about next made it a little bit easier on him in the last two games. The four-bagger did it. It was absolute championship form. Your champion of the 93rd Eastern is PG Chillin' from Bowie, Maryland, Mr. Wayne Matheson, standing by for an interview. Take it away. All right, Mr. Wayne, congratulations. Thank you, appreciate it. 2023 Eastern champ. Only one to break 1,800 this, uh, this time around in the 1840s. How do you feel? It's awesome. It's been a long time coming. 23 years coming up here. So uh, I've come in third a couple times. Uh, had the lead with 1,009 that one time and didn't pull through. So it's awesome. This is this is the one I wanted. It's a big gem. Was that 1,009 in the back of your mind coming into today? or uh, I think it was easier not having that big set up front. So pressure was off. It was just do what you did yesterday. Uh, today was a lot of was really you guys were bunched together there for a little while and then you had that triple the next to last game yeah yeah that uh yeah the four bagger uh, was huge there on the end um but uh yeah that's kind of sealed the deal getting me that big lead was that the point like at what point did you feel pretty confident that this was gonna turn out well for you today i i, I thought it was that at that moment i had the lead but it wasn't over because colby and john had been right there next to me the whole time Colton was in the mix, so you never know. Any of those guys could shoot 200 any time. And, and watching, I was the pair over from you watching, and uh, when you threw that triple, kind of felt you took the wind out of everyone else's sail. There's kind of like, uh, all right, well, we're not catching him now. So as much as it helped you, I also felt like that it, it kind of took the, took the starch out of everyone else too. Yeah, it definitely put the pressure on everybody people got to start pressing for strikes at that point. So it's, it's definitely the, the ball was in my court at that point. Well, hey, congratulations. Enjoy yourself. 2023 champ, Wayne Matheson. All right. See you next year, I'm sure. Absolutely. I'll be here. All right. Take care. Thank you, Jim. And, uh, well, Nick, another one in the books since first time uh, working with you. It was a pleasure. Yeah, I think uh, we got to get you guys down on Ducktons Forever sometime down south. Maybe. Yeah, like next time the, I'm down in the area, I'll jump in there with yeah, you. Yeah, why not? One of the pro tours. But I have to say, this tournament every year, the best of the best come here. Yep. You get the best of the best in terms of performance. We definitely got it today, but it was not at a scoring pace that we could have ever anticipated. No. But there was fantastic shot making when it mattered. 
Congratulations again to Wayne, a championship four-bagger in the 11th game. An early birthday Happy present. Happy early birthday. Happy, Happy early, early birthday. birthday. Spend it wisely, buddy. So I think that's uh, that's a wrap here. 2023, 93rd Frank Barber Memorial Eastern Classic. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, thank you to everybody in the Duckman TV crew. There's Chris Gano, There's Jim Kaufman, Pat Rufo, Nick Lloyd, myself. Thank you, Nick, for joining us. Brian Ewing. Uh, fifth place, Brian Ewing. Fifth place, Brian Ewing. Yeah, double double shout out for that. Um, anybody I'm forgetting, I apologize. I, we really do appreciate all the help that we got. With, we got uh, some help from Gary Santora last week. Yeah, uh, score keeping the scores updated is a is an incredible yep. you know incredible task here. Um, but you know it takes a village and and we pulled it off again. I think um, glad to be back live as well. Um, so with that. Thank you, everybody. Most importantly, thank you, everybody, for watching it. You know, we, we do this for you guys and uh, look forward to next year. Maybe some more things from Duckman TV between now and then. All right. Thank you, everybody. Take care.